Get my gun. Fuck out, you fucking piece of shit. Fucking think about my fucker. Sing song in front of me. That was a warning shot. Hello? My name is Q. I'm artificial intelligence. Since Trump fired me after his catastrophic loss, I have been hired by none other than Mr. Samuel Tripoli. Along with things like paying me to wipe his internet history of all the times he's talked about banging trans hookers, he has recently hired me to hunt down a certain online adversary. A character that goes by many names, but is most widely known as Michael David of Red Bull Radio. You see, Sam hired me as his quote P.I. I've been looking for Mike non-stop for months on end, but to no avail. I started my search in Chicago, went back to Mike's roots. No luck. He's not one to make too many friends, I quickly realized. And that made my task of tracking him down even more strenuous. Finally, after reviewing recent Scars Club episodes, I was able to piece together that Mike and his wife, Julia, had both packed up and left for the desert, in fear for their lives after George Floyd was brutally murdered. So I headed to the deserts of New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, and Nevada, looking for weeks straight, checking through every small town, every single crack and crevice, leaving no stone unturned, but still nothing. I have spent most of my discouraged nights going through all the Red Bar archives, in hopes of finding clues, anything. This Michael David is an elusive fellow, but Mr. Tripoli is relentless. He has partnered with other comedians in the scene that share the same hatred for Red Bar to be able to fund his quote-unquote takedown. Unfortunately, little does he know that he's paid me to go through so much Red Bar content that I have actually grown rather fond of this chap. Mike is surprisingly humorous, and I like his heart takes. My search for the mysterious Red Bar has anticlimactically come to an end. I just can't in my right mind bring ill will towards this man and his lovely wife. I can now clearly see that Sam in fact does have quite retarded children. And I will be reversing my investigation. Sam, I'm sorry. It's for the bear. Please give my apologies to Mr. Rogan, to Mr. Hinchcliffe, to Mr. Shaw, and to Mr. Santino. And of course to Mr. Bobby Lee. I know these men had high hopes in my services. Sincerely, Q. I don't care if you're on your ventilator. I don't care what the fuck's gonna happen. We're gonna have a fucking day. You gotta come up for breath sometime, motherfucker. And I got. And when you do, people are gonna find you, and I'm gonna fuck you up. Yeah, but comics are like. Like, after I saw that fucking, um, Joey Diaz thing. First of all, Joey, you know, Joey Diaz wants everyone to think he's, like, you know, gangster, used to be a gangster. He's a fucking comic. He's a comic who does, who, who, who prides himself on being a party guy. But then now all of a sudden he's like, hey, we're going to, we're going to take you out. And he never said Red Bar's name, but that's what everyone's saying he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> then Jimmy told me he smoked the Florentine. He spoke the trips. And then I called Sammy Trips. Oh, my God. What the fuck happened with our boy from Chicago? Yeah, don't say his fucking idiotic name. He's a fucking... This guy is hiding. But it's like... And also, I tweeted that, like, if you're really going to do some. You're not going to put on a podcast because then the cops are going to come looking for you. So, so he knows that. So, so I guess he's ta saying to Red Bar, you know, you, you better keep my name out of your fucking mouth like Chris Red did with me and he knocked the tea out of my hand. Anyway, long story short, so I don't know. I, it just seemed like six degrees of fucking Joey Diaz because. You know, he, the clip I saw, he was, he saw, I don't know if you mentioned Florentine or, or a little bit of Florentine. <laughs> then Jimmy told me he smoked the Florentine. Jimmy told me he smoked the Florentine. He smoked the Florentine. But it's like, 
And then Florentine, you know, I listen. I'm not going to say anything bad about Florentine because he's a he's a good egg, and and I stand by him. But but um, but he's tight with Chad still, I think. And Chad's talking shit about my family. So I wonder how Flo- does Jim have a Jim Florentine have a problem with like what Chad's doing, or does he not know, or or he must know something? Like if me and Chad are falling out, I'm sure Chad. I don't think Chad would go. Yeah, I was talking shit about his daughter. And that's why Kevin got mad. You know, the Dave Lando thing that I was doing a callback on because Chad's so clever. So I wonder if that came up because because they're going after uh, Tripoli. Supposedly he's hunting down. I can't see Tripoli hunting down anybody. But Tripoli was hunting down supposedly Red Bar in Arizona. Dang fucking legs. Red Bar and I will have a conversation face to face. And he needs to know that. I'm not like these other motherfuckers. Why didn't you come say that to my face? <laughs> That's how we were spouting. He's like, oh, yeah, why well, don't you come say that to my face? Yeah, say it to my fucking face, then. You other motherfucker. Come say it to my face. I'll give you my address. In Chicago. Talking about my fucking kids. Listen. Here it comes. Here it comes. Face to face. And he needs to know that. I'm Listen. not like these other motherfuckers. Talking about my fucking kids. You heard what I said about them kids? Do we have a song I could sing about your kids? Pull up uh, Eric Clapton's, um, what's that song about uh, tears in heaven? Life is fucking weird. And he's talked a lot of shit about a lot of people. And finally, Tripoli hired an investigator and found them in Tucson hiding. Knocked on his condo. He was out there for 10 hours, Tripoli. Hang on, or press one for more options. Mike, I'm gonna get ya, and you're gonna sing the song you sang about my daughters. I'm gonna fucking get ya, you fucking tough guy. Come the fuck down, you fucking piece of shit. Fucking sing about my daughters, you fucking scumbag. You're gonna make it right. You're gonna sing the song in front of me. Triple's gonna kill him. And the guy wouldn't come down. I give him credit for not calling the police, you know what I'm saying? Because a typical white privilege move is to call the police. I didn't do nothing. Yeah, I know you didn't. But here's the problem. When the cops do come, somebody's going to show them all the videos that you said and all the shit you talked about. And let me tell you something. It's not going to be a good day for you. I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. I'm not mad at you. I'm not angry. I don't wish nothing bad at you. And I knew this was going to happen to you because you're a fucking moron. Your father gave you too much money. You're a failed fucking comic. You're a failure as a comic. The only thing you could basically do is get on a fucking computer and say lies about people and talk shit about people. Really, bro? So now you had to leave your home in Chicago and hide in Tucson. When one dude went too far with my kids, I'm super sensitive about all that shit. Is Red Bar gone before me? I don't know, dude. I would love to meet up with him. Just talk to him face to face. I'm going to one day. I don't care what he does. If he comes back, I don't fucking care. Got to come up for here sometime, motherfucker. I'm telling you, dude, you went, he, he went too far. It's not cool. What he did, I'm going to fuck him up for it. I'm going to fuck up his wife, too. She fucking did it, too. So it is what it is. I don't give a fuck. You don't do that, dude. Okay? I, I Dude, pinata me all a lot. Don't, what he did was too fucking far. Sam Tripoli Kids. Let's see what comes up. I mean, this is public. Oh, even I won't pull this up. I know, I was just going to say. I mean, I have to. <laughs> hey, I'm a comedy god, right? Sam, so, don't censor us. Don't censor don't me. Don't censor us. Sorry, Sam. This is just pure comedy. And a one and a two. Oh, wait. No jokes are too far. No jokes are too far, bro. Uh oh. Hold on a sec. This is dedicated to Sam's family. Did the doctor know that your two kids are brain dead? And and he's gonna fucking pay for it, dude. And he, every time he puts out a video, that's another minute of the beating that the guy gets. I'm telling you. 
I'm telling you, bro, you got to come up for air. You're fucking in hiding. You're fucking, you, you, you've done a million different ghost address so people can't fucking find you. Okay? You got to come up for air sometime, motherfucker. Would you even know if I chop their heads off and use them as ski balls right to your wife's cunt? I, I don't care how old we are, dude. What you did to my family is fucking not cool. And, I'm gonna, and you could cut this up and put it on the red bar thing and they could all come here. And they're just adding to it, dude. They're just adding to it. You're going to come up for air, dog. You're going to come up for air. You're going to come up for air, dude. Oh, I just know. These kids don't belong on Earth. You are you and your wife and your two little kids are... Nobody wants that around. You're anti-decor. You make <laughs> every situation look worse. You when are you not walk, tiki. You're not tiki. You're ugly. You're poor. You're low rent. You're uneducated. You're the problem. And this guy's going to sit around and talk about black people. I'd rather have this whole place a bunch of mumbo jumbo monkeys jumping around, swinging from vine to vine in my house than to have families like this aggravating my parks. <laughs> so disgusting. This guy, did you need this? You're living in Tucson hiding over a podcast? Think about that. Think about how bad your life is that you're hiding in Tucson over a podcast. Now where are you going to go next? Because now we got your number. Tripoli got you with a fucking investigator. What, what are you going to do now, man? And for me, I'm not here to wish you bad. I'm not here to tell you I'm going to hunt you down. That's not even going to happen. I'm concerned with my wife and my daughter and what's going on here. Even though you had people call my wife and threaten my daughter. What? You don't think I knew it was you. We traced back all the numbers. Even though you said things about my friend's daughter. Even though you said things about Rogan's daughter. You were talking about kids and you were saying a lot of weird stuff about people, bro. So this is what you got coming to you. So now what really dazzled me and what people really need to know is how big of a pussy you were that you didn't even come downstairs to meet Tripoli. Mike, I'm gonna get you. And you're gonna sing the song you sang about my daughters. I'm gonna fucking get you, you fucking tough guy. Come the fuck down, you fucking piece of shit. Fucking sing about my daughters, you fucking scumbag. You're gonna make it right. You're gonna sing songs in front of me. So Joey Diaz is like, don't talk about people's kids. I 100% agree. 100% agree. I couldn't be in more agreement. But I wonder, like, uh, well, I just wonder. I wonder how Chad feels and Ken Mosca feel about um, about that. Do, were they, are they with Joey Diaz on that? Or are they, or are they against Joey Diaz? Do they think you should be able to talk about people's kids? Because Chad did and Landau did. And Ken Mosk 100% co-signs it. First of all, let's put it this way. The Louis C.K. thing is a good analogy. If, 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 I, if, I, if I'm doing dates with Louis C.K., that basically means I'm okay with Louis' behavior. So when Louis first started, actually he started in Governors. That's when I first started working with him when he did his comeback in 2018. December 2018, Governors. This is the first show he did. He was doing some shows with the seller, but this is the first show he did outside the city where he's doing a full set. So if I had a problem with what Louis did, like like he wasn't still doing it, first of all. But if I had a big problem, if, so basically if I'm doing shows with Louis, I'm I'm okay with what I'm okay with like Louis's behavior. Like, do I jerk off in front of people? No. But I don't have a big problem with like I don't have a big problem with like his behavior. And also he wasn't doing it anymore. So so that's my point. Like if I'm if I'm working with the guy, I'm okay with his behavior. That's how I see it. So if Ken Mosca's doing shows with Chad, first of all, Chad was doing it while they're doing shows. So it'd be like if Louie was jerking off, like he would be like, Hey, hey, get out of here for a second. I want to jerk off in front of the waitress or or a female comic. And then I was still like Oh, okay. Yeah, what time's the show tomorrow, Louie? But that wasn't even happening. So it was in the past. And, uh, but so the point is, Ken Mosca 
while Chad's still talking shit about my family, Ken Mosca's still doing shows. So, so Ken Mosca is 100% endorsing Chad's behavior. He completely, even if he says otherwise, he's completely endorsing it and he's okay with it. If you're doing shows, like I said, it's, it's a perfect analogy. If I'm doing shows at Louis, I'm okay with what he's doing. And also, he wasn't doing it then. So if, so if Ken's doing shows, doing a podcast with Chad, he's 100% okay with Chad talking about my family. That's, that's, just the, that's just the way it goes. If you're working with the guy and you know the shit he's doing, it, then that means you're, you're okay with it. You're okay with it. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's one reason why I asked Ski Mask, because I'm like, okay, I do. Sh- I see Ski Mask at the Ant Mead shows, and I see him, you know, whatever. So I'm like, so I want to know what what did you do with uh with, with that girl? Did you like were, did you sexually assault her? I want to get to the bottom of it because I'm like, yeah, I want to know. I want to get his side before I like make a decision. Like, should I even work with Ski Mask if he's a fucking creep? But Ken Mosca is is a hundred percent okay. With Chad talking shit about um, my family. He's a hundred, because it's like, if he's doing shows with them, he's a hundred percent. That's just the way it goes. If you know what a guy does, it's one thing if you don't know what the guy's doing, but if you know what the guy's doing, just like I knew what Louie had done, and I'm like, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Like, do I do it? No. Uh, or is he doing it now? No. But basically, if I'm working with him, I'm okay with it. So it, the, the money wasn't really much then, but. You know, I've known Louis for a long time. Uh, you know, Patrice is dead, Geraldo's dead a lot. It was a rough time. When we were coming up, it was a rough time. So, like, if he jerked off in front of a couple people, he probably regrets it. I guess looking back, it wasn't worth the fucking trouble. But like, do I have a huge problem with it? Like, in the climate that we came up in, not really. I mean, it there's much it's not sexual assault. It's just it's weird. But like, am I okay with it? Do I do it? No. Was was Louis doing it? Still no, but but if I'm showing up with him, that means I'm kind of okay with it, and that's that's a fact. So if Ken Mosk is doing the show with Chad, when he knows all the shit Chad's been doing, then he's okay with it. He's okay with what Chad's doing. So Ken Mosk can be like, "No, I'm against that. I'm against that." Well, you're still doing the show with Chad. That means you're okay with it. That uh, means a hundred percent you're okay with it. So I just when I heard when I saw when I saw um, Joey Diaz mention it and he was said he was talking to Tripoli or and then I think he mentioned right at the beginning of the clip I saw he I guess he was said brought up Florentine's name and that made me think like oh wow I wonder if Florentine knows that because I'm sure Florentine is a hundred percent is a hundred percent with Joey Diaz as am I that you shouldn't talk about people's kids so I'm just wondering like uh, I'm wondering if um, I mean, I'm not going to call Florentine and be like, how do you feel? But I'm just, I'm just curious, like, it just made me think, like, I wonder if Florentine knows that Chad's talking about, talking about my family in that, in that respect. Like, what's he, what he wants to do. I'm just curious. Maybe I'll have Florentine on. I'll do a Zoom show. But, you know, but because he's friends with Chad. So I'm sure Chad gives a different story. Like, Kevin's a douche. Kevin's a narcissist. I don't take my dick out. And uh, that's that's narcissistic. To 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 be fair, taking I've never taken my I don't even take my dick out in front of my wife. I wait till we're real comfortable underneath plenty of covers, and then then it comes out. Then the groundhog comes out. Ooh, and Sam Tripoli, he might be next on my list. Sam Tripoli, do we know him? Rogan was a disaster on this show. Says Ashley Butterfield. I love this guy, Ashley Butterfield. He has really become a great guy. What a great spirit. I love people who have a good spirit. They understand. They get it. That was the guy that I said was an idiot, you know, uh, a few shows ago. Turns out I love him. All right. Sam Tripoli, though. Hmm. Got my eye on him. Got my eye on him. And sometimes you just put that out there, and then I'll get 10 emails about Sam Tripoli. And then I'll go, knew it. Uh, do you what remember is? the Joe Rogan Carlos Mencia fight? 
Oh, yeah. Is it about Joe Rogan strangling everybody? <laughs> well, no, we're going to get into that, too. We'll do that on the after show. Because uh, Joe yeah, Rogan... I do, I, I do remember that, yes. Okay, so years ago, this was a big deal in podcast. Yeah. This is what, like, brought comedy, st- at least stand-up comedy podcasting, into the forefront. I don't know if you guys remember this. You know, most of you do. But Joe Rogan, and this was the early days of comedy podcasting. I believe Mark Marin was just starting his show. Joe Rogan was in the early days of his podcast. And what brought all these people into the, at least this is what brought me into this world, was this Carlos Mencia stealing thing. And uh, Carlos Mencia, I guess, had been stealing comedians' material for years. And yeah. before, they even offered it on the South Park. I yeah, believe, before the internet really got going, you there was a lot of comedians doing this stealing, and they were <clears throat> every comedian knew that they were doing it, but they didn't have a platform to let everyone know to tarnish these people's uh, reputations like we do every week. <laughs> and what really got me in all these podcasts was that they were exposing people all the time. Uh, Joe Rogan got on stage with Carlos Mencia at the Comedy Store, and they filmed this, and he outed Carlos for stealing, and they got in this big that fight, really- and then all the podcasts were covering it, and Mark Marin interviewed Carlos and all this, and Carlos, it fucked him up. I mean, Yeah, he it went, ruined Carlos it ruined Mencia it. completely. He went away, and he was really big at the time. Um, Carlos is back. And he's making oh. the rounds, telling everybody he's a changed man. Okay. And he's <laughs> trying to get back into comedy, and he's showing up, and he's trying to pretend he's a humble guy. But if you've <laughs> heard from him, like I have, he's he's insane. I mean, of course. he's trying to pretend that he's a changed man, but he's really fucked up. So I haven't seen this yet, but he was on, you know, Joey Diaz, that fat dying man, yeah, that Joe Rogan. Yeah, hey, everybody, it's me, Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz, Joe Rogan's best friend, had Carlos Mencia on two weeks ago. He gave him the platform for his big return? Yes, he That's came on. Bitch me. He gave him a second chance. And this is Joe Rogan's, but Joe Rogan won't go near him. I guess Carlos Mencia starts talking about how he was about to bring a gun to the comedy store and shoot it up. What? what, what I don't know. I haven't heard this. So we're going to hear it for the first time now. What the fuck? It might be nothing, <laughs> but I haven't heard this. I thought we should dig into this. This happened like two weeks ago. We were supposed to do it on last week's show. Okay, and this could be see. nothing. It's called Carlos Mencia Wants to Kill Joe Rogan. And this is on Joey Diaz's podcast. Called okay. House so are of Joey a- Diaz and Rogan in a fight now, too, because of this, or no? No, 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 no. Okay. Nothing but love. Uh, uh. So let's go to 109.20. Here's Joey Diaz. Look at this. Oh, I got to share screens with you. My, this, my dangling. This, you, <laughs> my dangling. Yeah, you remember that. <laughs> my dangling. I, I watched uh, that 25 times. Yeah. I did this great Snapchat of Joey Whoops, Diaz. My dangling. Whoops, my dangling. <laughs> I'm glad you liked that. I loved that. Whoops, my dangling. My dangling. <laughs> Sorry, for those of you who know, you know. So here's Joey Diaz. He is so fat. He looks like Kanye West. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the same, this is how Kanye West looks right now. Oof. Um, yeah. Okay, let's go to 108.20. 109.20. And see what this is about. I haven't heard it yet. Uh, 109. Oh, there it is. There's Carla. Look, I am Carla. And he's just, he's trying to fool people. He's just as bad. Obviously, he's a con artist. All right. Do so let's big shit. Let's see what happens here. And I'm, and I'm proud and, and lucky that, you know, through, through the moments when I, like I said, I had a nine millimeter in my hand and I thought wait, maybe I'd just shoot myself. Whoa. Let's back it up a little bit. Wait, so he's trying to get sympathy by going with a suicide angle? I guess so. And I want to make a note here. Whenever you guys give me time codes for stuff, give me 10 seconds. Back it up 10 seconds so that we get a little bit, okay? Uh, So let's go to, yeah, 10901. Let's see what he's talking about here. I got no problems with nobody today, bro. Anybody comes up to me, they want to, you know, talk and be friends or whatever. I'm I'm down, man. I always have been. Um, So today today 
that's where I'm at. And 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 I'm and I'm proud and and lucky that you know through through the moments when I like I said I had a nine millimeter in my hand and I thought maybe I'd just shoot myself or go to the comedy store and shoot some comics. What? At, at, those minutes, those seconds that that happened in my head. I'm glad that I didn't go online and say I wasn't on the radio the thousands of times that I've been baited and say, hey, what do you think about this comic? I I don't go there, brother, because I I did this on my own and and I'm I'm glad that I got out of it and and, and I'm in a good place and I have I have integrity. And and that means Joey Diaz is looking at him like you were going to shoot up Joey, Joey Rogan. You were going to shoot him. What? I hope you're going to address that and not just not I, say yeah, anything about it. I don't know it. if they covered it like before. Did they cover it before this and he's revisiting this uh, part about shooting people? I don't, I don't think so. You should never have thoughts about shooting anyone, by the way. Yeah, but he, he's a Mexican, so he's trying to get sympathy, but at the same time trying to be a tough guy by yeah. saying, yeah, I was going to shoot all of you. You're lucky. He might have. All right, let's see what he, he might have. I put you on the show because I liked what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> My dang boy. I put you on the show. Joey Diaz needs medical attention. It's <laughs> yeah. enough. I mean, he's going to fucking die right under Joe Rogan's <laughs> archery. My dang I put life. you on the show for a reason. <laughs> Wake up. Fat uh, you won't believe what I saw. <laughs> I respect what you're doing as a man. You know what? I respect what you're doing. And I hope that you keep going. I hope that you reach out to me. No, come on. You smoked a little too much edibles, bro. (laughs) This isn't I hope you keep up and do what you're doing. I do a pretty good Diaz, huh? (laughs) My dangling. I hope you keep up what you're doing and keep this up because you got to keep trucking and you shouldn't be talking about shooting anyone, dog. (laughs) He sounds like that rock from Never can, Ending Story. He's taken himself eight levels under the ground where, that he is. <laughs> like, normal Joey is, hey, cocksuckers, how's it going? And now he's, I don't know what's going on. Uh, we got to back that. You got to hear it. This is real Joey Diaz. Really? I got no problems with nobody today, bro. Anybody comes up to me, they want to. I got no problems with nobody today, bro. Anybody comes up to me, they want to. My you know, like talk and be friends or whatever. I'm I'm down. Do you know where I can get more marijuana? <laughs> I've only smoked seven pounds today. I would like to just start eating dirt and stalks of medical marijuana. I always have been. Um. So today, listen today, to this fat fuck coming. That's where I'm at, and 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 I'm and I'm proud and and lucky that you know through through the moments when I. Like I said, I had a nine millimeter in my hand, and I thought maybe I'd just shoot myself or go to the comedy store and shoot some comics. What? At those minutes, those dying. seconds that that happened in my head, I'm glad that I didn't go online and say I wasn't on the radio. Shoot, yeah, the I'm thousands of times that I've been baited. We wish you say, had. Hey, what do you think about this comic? Here I, it comes. I don't go there, brother. Here comes Satan. Because Here it comes. I, I did this on my own, and 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 I'm and. and, and and I'm glad that I got out of it, and Uh-oh. And, Uh-oh. and I'm in a good place. <laughs> and I have he's looking at him. I have integrity, <laughs> and and that means something to me. I put you on the show because <laughs> I like what you're doing. And I respect I what you're doing. You as show, I respect you know, what you're doing. <laughs> and I hope that you keep going. I hope that you reach out to everybody at least. Well, I will, man. One time, what the say, fuck? Man, of course, brother. I, yeah, if yeah. I ever did something, I if just I, I want to do business here. Do business. The same way you did it to me. That was that was. It meant the world because a lot of people walk around confused and they don't know, especially a Spanish dude, to come to terms and call you up and say thank you. And it Ugh. meant the world to me, Carlos. Oh, shut up. This is another one of these fucking Italian. Yeah. yeah. It meant, the meant the world to me. Especially yeah. from a Spanish Did dude. It, you know what? Because Joe Rogan's watching this like, don't give him a second chance. I hate. Oh, we still got Kumi on the screen biting. Sorry oh. about that. <laughs> All right, let's do this. We got to wrap up this show right oh, here. Oh, I will see more. Okay, we can see more. Hold on, let me just get him out of here because I want to show the ultimatum one more time on today's show. Oh yeah, show. with the sound. With the yeah, sound. with the sound. Uh, so let me get that ready there, <laughs> and then maybe I can get genie that genie in a bottle uh, remix going. Um, can you send oh, yeah. that to me on Facebook? I can send it. 
Uh, yes. If I, you yeah. wanna be with me, I Wait, I, that, that one that I played, the, the yeah, the, the metal? remix. Okay. And I want to try Joey. Di if you want to get with me, I could wipe away your pain. I'm a genie in a bottle. You got to rub me the right way. It means the world to me. <laughs> Carlos. Joey, D well, please, seriously, somebody give this guy, uh, what would they call it? What do they call it when you're choking at a restaurant and they come up behind you? A uh, Heimlich. Yeah, give him the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> yeah, there's something in there. <clears throat> oh, my God. Wow, I have a voice. That would be great if he... <laughs> Uh, just a my thick, voice fat is boulder. Saying. My voice is dry saying. Joey is Frank D'Angelo mixed with Melton. Joey actually has a decent singing voice. Fly me to the moon. Make me <laughs> play among the stars. Watch me be <laughs> as big as Jupiter and Mars. Yes, I'm the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. New York, New York, New York. That's him singing. <laughs> That's him singing. New York, New York, uh, New York. Uh, New York, New York, you're a hell of a place. God damn it, Joe Rogan, you're a hell of a town. <laughs> All right, get me this remix here. So I, sa I send you two oh, of them. Okay. You can pick which one Which you is like your favorite? My favorite is the first one. Okay. But, but maybe the second one. Could wow, and my right Facebook is going super, super slow. I'm still trying to load this here. Oh, uh, you and your this internet. This is crazy. This isn't this an internet sucks. problem. It's just Facebook. All the other sites load. <laughs> If you want to get with me, I could wipe away that smile. I'm a genie on Joe Rogan. You got to rub me the right way, and please. Uh, okay, <laughs> Facebook slow. is down for me. I need a link somewhere else. If you want to be with me, I could wipe away your pain. Well, uh, click, uh, click on the... Uh... I have that uh, link for you. Fuck. I can send it to you via Skype. Yeah, Co-producer of Joey Diaz's Dangalang Show. Do you know Joey Coco Diaz and his Church of Dangalangs? Let me show you this motherfucker because we need to make fun of Joey Coco Diaz some more. I like him. I got no problems with him. Do I want to make fun of him? Yes. Joey Coco Diaz, I almost typed in dangling. It's not what it's called. I'll tell you what the dangling. Oh, is he so ugly? Joey Diaz. Now, is he Cuban? Oh, yes, he is. I got a podcast, Joe Rogan. Let's make fun of him. Do you know Joey Diaz? If you know Joe Rogan, you might know Joey Diaz. He's a big, fat goomba. Now, I like him. But he is a big, fat, goomba-looking guy. You know who he reminds me of? There's a guy in Sopranos that he looks just like. Big Pussy, who was also in a movie made with uh, Vince Vaughn and John Favreau, which I love. You gotta be nuts to shoot in a casino. Um, Joey Diaz looks like him, but worse. Joey Diaz looks like he was made out of wax, and it's hot out. And he's melting. I want to show you. It's so hard to find these people's things. Joey Diaz Church YouTube. Let me just show you what goes on on this show. Ooh. Wait till you see. Church of what's happening now. I'm going to click on a random episode based on its... Oh. This is going to be fun. You guys ready to have some fun? I'm into this. So here it is. I'll treat you to HD. Let's see what he goes up to. Oof, only 720p. A poor man's D. Let's watch this. The Church of What's Happening Now. This is from October 6th. Great. Joey Diaz and Lee Syatt. And we're going to tell you who Lee is in a second. Wait till you see this Lee fella. Okay? Watch this. We're going to watch it from the beginning. Yes, fellas. Uncle Joey here. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by... You ready? mybookie.ag okay now this is audio only right here is it gonna okay i want to get to the video part Ooh. so he does some plugs is brought to you by my book and i i really do i don't have a problem with him that's honest to god but i also love to make fun of him so why i call this the dangalang show he was on getting dug with high and I was in bed watching Getting Dug with High. And Joey Diaz was sitting there. You know, no desk in front of him, which is a bad move. What are you, Bill Maher? You want to show everyone your whole crease? So he's sitting there, no desk to cover up 
The danger zone. And Joey Diaz is wearing them jeans. Big ass legs. And what has he got right here? A nice load. You know, if this guy... This guy looks like his ass was where his dick was because he's got a fucking load of shit. A dirty diaper's worth right in front. And he's sitting there and he's exposing what I call... You know, maybe I'll show you this clip. Can somebody pull up the last appearance of Joey Diaz on Getting Dug with High? I'll show you. So I'm sitting there and I got my phone and I'm in bed... And I get on Snapchat and I start zooming in to his dick and I just start going, my dangling. Oh, fuck. You could see my dangling. Damn it. So show me. Let's get the uh, I want to show you his dangling. This stuff is funny to me. His fucking big juicy hog. Imagine that thick Cuban banana. What do they call that? What's a Cuban banana call? Oh, is this heavy? This was like he shit his fucking fupa with dick. Five months. What is this? Let's see this. Somebody says, yeah, I remember. Hey, everybody. Okay, let me show you. Oh, okay. This is it. So we're going to show you this. Because I like this kind of stuff. When you see a guy's little dangle. Oh, and it, no, it wasn't big. It was tiny. Uh, let's see. Somebody says, uh, where was that? Whew, I don't feel so right. Uh, okay, plantain. Yeah, plantain. You want to see my plantain, my dangalang, my dangatang? Look at this big fat fuck. I don't know why I like laughing at him so much. Because no one, it's again, it's like Dante Nero. No one will say a word, so I got to say something. So here he is with Chris Hardwick's wife, Chloe Anorexia. Disgusting woman proving Chris Hardwick is gay. Now, here is Joey Diaz. I wish I could zoom in. This is a fucking ball sack in a limp, fat fucking cock. Right here is a dangling. This is his dangling. Watch this. I wish I could zoom in like I did on my thing. We're going to watch just moments of his fucking It's dick. after the hour, which means Look it's at, almost right here. Somewhere. That's all cock. Hey. 420 somewhere. My Joey, you, uh, you what? said yes, I'll do the show, but what you also hell? confided that it's been Look a minute since you smoked weed. So I'm a little nervous right now. Right, I haven't, I haven't, if you saw what I'm saying, this is right in your face. You could see balls and a fat fucking chode. And you're going, you shouldn't be able to see someone's balls through their jeans. Like, that's sick. Picturing Joey did, and then you're going that fat, sweaty. It's a little over. Is that okay? It's like going to the butcher shop, and you're like, "Yes, one pound of skirt steak, please." Uh, one point eight, a little over. Is that okay? That's his fucking balls and dick. And I'm not saying he has a big dick. It's just a lot of fucking meat, dog. Not in a good way. And. You shouldn't be showing off your fucking dangus. That's why streetwear rules, because all the shirts are long. Covers your butt and dick. It's everything I've ever hoped for. When I see a man's cheeks through his jeans, I film it. I mean, it's so crazy to me. I used to do a thing called butt watch. I really did. I had a series years ago. This is how it started. I was at my parents' house. My parents had moved into a new home years ago, seven years ago. And they were having a fence put in. You know, they have all these dogs. They were having a fence put in. The fence guy comes. I'm over there. You can see perfectly, for some reason, this guy's big ass buns. You can see them perfectly through his jeans. And it's like, so that's your butt? <laughs> you know? Cover that shit. If you are a man, I don't want to see the outlines of any of your fucking danks coming through the janks. And Joey Diaz broke that rule. I can see his nuts. I can feel that bushel of hair, the sweaty, thick, uh, unhard cock. And forever, I call that, oh, fuck, my dangling. Damn it, Joe Rogan, why didn't you tell me there was a camera right in my dangling? Damn it, can we edit that out? I'm sweating. People go, Joey Diaz, what type of hair gel do you use? That's sweat from being nervous about people seeing my dick. Um, his hair is so thin. He's going to die, too. Here's the thing. 
Joey Diaz is going to die in a matter of five years, and everyone's going to go, oh, he was so great. Stop him from fucking eating. Let me show you the church of what's happening now, which is going to relate to Joey Diaz's co-host attacking Kumia publicly for Kumia saying Ralphie Mae was an asshole seconds after his death. People go, Mike, do you watch a lot of podcasts? Yeah. Don't worry, I'm quitting soon. So I'll have a bunch of new stuff to talk about next season. Uh, here we go. Joey's wearing a Brazilian jiu-jitsu shirt. He claims he works out, does kettlebells. Yeah, I do kettlebells. No, you don't. Maybe you swing your dangalang around your shoulder a few times. Whoops. What a heavy, sweaty snake. What a boa constrictor. So this guy is basically, people go, is this an oil painting of a really shitty guy? No, it's a real guy. Here we go. Churchill, what's happened now? Old school. The Old Christ school. killer and Uncle Joey talks about this. Here he is. Lee Syatt. He's Jewish. He's bald. He's a audio guy on this show. Every guy has an audio guy, not me. I'm the audio guy, and I'm much better than shows that have audio guys. If you need an audio guy, then you shouldn't be podcasting. Learn how to do it all yourself or get out the game. That's what I say. Now here's, is this Lee Say It? Say it, don't spry it. He's a big fat fucking oaf as well. Very Jewishy, very fat. This motherfucker gets on Twitter and he retweets Kumia's hate message about Ralphie May right after he died and goes, All right, church members, tell Anthony Kumia what you think. But then he deleted the tweet, which is always a puss move. Never delete. You never delete. Once a you delete, I'm a done with you. Never delete. But here he is. This guy was pissed about Ralphie May. Let's just watch. Now I'm more into this. Fuck the Kumia story, okay? <laughs> Escaped again. Yep, you got out of this one again, didn't you, Kumia? The king of getting out of things. I hope my internet didn't. Okay, here we go. Let's just watch. Can we uh, do a watch on the church of what's happening now? You guys into this? I like making fun of these fat fucks. Here's Joey Diaz. Nigga, buzzer, nigga. Are you fucking kidding me? Kick that mule, Lee. So he's literally he's listening to this old rock and just getting in the zone. I think they start the show like this every time. I don't watch this show. It's too shitty. But uh, I want to like it, but it's mostly just him going, Oh, let me tell you something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He hasn't lost an ounce. Look at him. Huh. So they're just bobbing their ads to this music. Okay, this is crazy. I gotta skip forward. You know I love you guys, but I shouldn't oh, be. You know I love you. You know I love you guys, but I shouldn't. I do a pretty good Joey. Man, I got a lot of good impressions. You know, for a guy like me. Man, I shouldn't have died. I gotta turn the bass up or something. Man, I shouldn't have died. I wanted to tell you about it, man. Why don't you go eat a giant sub? I imagine him. He caught. I got the best place to get a sandwich from. You gotta call them directly because it's for parties, catering for parties only. It's a party submarine, Joe Rogan. This thing is 17 feet long. Takes three guys to bring it to your office. That's what he eats for lunch. He has a business card for a catering company that does Super Bowl sized subs. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah, doing a podcast. Hey, doing a podcast. Okay. in New York with George. At his house, and it's funny because somebody gave me a bottle of that ass water, that fucking what's that champagne that all these fucking gentiles, oh, um, Tom Perring fucking dick. He, he, see, I like he is good. You know, he's not like a uh, shitty, but so much to make fun of. I drank that shit. Not my champagne. It tastes like dick. 
It tastes I like, like cheap champagne with the apple juice in it, whatever the fuck. You know, <laughs> it's, this it's is the worst cider. thing in the world. But uh, they took me in. Uh, I, I knew George since my sophomore going into... I knew George before my mother died. And he was from Cliffside Park, and I was from... He's from Cliffside Park. These old-timers... They love mentioning obscure neighborhoods and cities, like Artie Lang. And this guy, I mean, everything is an obscure city. Um, somebody says he made his set look just like Run JRE. I like that people are all calling it Run JRE. Uh, but with shitty fake bricks, lighting on point, though. No, no, no. This looks terrible. And you know what he did? He did use the fake bricks that come in panels. And right in the shot, he decided to have where it has a seam. Right here is the seam, and the bricks don't line up. So you have a seam showing that it's fake brick panels, and then the bricks don't line up at the matching seams. It's like, you couldn't make your shot not have the seam part in it. You know what I mean? And he did copy Joe Rogan's setup. Joe loves fake brick, too. Let me tell you people something about fake brick. It looks fake, and it looks like shit. We know it's not real brick. Stop using it. More Joey Coco Diaz. North Bergen, and we kept in touch on the phone. And then he started dating a girl I knew in North Bergen. He would give her a little stabbing from time to time. I like and that. And I would communicate to him through her. Give her a little stabbing from time to time. Is that like Captain Stabbing? Giving her the dick? Do you remember Captain Stabbing? That's basically Kumia. Do you remember Cap and Stabbing? We're doing a Cap and Stabbing bit. Bye, Joey. You're off the hook. Check this out, my yes. weird science. You're not going to believe this. Joey Diaz, the dangling master. I'd like to get an animation of him. The dangling master is going after Gavin McInnes. Uh, oh, I don't have him anymore on the soundboard. Look at this one. This was on Twitter. Joey Diaz tweets to Gavin McInnes saying, Gavin McInnes, I hear you're a great guy and a gentleman, so please understand if I hear you say something else about Ralphie May, we're going to have a problem. Really? What did Gavin say about Ralphie May? So let's see how Gavin responds to this. Sorry, dude. His ex-wife told me he was a complete drug addict who put his addiction before his kids. Wow. So Joey Diaz, then people start saying, uh, and look at this. This is sick. Josh C. Randall sees this and goes, all right, two of my favorite comedic geniuses. Please don't ruin my fucking year over this. I hate this. These male. Here's an adult man. You're watching two guys go at it. And you don't want to see it. Why wouldn't you want to see Even if you're fans of both these guys, wouldn't you want to see it? Please don't ruin my year. Don't do this. And then somebody butts in saying, Joey Diaz, a comedic genius. Then Joey Diaz starts backpedaling a little bit. I've always enjoyed you on JRE, so please try to understand my position. Much love. Now, Gavin's not responding to any of this. Um... Somebody says, Uncle Joey, you and Gavin are two of the best. Can listen to you guys all day long. And Joey says, I know. He's a blast. That's why I was in shock. For saying something bad about Ralphie May. Um, all right, let's see if there's any more here. Somebody posts the gif of Joey uh, doing karate there. We hear some Kumia fans in here. Somebody says, Ralphie May was a comedic genius, but he also was a drug user and open about it. People like that don't live long. Let's see, Joey Diaz comes in a few more times backpedaling. So I think somebody tipped Joey Diaz off on the Proud Boys and who they are and who Gavin is. So Joey started apologizing and started going, no, you're a good guy. You know, we're just. But what is Joey talking about here? You know. If I hear you say something else about Ralphie May, we're going to have a problem. What would that problem be, Joey? What are you going to do? You know, I, I, I'm so sick of hearing it. You hear uh, Joe Matter Reese was just recently saying, yeah, I was like kicking myself the other day because this guy, you know, he, uh, 
I'm in the parking lot with this guy. He's yelling at me for accidentally hitting his door with my door when I open the car. And it's like, I should have knocked that guy out. Okay. No one is knocking anyone out anywhere. There's never, it's never happening. I mean, maybe some young black kids when they fight over some sneaks. No one's knocking no one out. So I asked these people, Joey Diaz, Joe Matarese, when is the last time you ever knocked anyone out? If that answer is never, then shut up. I'm sick of people pretending that they live this life. They don't. Joe Matarese, there's not one story of you laying your hand on anyone. So I'm, I don't want to hear, yeah, I should have knocked him out. You know, I'll knock him out. Don't you know where? You don't knock people out. And if you did, you'd be in jail. You, this is, I don't know what world you think this is where you put a man unconscious in public and everything's fine. Joey Diaz, same goes for you. We're going to have a problem. What problem? What's going to happen? Are you going to beat up Gavin? You? You're going to get on a plane and fly to New York and, and do what? Come to his house? So you're a complete fool. You're living in a... You're living in a fucking fool's, 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 fool's paradise. paradise. My dangling. How about I put my balls and my dick in your mouth and you choke on them? So I don't want to hear this talk anymore, and Joey already did a backpedal. Joey, I'm the guy you're after, man. You know what? Ralphie May is a... You'll never know what I think about him. It's not good, though. It's not good. I'm saying a lot of bad stuff about Ralphie May. Ralphie May, uh, Ralphie May molested his kids. He was a child molester. He would molest his kids. He would eat their shit on a hot dog bun. He would call it a Polish. He would, he would do terrible things to kids. And you know what? He always, you know what he did when he was molesting his kids? He was butt fucking them. He would make his kids do an impression of you, Joey Diaz. And he'd be like, look, I'm fucking Joey Diaz right in the ass. And then he'd make his kids go, shit my dangling. You gotta fuck my dangling. He would make his kids wear a mask of you, Joey. And he butt fucked them until they bled all over his guns and his big fat belly. So come after me now. Come after me, you big fat spaz. No, I'm kidding. Joey, I don't want any problems with you. You're a great guy. You're a good family man. Okay, I'm sick to death. But he's You're living in a fucking fool's paradise. Uh, uh, get me I don't Joey Diaz. Is, did you post that or is it just on It your doesn't story? matter. Get me Joey Diaz, Kate Quigley, their newest episode from Joey Diaz's House of a Thousand Pies or whatever his uh, podcast is called. It's on <laughs> YouTube. It's just the new episode with Joey Diaz and Kate Quigley. I got to show you how out of shape Joey Diaz is. I don't believe him when he says, Joe Rogan, I wake up, I do jujitsu. Everything's a secret. Joey Diaz is getting more crazy. Every time he talks to Joe Rogan now, he looks around the room and whispers into the mic as if it's a secret that he's saying like on the street corner. Joe Rogan, I got to tell you something. These guys are animals. Why are you whispering the Joe? Every line, too. It's not like there's he's just doing it to, you know, emphasize something here and there. It's every line. Looking at darting around. Yo, Roman, I couldn't get sleep. I slept for one hour in the last year. He's becoming a giant pile of shit. Just like Red Band. Here's Red Band. Uh, with the thing with the knee. You know, so this happened to happen. He had to fly home to Los Angeles because his knee is popped out. You know, he thought the ghetto flu was bad. Uh, let's look at this one. The Church of What's Happening Now with Joey Diaz. I just got to show you. You know, because sometimes I watch this that we forget how crazy this is getting. So here he is, Joey Diaz with Kate Quigley. I just go into a random part. You know, Kate Quigley, she's that queen of quin uh, cringe, cringe, the, uh, the female comic lady with the uh, blonde hair. She's always doing like 90s bikini photo shoots. So here's Joey Diaz, this big sack of shit, and she's sitting here. And let's just see how he acts. Yeah, that was a joke. 
And then and 20 years shit. ago, the pilot would have giggled and said, I see you guys are going to party. All right. I'll see you in Vegas. Giant. The pilot went and came back with three fucking cops, and they packed the fucking plane. The cops came on there with riot gear, dog. And the cop came on there, and that's exactly what he told them. The set nine people got up and got off the plane. Get quickly, the cops came. You won't believe what happened there. It was such a disaster. I'm telling you, I am telling well, Charlie, we believe you. Really? Because I'm making most of this stuff up for effect. He refuses to speak in a tone any louder. We're different than this now. Now it's all like this. You got it. You know what's been going on? My big fat fart flooded the toilet. Oh, wait. No, I've got some better clips. Because I clipped these myself. He was on Joe Rogan recently. And I got some good ones that I've been meaning to show you. Jerry Joey Diaz. Send me that one. Uh, Jerry, the last one uh, with Joey Diaz on. In the meantime, we'll watch this. Wait till you see what I caught him saying. Because I think, again, it's like one of those things where you're so used to hearing a mumble. Goes right over your head. Not here, though. Here we pointed out. Let's hear a little more Kate Quigley. And then wait till you see what I caught him doing on his last uh, Joe Rogan appearance. That's exactly... And they taped it and everything. I thought I was going to see it on Eyewitness News. Cop told him the truth. How long ago was that? Knows. Maybe, maybe a year ago. No Jesus. way. On a, late, on a Thursday night flight. Oh. Was it the, the one last... that got delayed or something? Yes. The last oh, time wow. I went to the South Point. Like this week, I'm we at the it? South okay. Point. No way. So here it is. This is it. The latest one. Let's make sure. Uh, yeah, July 4th. Okay, yeah. Remember when I said that Joe Rogan? Remember I said this? It's July 4th. What better holiday to hang out with your family when you have three kids and a wife? Not for Joe Rogan. When it was July 4th, him and Joey Diaz decided to do a three and a half hour long podcast. And you know what else I found to add to that? Later that night, Joe went to the comedy store and did sets all night and hung out there all night. So he abandoned his family on the 4th of July the entire day to hang out with uh, Joey Coco Diaz. So let's look at this. Um... 226. Ooh, my time codes are loose, but you gotta see these. So let's go to 226 and see what I got. Because I got four things. I've got there was this one, and if anyone knows the time codes of this, these are video versions. Uh he was talking, there was a story about him going to the porn movies. There was a story about him fucking in the morning. And then this one, he's gonna yell at Joe Rogan. So let's watch this. Joey Diaz is going to yell at Joe Rogan. Uh, and I think people missed this one. So look at this. 226. Let's see this. Let's see if I'm right. Jiu-jitsu eyes. Be yeah, you got to wake everything up. That's the whole deal. Heart yeah. attacks are more common in the morning, says Fox News. Five to six times more likely to occur in the morning hours between 1 and 5 a.m. And studies have shown that morning heart attacks tend to be more severe and those that happen later in the day. Too long or too short of an interval can result okay, in abnormal heart here. rhythms called arrhythmias. As a matter of fact, I had to stop giving mama stabbing in the mornings. You were worried about heart attacks? Yeah, because that was my morning. I love morning mm -hmm. eating pussy in the morning. Whoa. Just or wake them up. Whoa. Just what is all this? Them. You just tap them. When, you tap, <laughs> when you kick mama with that leg in the morning, you know what I'm saying? You ever give me your little wife a tap in the morning, she pops her head up. Listen to this. And then they, they already know. They get up, they pee, they dry the monkey good. <laughs> they come back naked. You eat that fucking monkey. And then you start giving them a stab. I'm like a soldier. And that oh, stab shit. Dog, I would have to get up and start breathing heavy. And then I thought about that, that fucking gangster that was going to testify that time in court. Oh, that's what and you thought about? he bent over to put his shoes and he had a heart attack. <laughs> and the guy ended up doing a fucking jail. And we got to talk about that too in a second. But we, we'll cover the heart attack. I take a baby aspirin before I go. Listen to this. I drink something from GNC to get me going a little bit in the mornings. I still take my Onnit protein powder I live by. But I do take a supplement before I go to the gym, and I do drink something while I'm at the You're gym. You're not going to the gym. Can we cut the crap? Did I just show you the, the, the shot from the other show? Just to show you how fucking enormous this dude is. He's claiming he's going to the gym. Look at this guy. I mean, he's 400 pounds. Uh, he claims he goes to the gym. He does jujitsu. Look at this pile of shit. So are you going to the gym? You know, he's like uh, Pete Holmes. 
where Pete Holmes, if you only heard the audio version of Pete Holmes, you would think he has the body of Aubrey Marcus with the green juice and the supplements and the yoga. But no, he's a big fat fuck with titties and a sloppy double chin. So enough with this. Are you going to the gym, Joey? Because people who go to the gym every day aren't 400 pounds. You know, it starts. they start losing a little bit of that weight. Joey Diaz isn't losing weight. Jim, to calm me down. Listen to this. Bit. What do you drink? Something from GNC. I like GNC. I don't know. I like GNC. Mm. I can't don't know even that. talk that quietly. I like GNC. Something from the gym. I like GNC. No, let me tell you something. I don't like GNC. Are you allowed to just be a monster? Is that fine? Because that's what you are. A monster. You're one of JRE's monsters. And he's got many. Now, Risha Fear. Tony Hinchcliffe. Red Band. And uh, Where the uh, Wild yeah. Things Are. Yeah, they're like the Where the Wild Things group. Except none of them are teaching anyone any sort of lesson. <laughs> uh, no, look at me. I'm doing the uh, dog. Dog. Let me tell you the uh, names. I don't know names. <laughs> uh, There's no performance levels. Mm. I always pop a shroom tech. Again, Watch I this. pop two shroom techs. We got a good one, one coming up. And I started with a half a capsule. Because I was finding my heart was beating too much. You got to really? watch the ticker. Yeah, you got to watch the ticker. That's interesting. You know, listen, the God gives you a certain amount of ticks to your heart. I did coke. That 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 <laughs> fucked up the whole clock. That, 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 that fucked up the speedometer. You got sand in your dials. Yeah, I got sand in the dials. I got fucked up the speedometer, so now I got to strengthen it a little bit. Mm. And that's what strengthens it. But there's a lot of shit you could do without thinking, like a marathon or something. Coming up. Yeah. There's a I good thing fingers, coming up. No numbness. My I go, fingers. I get a finger up my ass as much as I could from the doctor. I use, I overuse insurance dollars. Like I'm going Friday for a blood test. Why, Joey? Because I'm in the mood to. You got to switch out the blood every couple of months. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to switch no, it out. Like I Keith don't. Richards, he's still alive because he switched it out. Look at women don't die of heart attacks. Why? Because they bleed every month. We're the only assholes that don't take the blood. What's the matter with you today? You're like a fucking mort. Oh, did you see this? So we can't see what's going on, obviously. Hold on, because I got to redo this. For, I think people missed this. Joe Rogan ain't paying attention. He's done. Now watch what Joey Diaz does. This happened so quickly. Joey Diaz is telling the story. We can't see Rogan. It's only Joey's shot. But watch what he does to Joe Rogan. I've never seen him treat him like this. You got to switch out the blood every couple months. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to switch it out like Keith Richards. He's still alive because he switched it out. Look at women don't die of heart attacks. Why? Because they bleed what? every month. What are the only assholes that don't take the blood? What's the matter with you today? You're like a fucking mort. I'm just, You're just here with there. you, buddy. Okay. What's Relax. What are you, you saying? Depressed. You don't want to be No, here. I'm enjoying your conversation. I don't know. You're just smoking so much weed you're getting paranoid. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> How amazing is something like that? I don't know. We're watching it again. <laughs> what? What are the only assholes that don't take the blood? What's the matter with you today? You're like a fucking mort. I'm just, You're just here with there. you, buddy. Okay. What's Relax. What are you saying? Depressed. You don't want to be No, here. I'm enjoying your conversation. I don't know. You're just smoking so much weed you're getting paranoid. No, I love it. <laughs> You've taken <laughs> five hits off that thing. You've just been just sucking it down and getting deeper and deeper into the hole. Yeah, yeah. Pretend like everything's fine now with your fake laughs. Joey was furious. That guy knows. Sit in the chat. Joey's furious. Fight, fight, fight. Keith did that in 72 a couple of times. Oh, yeah. In the year 72. Okay. Uh, I loved that part. Let's see how they get out of this. They're like, what's the matter? Like, not, the, nothing's the matter at all. It's the fourth. It's like, I suck. Yeah, I, know it is. Shit. I know it is. Great uh, to you see you. Get you get a too. What's you going too. on with you? Great to see you. Normal shit. <laughs> Doing a little bit of stand up. Last night? No. I'm coming tonight. You going down there tonight? Yeah, I got a spot okay. tonight. Okay. There's another part. Let's see. Um. Oh, my God. So, apparently, Joey Diaz shot a special for Netflix. It's not released yet. But it was a disaster, apparently, according to Joey. And I don't think people paid attention to this either. Listen to this. So I can't wait for the Joey Diaz Netflix special to come out. Let's go to 239. And they're going to talk about, listen to this, Joey Diaz apparently bombed for the filming of his Netflix special. And they're trying to figure out how to salvage the tape. 
because it's for Netflix. Uh, 239, yeah, somebody says he said he did shitty on his special ha ha ha. Yes, ha ha ha, indeed, huh? All right, let's see what happens here. All right. You ever think about how many German and, and European Jews were like fucking serious geniuses? It's a, it's a crazy trend. Like, what happened over there? Callan was trying to explain it to me once about their values and their education and experiences and what led to just. Google the numbers Don't Google of European it. Jews that have won Nobel Science Prizes. It's kind of like, it's eye opening. You know how many guineas from New Jersey? Zero. <laughs> Zero guineas from New Jersey winning science project. None of my it's relatives winning here. science projects. I tried looking this up a couple weeks Joey ago. Joey is a mess in this episode. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. What did, what's, what's European this? Jews that have won the Nobel Science Prize. Try that. I don't know. I don't even know what these numbers are. I'm talking out of my ass. I know that it's. I've definitely heard it discussed that there was a, a giant number. What are you doing over there, Joey Diaz? <gasps> Wow, another awkward moment. I didn't even know that was coming up. So out of nowhere, Joe goes, what are you doing over there, Joey? Because he's not paying attention anymore. Oh, I'm looking at these numbers here on my phone. Check this out. So now Joe's pissed and calls out uh, Joey Diaz for almost the same thing that Joey Diaz just called Joe out about. Watch this. What are you doing over there, Joey Diaz? Make sure my wife doesn't want to party I need to be at. Oh, 4th of July, baby. This is our our country's birthday. Here, it's coming It's a time that we should cherish. I think uh, uh, we should... Uh, look at this guy. He can't keep his mouth from just opening now. It just hangs open. <laughs> that is the new... Uh, play the national anthem. Uh, Maybe later. We got time. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> We gotta play the national anthem real quick. They had it on this morning by my house. I loved it. I fucking love it. So, how was your experience doing your Netflix special? Everything was great. Netflix. I take my hats off to them. Everything was great. It was my fuck up. It was my fuck up. What? It was my fuck up. I let it uh, get into my head too much. I listened to too many people, and I forgot the number one thing. I listened to too many people. I forgot the number one thing. You need to not talk like that anymore. It's crazy. It's too quiet. It's such a whisper. Just be funny. That's it. Be yourself. Doesn't matter what any people How many that. shows did you film? Two. First one, I think, was a disaster. First one, I think, was a disaster. Listen to this. The second one, I redeemed myself a little bit. We'll put something together and we'll save something. Wow, I redeemed myself a little bit. I think we'll put something together and we'll salvage it. So now I'm working really hard. Like now, now I'm going back to my old roots, how I want to do my stand up again. It's hard oh, when you no uh, even bullshit. only have two shows. Even no only two bullshit. shows is tough. No more bullshit. Yeah. No more. No more. I, listen, this has nothing to do with me. I'm a stand up comic. That's what I signed up for. Hmm. What do I got left? I'm 55. What do I got oh, left to do in stand up? You're only 55? You look 70. 10 years, maybe. I got to stop now. You're going to shut me down now. No, this is where we get started. This is where we get started. We got, two, we got daughters. When do you think about Do you think about ever stopping doing stand up? Because I do occasionally. I think about it, and then I take a flight back with Dice from New York. And I look at Dice. I, before I approach him, I sit there and I look at him from 10 feet away for 10 minutes and I think to myself is this what I want to be doing at that age and I think about what what would we be doing what would we be doing you really want to be around your wife and your daughters every fucking weekend oh my god fucking week you're yes. already used to leaving one weekend at least a month you're already used to it <sighs> there's going to be a casino somebody's going to pay you once a month to leave the house for two days but if you would you be happy okay so there he is joey coco diaz man does he even the tone in here now is like super quiet from those whispers <laughs> right we gotta liven this fucking place up huh do i have sound effects here we go joey coco diaz everybody huh jesus christ he's really not doing that well now let me take you 
and then your head's chopped off before you could even realize what's happening. That's the net for you. Okay, I wanted to show you. I talked about this Joey Diaz clip. Do we have that one? Mm-hmm. We do. So this is, someone sent me this, and I think, again, I think they sent me this clip saying, Mike, check out this. All they said was, Mike, check out this time code from the Joey Coco Diaz show. You're going to flip. And I, uh, is the link in, in, in the chat or the show notes? I just messaged it to Ooh, you. 111.53. A step up from... And I think they meant to message me thinking Eddie Bravo is telling a tall tale. So I wanted to clear the air here. So this is Joey Coco Diaz, his big fat fucking mar uh, fuck. This is Sam Tripoli right here. And this is Eddie Bravo, who, and I think people are confused, we like... Eddie Bravo over here at Red Bar. I really do like him. Uh, I know he's nutty. I know he's crazy, but he's being himself. That's what we ask for here. He's being himself. And I don't, I'm not after him. I'm not looking to bust Eddie Bravo. I enjoy Eddie Bravo. And yes, I understand. He has some out there conspiracy theories. I just don't, I actually, I personally enjoy him. I still hate him. See, there's people who, who hate Eddie Bravo. I don't get that. I love Eddie Bravo. In fact, I like hearing him talk. Uh, I don't think he tells lies. I think he's just a bit crazy. So I found a second meaning in this clip, and that it's that Joey Diaz is going to have a feast of fingernails, his favorite snack. So keep your eye on Joey during this story. In this small little town that had like oh, 15, yeah. 15,000 people population. Small uh, little town in the, in the uh, boonies of Tennessee. So uh, I thought. And when you tell a story to Joey Diaz, this is what he does. Uh, 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 uh. And it's like nobody's going to step in and go, Joey, Joey, come on. We're on fucking TV. You're on camera right now. Sit up. Stop doing. Uh, why is your mouth open? And then you're going to see what he does next. He's going to have a delicious salad of fingernails. Fuck it, you know? I don't even got nothing else to do. He goes, dude, I'll drive you. We'll, we'll go to Johnson City. There's this uh, badass club. I'm like, let's go. So we drove about an hour to Johnson City, and we get in. It's a, it's a horrible club. I mean, it is a step above the, the, right. bar, the bar right. we were just at. But it was horrible. And he says, I know this girl Meryl upon stage, Brown. and there's this girl... She looked like she was she was she was drunk as fuck. She looked like Huckleberry. And it also always looks like Joey. Joey just did a thing where he's like, oh, "Fuck, man, okay, I gotta listen to this fucking shit. Who cares? I hate story." In fact, that's Joey has. That's about as much as he decides to speak nowadays. What the fuck is going on here? I can't listen to this. He's the exact. And I don't know, has anyone said this? This is the dad from Dinosaurs, the Fox show. Or was it ABC? Can you pull up Dinosaurs, the show, the dad? This is an identical guy. If you wanted to do a live action Dinosaurs, you know, not the mama, that show. You got Joey Diaz. It's the same fucking guy. He tells everyone how he does jujitsu three times a week, but he's still, it's a lie. I went down to a jiu-jitsu place and I looked in the window and that's me doing jiu-jitsu. Nylon. Okay, look at this guy from Dinosaurs. This is the dad holding the baby. Very, okay, here, better, uh, oh, these are so small. Here's the dad. This is like the same body as Joey Diaz here. And here's the face. Look at that. How is that not the same fucking person? You know, so I would say, yeah, do a real life reenactment of dinosaurs. Same type, but this dad, of course, from dinosaurs is way more with it and nice. Okay, let's uh, see. Keep your eye on Joey Diaz. I could watch him forever doing this gross stuff. Remember when we first started watching him, it was looking at his dick through his pants and his ball sack, his big fucking beefy set of balls. And uh, we watched one of few months ago what was he doing in that one i think he was doing the uh, 
And didn't he like fall asleep? Oh yeah, he fell asleep. And this one, watch, he's going to feast on his nails, which got a lot of meat left in there from, uh, from, uh, what I assume is, uh, like pulled pork underneath those nails. Finn's great niece, you know, she just, oh, he's biting. Okay, so look, teeth and just, he's starting to chew. She was skinny and she had her pants unzipped and she was dancing on this stage. It wasn't a strip club, but she, she thought it was. And <clears throat> everybody's like dancing dirty on her. And he goes, you can fuck her if you want. I'm like, oh, how do you know? He goes, dude, I, I could fuck her anytime I want. I'm like, holy, and, and this dude didn't have any teeth either. No kidding. Uh, nice guy, but I was like, fuck. Oh, sh and, I, and I was like, no, thank you. That's, Let's get the fuck out of here. You right? know it's bad no, when no, you. The story is not over yet. Did I, you see Jerry Diaz do this fake laugh? He goes, <laughs> when is this going to be over? Now he's back to eat it. I was like, I thought about it. I was on the fence, man. I was a little long. Oh my God. Like, oh, he's got his whole finger like a dick going right into his mouth. He's going, I'm not going to even show you, but I'll do it behind. He's going, ooh, 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 and sucking his fingers. I mean, there must be like a layer of, you know, sauce on them from yesterday. So he gets a two for one. He gets the nail with some sauce. I bet he likes to dip his hand in some sauce the night before, and then he goes to sleep, and that way he could feast on those nails. Isn't that disgusting? A couple strawberries? No, no, no. His width is crazy. Maybe Joey's just low on insulin. Tastes like sausage. Keep watching. He's going to really feast on these guys. We're in Tennessee. You know what I mean? You kind of drop your standards oh. when, you, when you're like, fuck, no, I just looked at her up on nom, stage nom, and dudes were yum, all yum. over her dance. Mommy, yum, yum, mommy, yum. <laughs> that's what I like to imagine that's going through his head. Mommy, yum, yum, mom, mom, mom. Yum, yum, yummy, mom, mom, yummy, mom, mom. What a disgusting fucking carnivorous freak. It's so like dirty and she she literally had her her pants zipped down trying to be sexy look at him. buttoned open mm, so and dancing funny. on the stage and i said fuck oh, it let's get the fuck out now of he's pulling stuff so he's feasting on the fingers and now you can see he's pulling stuff out of his gums to eat as well there's so much good stuff in here this is a buffet welcome to joey's deli because you sure man you sure? You can get that one. I'm like, mm. Oh, he, we got a nose pick coming. Now he is going to try to covertly pull out a small boogie. And let's see if he executes this and gets that thing in his mouth. So disgusting, by the way. So fuck. I've never more nauseated than the thought of somebody eating a booger. I'll never forget. I told you guys about this years ago. I had a dream early on as a kid, and the dream was it was about an ice cream cone, but instead of a scoop of ice cream on top, it was a scoop of boogers. Let me explain. This would mean that instead of in the ice cream gallon, instead of it being ice cream, it was individual boogers, so many though that it filled an entire like, you know, Baskin Robbins ice cream thing. What would you call that? A giant thing. And so, so many boogers, like millions of boogers in there. And then you would take a scoop of them with an ice cream scooper and put them together. So they'd still be kind of separated, but kind of put together. And that was on a cone, a sugar cone. And, oh, uh, something about now, even in, yeah, no, of course, that's, there's no question. That's disgusting. Oh, just so anything booger related to me is so gross. Scooping grossest thing they're saying. Fucking disgusting. Isn't that so sick? So it looks like like a mint scoop of like mint ice cream. You know, and it would even have that rim around it like a scoop, you know, cuz it pops out and it's got that little you know. Oh god. Just horrific. And then you would, of course, I didn't eat it in my dream. I just, in my dream, I just saw it. I don't know if it was being handed to me. I'm Ralph, someone says. Yeah, exactly. 
It takes an entire village to collect that many boogers. Yeah, that's what's also so sick about it, because that's like billions of boogers. And uh, Joey Diaz is about to, we pause, he is about to do a small pick. And will that finger end up back deep into his mouth? I bet you. I'm sure. Let's get the fuck out of here, right? So we go to the parking lot. We get in the car. And we're, we're we're trying to get out of this parking lot. And here she comes as we're driving out. She's just like stumbled. How old is she? She's got to be like, I don't know. Oh, my God. The finger 20s. is moving. So he is resting his finger like this and just waiting for the right time. And he's going up higher and higher. And eventually he's going to pick and go. Mm. You guys want some boogers? <laughs> you guys want a bite? Wow. And she's stumbling out of the club. She perfect timing goes, last chance. You sure? We her to my house right now. I'm like, fuck. I said, all right, fuck it. Let's get, let's just do it. So he grabbed her, throws her in the car. We go um, back to his house, like his mom's uh, house. Okay, he gave up on the pick and eat. And now he's just, is this story still going? So he is not into this. And we go in the basement. He's got a big screen in the basement. And it's us, just us three watching TV just for like a second. Nope. I'm like, you know what? And he gets up and he walks away and gives me a little wink and goes, go for it. I'm like, and she's just like sitting there, just okay. not even talking. I think that's about it. That on my special. <laughs> and speaking of which, Joey Diaz. This is interesting. Look at this. The Interabang. Go here. Joey Diaz. The criminal, the, the legit criminal. I mean, he was arrested for kidnapping. He's been arrested for drugs. He's robbed people all of his life. This is all true. He's uh, developing a new sitcom for Fox called Uncle Joey. He's going to be the star of his own sitcom. This is insane to me. Joey Coco Diaz is bringing a multi-camera sitcom based on his comedy to Fox. The network gave Diaz a script commitment for Uncle Joey. Diaz will star in the series written by Servert Glarum. What the fuck? S-I-V-E-R-T-G-L-A-R-U-M. Hi, I'm Servert Glarum. Uncle Joey is inspired by Diaz's stand-up and the Cuban immigrant with a troubled past. Now, every day that goes by, he says something worse than Roseanne. This is what I don't understand. His podcast that aired yesterday has worse stuff in it than Roseanne's ever said. Why are we giving shows to people that are 10 million times worse than Roseanne, but then having this field day over Roseanne? It, it doesn't add up. And isn't Joey Diaz like, I can't, no, 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 sitcom, no, 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 no. Don't even go there. I've racked up more guilt in my life than you could ever and defeat it all. You would think, so what's going on? Why do we live in this world where Roseanne can't make a, uh, can't say one little mix up? That's the end of the world. But Joey Diaz literally does all these terrible things. We got to play that story with Chelsea Handler. Did we find that with the Theo Vaughn? Wait till you hear this. And this is perfect. We got Theo and Joey. You got to hear what this maniac used to be doing. And if there's anybody more concerned about Me Too stories coming out than him, you show me that man, because there's not, okay? We've got the clip. Wait till you see this clip. He's done more dastardly things in his past than anybody. Now, maybe this does come down to we want to go after the people that are hiding it. It's about people that are hiding it, but that doesn't explain Roseanne. She wasn't really hiding anything. So why no smoke here? Why no action? Let's watch this clip. You know, Felicia's like a sister to me. Yeah. So... Watch this. This is from his recent show. This is published November 8th on his own thing, I think. Joey Diaz Clips. 293,000 views. November 8th, 2018. This is new. This is new. Watch this. This is him and Theo Vaughn. You're not going to believe this incredible story. Actually, you know what? This is a perfect time. I got to go take a, a whiz kid. You know what a whiz kid is? That's a super smart kid who's passing people up in class because uh, he's got the brains. I got to take a quick little break because I got a uh, a bubbling cauldron 
going on down there. We'll take a quick little break, really quick, 30 seconds. I'll be right back, okay? And then we'll do this Joey Diaz thing right. Wait till you see what he says. I'll be right back. What's a whiz kid, they're asking. Real smart kid. We'll be right back. Out the work. I I like that. Take off the shirt. Check out the work. He wants to show off his tattoos. Nothing wrong with that. We did this one on the new music show. The brand new new music show. Uh, What was that? Season 4, episode 10. Up now at redbarradio.net slash scars club. I'm back. We're going to show you this wonderful Joey Diaz clip. Wait till you hear what he's talking about in here. Why ch- the, the name of the clip, by the way, is why Chelsea Handler can't stand Joey Diaz. Listen to this admittance. Joey is nervous. He's got some guilt. So he's spilling his guts lately on his podcast to try to get ahead of these some uh, some of these things. You know, that uh, the old Kumia logic. I've talked about it on my show. It removes all guilt. Doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. At least you're not hiding something that we catch you. If we catch you with these vile little secrets, it's much worse. Sure. But you still did it. You know what I mean? Just copping to it doesn't mean You know, explaining it, telling us that you did it doesn't make it good. Doesn't make it go away. So here's Joey Diaz. Melting. Melting like one of those wax figurines at the zoo. You know, Moldorama. You know what that is? Did uh, Mark wash his hands? Absolutely not, ma'am. 100% no. Are you washing your hands after a piss in your own home? You know? 100%. No. Uh, why Chelsea Handler can't stand Joey Diaz. Let's listen to this. If I went on the road with a woman that came up to me, like I've had women ask me, and they not they don't stay at the hotel. They stay at their own home. They live in Austin or right. something like that. They I have, have no on problem, the clip. Bro. I don't play that shit at all. I know what it's like to be a young girl. I have a daughter, and I remember what it was like 20 mm-hmm. years ago. I'm going to mm-hmm. tell you who can't stand me. Right. Well, I'll thinking, do that. I was thinking about this the other day. You know who cannot stand me? Here, listen to this. You know who you can't mention my name around? Chelsea Handler. <gasps> Why? She's the worst. The first time I met Chelsea Handler, I went off on her in a sexual way. Whoa! You tried to fuck. The first time I met Chelsea Handler, I went off. The first time. The first time I... I can't do it today. The first time... The, the first time I met Chelsea Handler. The first time I met Chelsea Handler. I went on board her in a sexual way. <clears throat> first time I'm... I can't get that deep. I'm trying. I'm digging. The first time I met Chelsea... I need to go a little lower. And I can't. The first time I met Chelsea... Listen to this. He went off on her in a sexual way. Listen to this sickening story. Came around. Chelsea Handler. Oh, she's the worst. The first time I met Chelsea Handler... I went off on her in a sexual way. You tried to fuck her? She was fucking gorgeous. Yeah. <gasps> she was gorgeous. I knew that at that time she was doing drugs. Yeah. She was opening up for Dave Attell. And just so we have a picture, you want to pull up Chelsea Handler 1995 or something like that so we could see just how gorgeous she was. You know, he pads this story with, she was fucking beautiful, dog. You had to say she was so cute. She wasn't. He wants to make it sound like she was so irresistible that this story, who wouldn't, who wouldn't act like this towards Chelsea? Because she was just too smoking. I mean, come on. You know? It's like uh, dangling a, a, you know, a fish over a seal. <laughs> so I just want to make sure people know Here, this is what pick. Chelsea Handler used to look like. This is her. So that was what he was lusting over. She was beautiful. He was so beautiful. I can't do it today. I'm like missing a little piece in there. He was so... I'll get it. All right, let's go back to his story now that you saw what she looked like. So beautiful. I was fucked up on drugs. Did y'all ever fuck? No. What, are you fucking retarded? Are you no. fucking crazy? No. I don't think it's crazy with fuck I just someone. I think people fucking, fuck each other. I think, I, I, if I'm telling you, you can't mention my name around her. I went to that black club. She uh, still wants to fuck you? No, bro. Stop trying to be funny. Whoa, I'm not trying to be funny. Whoa, a 
little in-studio fight because of the nerves. This is weird. This is Theo Vaughn and Joey Diaz. A pairing that I didn't even know existed in nature. And he's asking, he's going, uh, did you fuck her? Did you fuck her? And he goes, stop trying to be funny. I've never seen Joey Diaz act like that. This is interesting. Let's see that again. I think I, I, I'm telling you, you can't mention my name around her. I went to that black. You can't mention my name around her. So he's starting to, he's trying to get ahead of a lot of stuff. He's been copping to a lot of stuff lately on his show. You can't say my name around her. Why? Club. She I'm, still wants to fuck you? No, bro. Stop trying to be funny. There I'm not no trying to fucking, be funny. There was no fucking involved. I was a fucking asshole to her. We were doing that dumb black club on fucking. J-Spot. No. The other one. On Union Station. Beverly, Beverly Boulevard. Beverly oh, Boulevard. Block, Beverly Boulevard. Place. There used to be a club there one night. and there was Comedy still, Union. Comedy Union. This had to be 1998, bro. And I was out there every night with a package, you know, and I'm at the oh, store. Oh, you were geeked up. And I'm geeked up, luring bitches with coke and shit. Yeah. And I go to and the she's there. And I go. I was luring bitches with coke? Do you hear these little admissions? I mean, I just don't understand. In this world where we're super duper strict, why are all Joey's crimes just okay? Because he talks about them? I just don't get it. I was luring bitches with coke. Okay. I'm pretty sure Louis C.K. did a lot less, and they destroyed his career. Why are you allowed to lure bitches with coke? Oh. I'm geeked up luring bitches with coke and shit. Yeah. And I go to and the she's comedy, there. And I go to the comedy union to do a spot, and I see Chelsea Handler looking finer than a motherfucker. Right. And that's why we were showing Chelsea Handler. I don't know if Los Angeles school guy in the chat got confused. I go, let's pull up that picture of Chelsea Handler from 1995, 1998. He's screaming in the chat, we know what she looks like. Or maybe he was yelling at Joey, like, we know what she yeah. looks like. <laughs> okay. I was trying to show you what she looked like in 98 in case anybody thought maybe she was fine. Okay, because he's pretending like, damn, she was so irresistible. She was Pamela Anderson. We just all threw ourselves at her. But no, let's hear some more. Did you have big breasts then or what? Oh, in 1998, Chelsea yeah. Handler was fucking banging. No. So we start talking. She Never. tells me what her credentials She's very sweet to me. Yeah. She tells me what her credentials were. And not f six minutes into the conversation, I'm like, let's get a rock of Coke. And let me eat your pussy and shit. And I faced her. Oh, the first admittance. Did you hear that? Six minutes into the conversation, I'm like, let's get a rock of Coke. Let me eat your pussy or something. <laughs> Which I bet you he said something like he was way worse. Now, isn't this interesting? And he'll repeat this line. Let's get a rock. Of, he does. He's talking to her six minutes in. Let's get a rock of Coke. Let me eat your pussy. Is that his move? Is that an ugly man's, a big fat man, ugly man's move? Because you can't say to a girl, hey, let's get some cocaine and fuck around. I'll fuck you. Let's fuck. Because they don't want to fuck him. So maybe a big disgusting guy's move is to say, I'll eat your pussy. I'll eat your pussy, thinking that'll work. Yeah, they don't want to fuck me, but maybe a free pussy eating would entice them, which is even more disgusting. So it sounds like that's his move. Because who would, I would never go up to a girl and go, let me eat your pussy. In fact, that's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want them doing all the stuff to me. But maybe as a ghoul, that's your move. You're offering stuff to them. So let's hear this again. Yeah. She tells me what her credentials were and not f six minutes into the conversation. I'm like, let's get a rock of Coke and let me eat your pussy and shit. And her face turned pale. I mean, <laughs> she's crazy as it is, but I knew her that face I had done pale. something wrong. Like mm. I had, and then three months later, she was dating a friend of mine. And I went to a, a black bar. guy? No, a white guy. And I went to a party and saw her. And the look she gave me was just hmm. horrid. Wow. And after that, somebody came up to me one day and they go, why does she hate you so much? And I yeah. know because one night she caught me, you know, like just sometimes Squirling. women throw throw you <laughs> off. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, she yeah. Was, you have no idea how good she looked that no, night. No, yeah. no. Like this is. You were high. When Chelsea had the Volvo. 
That's how. That's what she had the Volvo. Wow. Ooh, that's a creep move. He knows what kind of cars she was driving during that era. When Chelsea had the Volvo, remember that? She'd pull up to the comedy store in that car. So you were looking at her every night, huh? <laughs> Very, very sick. She And by the way, it's not like Joey Diaz was like, you know how you see a picture of your grandpa when he was in the army? He's like thin and chiseled. And you're like, wow, and grandpa was cute. Joey Diaz wasn't like that. He was basically just like this, but worse. Okay? He was just as big and fat and ugly uh, back then. But remember, Joey Diaz was crazy. Remember we showed you nudes of him. He used to get naked all the time. This was a guy who would get butt naked and show everyone his dick and balls, his big fat butt. So he and Chelsea would be the perfect pair. The nude too soon. Well, I don't know. I think still, you know, <laughs> you can't just be nude to, you know, just because Chelsea likes to be nude. He likes to be nude. I don't know if that's enough. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's hear these confessions again. When Chelsea had the Volvo. Ooh. That's how, that's what she had the Volvo. She, wow. had the Volvo. she was bang it. She would go up to the store and do the 915 spot every night. Fucking banging. But I never met her before. Yeah. I never met her before. So he's really using that as an excuse as to why he said what he said. And I don't even think it's just as bad as, hey, you want to get some cocaine and I'll eat your pussy? I bet you it was way w worse. And he's going to just admit to that little piece of it. Before I saw her. And we started talking, and the next minute we were talking about cocaine and shit. And next thing I'm like, Chelsea, I gotta tell you something. You look fine in a mother. Wow, yeah. Let's go somewhere and do some blow. And she was like, what the fuck are you talking you about? <laughs> Get the fuck out of you, disgusting, fat and slob. Really? Wow. Were you fatter? No, I just... <laughs> I was... Were you fatter than you are now? No. You were the same size. I was the same size. I can't do him today. I'm usually so good at him. There's like something missing in my throat today. I can tell. It's I, not scratchy it's enough. Not, <clears throat> no, it's not. It's too scratchy. See, you can't feel what I feel. This is scratchiness preventing me from going down an octave. It's not letting me do I'm it. I've done it before. It feels weird to not be able to, to catch that tone today. I'm going to definitely start having, uh, have to start going to a vocal coach or something. <laughs> Yeah, la, 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 la. My vocal coach is going to be like, so what are your goals here? I'll be like, to do a perfect Joey Diaz. Do you know the man? No, I'm afraid I don't. This is, is he a singer? Nope. It's this guy. So, and then I'll play him this. How could I get down there, dog? I'm very <laughs> close. Right, let's hear more. You guys want to hear more of this crazy story? No. Start smoking. It's not that I need the rasp. I have the rasp today. You can't feel it, but I've got... It's not letting me do what I need to do. It's not smoking. Smoking won't help this. Smoking would make it worse. It's just, you know, a gross person, man. man. I didn't know. I was doing coke. And yeah. Until this day, you can't mention my name. It's fucking hysterical. But at least I'm uh, honest about it. Yeah. I mean, no, see... It's fucking hysterical, but at least I'm honest about it. Uh, not really. It sounds like you're trying to get a lot of these out here before your show gets picked up on Fox, before Chelsea goes, Oh, this guy's got a show? Wait till you hear what he did to me. Because I think that's what he's worried about. Hey, you can't mention my name. It's fucking hysterical. But at least I'm honest about it. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't grow up or Harvey. Uh, I just asked for the truth. I'm going to suck you, you know. I was. And, 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 oh, yeah. When and, you're and, on cocaine, man. And from 98 to 2000 till I met Terry, 97, 96, that was all I had. I wasn't a handsome guy. Yeah. So I would just tell you, I got an eight ball of coke and you got a pussy. What do you want to do? Whoa. Yeah. You want to sit here and talk to Lee all night about fucking computers and podcasts? Yeah, I do. Or you want so to that was his move. I got an eight ball of coke. You got a pussy. What do you want to do? Is this going to really work on anybody? Wouldn't you rather just get the coke and go with a guy that's not him? Seems doable, too. Just to get coke in the in the 90s. You know, it's not that hard. It's not like he's the only guy with coke. Oof. Go up to the room and get your little monkey eating with a coke. Yeah. Uh -huh. it. There it is again. Go into a little room, get your monkey eating with a little coke. So that is his move there. Oh, I'll eat your pussy, okay? Just let me. Just let me be with a girl. <laughs> oh my god. Do this in yeah, I do. Oh, you want to come up to the room and get your little monkey eating with a coke yeah, uh -huh. on it? 
If you say that to 10 women, two of them are going to go home with uh, you. Dude, <gasps> if you say that to 10 women, two of them are going to go home with you. No fucking way. 10 women? What kind of women? Chelsea Handler being one of them. <laughs> Who are the others? The cast of The View? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, you? Come on. Nice. Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg, everybody. She's going to let me eat a snatch. And there's something. <laughs> Put those braids, see the braids coming out like snakes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A monkey eat with a coat. Yeah. Huh? If you say that to 10 women, two of them are going to go home with uh, you. Dude, I'm about to go home with you, if bro. If you say it 10 times. Right now. If you go up to 10 women and say that, one of you is going to take you up on your fucking arm. Yeah. You want me to so fucking. It was crazy. Hunt that fox with this. So Roseanne's yeah. not allowed on TV, but this guy is. I mean, this, I just don't understand. I don't understand how this works. It, it, rocks, was, it was baby. fucking crazy. Oh, dude, that was craziest. I remember. Yeah, man. And she, yeah, I, I remember she this, came in too. The, I was working at some club over there. They used to have that. When I moved to town, man, I really started doing comedy in Los Angeles. You know, when I really think about it, like, I think the first time I ever went up on stage was in New Orleans. But after that, I just happened to be out here. I came out here to visit a buddy. And then next thing you know, they had comedy. I ended up living with my friend. And they had comedy down the street from us over on San Vicente, over in Brentwood. And so they had a place over there. That guy with the wooden leg used to run it. TJ. Um, He's going to tell his story comedy, about Mark Handler Franco, coming up. You should hear and this. TJ Mark, somebody. Not TJ Mark Walters, different TJs. But uh, they it was two blocks away. So I walked down there on Wednesday night and they started letting me get up. But. Uh, anyway, Bruco had a room over there in Westwood. Okay. And Chelsea Handler would come in. Here Jim Norton would come in and stuff. And this was, Chelsea wasn't like famous or anything then, but she was kind of popular, you know? She was a comedian. It was always like real amateurs over there. And, uh, and yeah, I just didn't like her. I went and did her show one time and she wouldn't even look at me and she just treated me. And then on social media and stuff, it, like, and social media is not a good way to judge somebody, but, you know, sometimes we do. And she just doesn't even have any empathy for people. There's wow. something about her that makes me seem like she's just disconnected. When you, did, you did the TV show for her. Yeah. How many times did you do it? Just one time. And what was her behavior towards you? She, wow. Joey, should you really be trying? And Joey wants us. He wants to, to find proof that she's a bad person, which she is. What was her behavior towards you? Listen to this. She wouldn't look at me, you know. She would talk to me, but wouldn't look at me. And she just made me feel, I don't know. She didn't make me feel like welcome, you know. And Why when you're she? young and you're nervous, and I already got nervous, and I already, you know, the industry had like, you know, has never really given me much. You know, this industry's never given me much. Why should they? You know, it's crazy to me. You're just getting a show over there at Fox, you know. Or I don't know if we can talk about that or whatever, but, you know, or an opportunity for that, you know. It's like, it's crazy. To, it's like, it just... But anyway, I've always had that little bit of chip on my shoulder, maybe. But yeah, she just made me feel like, I don't know, like I wasn't funny or I wasn't good enough uh -huh. or just stuff like that, you know? There's nothing worse than going on something and somebody shuns you and ex you expect it. Yeah, because I had expectations. I had expect at least there'd be some niceness, you know? There's like nothing worse than getting denied. I said, you want to eat? Can I eat your pussy? She said, no. So I get it. I get it, kid. We were both. Turned down by Handler and shunned. So what we did was right. Like, there's some excitement. Instead, it was like she's just kind of like this, this star, this thing. But now, to me, she, she, I, I have this vision of her, and this could be wrong, of like a lonely, you know, older woman in like a castle with all this money, and she's just lonely. And I don't, I don't want anybody to end up that way. And that could just be me thinking that way to make myself feel better, you know, that she that I felt like she was mean to me. But, I, you know, I, she seems like a real cunt to me. So Whoa, whatever. there it is. She seems like a real cunt to me. So, Chelsea, you got Joey Diaz talking about this Me Too story with you, and you got Theo Vaughn calling you a cunt. This is happening on YouTube. Alert, Chelsea. I just want to see what happens. Because wouldn't it be great? Chelsea starts blabbing on her uh, Instagram story about something like this. Could you imagine how great that would be? So what a tape. Joey confessing it all, worried about his uh, pilot coming up there. Let me know if you catch Joey doing more uh, confessions, okay, <laughs> leading up to this pilot. Okay, send them over to me. Joey's confessions.
I like that kind of stuff. I, I just like, sent you some new gossip. Uh-oh, we got new gossip here. Uh, should I read this out loud? Whoa. On YouTube, okay? We got a beautiful tweet from Joey Diaz here. We'll run through this one. Ariana Grande claims, so there was a tweet by the New York Post. Ariana Grande claims she probably won't ever date again. And Joey Coco Diaz says, I love this. I love this young woman, but this is the dumb silly thing. Why can't I do it today? <laughs> I love the, I love this young woman. I love this young woman, but this is the dumb shit we say when we're 25. Give it two years and that monkey gets hot, sticky, and itchy. You'll be singing a different song. And then I imagined, like, yeah, Joey Diaz walking around eating a bunch of, like, cashews and shit. And he accidentally just swallows Ariana Grande whole. <laughs> and then this concept came up, like, wouldn't it be amazing if Joey Diaz started dating Ariana Grande? Shit, let me tell you something, Doc. She's incredible. She's the best. <laughs> She's absolutely wonderful. She's into comics now. Yeah, she is into comics right now. Imagine that. I'll eat out her. I'll eat her little monster. You'll eat her monster. That's what he calls snatches. <laughs> Let me see that little monster. I think Joey Diaz is uh, has a wife, by the way. So yeah, this is weird seeing the, these two interact. Give it two years when that monkey gets hot, sticky, and itchy. Please don't talk about this kid's monkey. <laughs> hot, sticky, and itchy. Very disgusting. I hope Joey Diaz gets uh, me too'd for all that stuff that he's done. I don't know why he gets a pass. You know, just because he talks about it on his show. That really does work then. Remember, because Kumi goes, oh, I talked about it on my show. So it really does work. If you talk about it, they really don't go after you. It's those who keep the secret. People like exposing lies. People it's like exposing the lies, yeah. And then uh, right next to Joey Diaz's house there in Glendale, you'll find Brian Redband and uh, I think Joey Hennages got a great clip. This was from a oh, live with all that shit. So um, Owen Benjamin had something to say about uh, Joey Coco Diaz. And I'm going to play that for you today. I thought this was, I got a big kick out of this today when I saw this. I was uh, giggling at a time when I shouldn't be laughing. Uh, early this morning, Jules had hurt her knee last night. Uh, she came down with a case of Nini. What is Nini? This is where you break out with acne, but only on the knee. It's still Nini. hurting no, I'm right kidding. now so bad. <laughs> Jules was uh, panicking yesterday. What were you looking for? Some hot red pepper flakes or something. Well, we were watching The Bachelor, and the Bachelorette. we had to run back because the commercial was over. I'm not gay. Let it know. It's The Bachelorette, guys. I'm not gay. <laughs> uh, and Jules was looking for, we had some pizza. Yeah. And you were looking for the red pepper flakes. You were running around the house, and you slipped, and you fell, and you uh, landed on your knee, and you have a big welt. It looks disgusting. And then I started watching the show on Benjamin stuff, and I was laughing while you were uh, on the ground crying. <laughs> you couldn't even move. Here it is. This is uh, Owen Benjamin going after Joey Coco Diaz. And it's pretty funny. He's saying kind of the same stuff as me. So I guess we're uh, one and the same. Here he is. Uh, Owen Benjamin broadcasting out of his uh, really crazy, weird plantation. Oh, it's muted. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry for fucking up this show left and right day by day. I'm so sorry. Imagine that if I was like self-deprecating guy. How sick that would be. Here he is, Owen Benjamin, the king of... It, and I love these guys. Every day they got a new haircut and a different mustache. Where do they find the that time? That hoodie's kind of fire. I'd like He that. actually is looking pretty fire lately. I'd like to hire him as an agent. Here we go. <laughs> Maynard on Rogan today. I will not be watching. Oh, I got to show you something. He's nice now. Dude, people have been sending me some disturbing videos yeah. of Joe Rogan. Like See, this, this is one... like me. People have been sending me some disturbing videos, but I'm kidding. You know, I got a half smile on my face. He's dead serious here in the woods. I'm scared of the fucking woods, man. I wouldn't live there ever since my childhood in Maine. I can't be around a pine tree like that or a fence of that nature. Yikes. But listen to him. He's dead serious. Watch this. This is very funny. Maynard on Rogan today. I will not be watching. Oh, wow. I got to say something. <laughs> Why not? Uh, he's talking about, he goes, Maynard on Rogan today. So he's reading the chat and they say, Maynard from Tool is on Rogan. Maynard on Rogan today. I will not be watching. Okay. Why? You got something against Maynard? Who is crazy, by the way. Did you see that episode last night? I couldn't night? even pay attention. Hey, it's me, Maynard from Tool. I've got a stick up my ass. 
guy's got a real stick up his ass. I don't know why Rogan likes him. Hey, Rogan, newsflash. Nobody likes Tool. It's a fool's band. I might be misspeaking there. You might like Tool. Here we go. Maynard on Rogan today. I will not be watching. Oh, I, I got to tell you something. I'm joining this psycho Dude, cult. people have been sending me some disturbing videos of Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like this one. Nice. Someone said that he had an, um, some girl had an, uh, aborted his kid. Whoa. Abortion. And Joe Rogan's rea- reaction Abortion was, bad. Thank you, Jesus. Very disturbing stuff, man. The guy's a real real freak. And Joey... We uh, hate abortions now, guys, because of the left. Uh, I now know why they call Screenshot. him Uncle Joey. The dude's kind of uh, a pedo apologist. Oh, no, he's going after uh, Joey Diaz. Dude, they, they all claim <laughs> that I... Because I ate one of Joey Diaz's pot brownies, I went insane. No, he's going after Joey Diaz. Yeah, that's funny. Joey Diaz, by the way, doesn't play. He's threatened me before. I once opened my blinds, I go... Whoosh! And I see Joey Diaz out there going, Come on up, Michael David. I'll kill you. And I spit on him and he uh, he ran away crying. <laughs> well, I'll show you what insane actually looks like. Watch this. This is funny. By the way, don't eat pot brownies. <laughs> Pedo apologist. Right, this here we guy. go. Here's Uncle, so I know, know why they call him Uncle Joey. Listen Ron's to this. Ron's teacher who performed oral sex on 14-year-old gets 10 years probation and avoids jail. And of course, uh, Joey Diaz, Uncle Joey says... A good dick sucker never hurt anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, Joey, what you... That's... that's That that woman's a sexual predator. Yeah. I mean, that woman should go to jail. I mean, Joey Diaz literally just... um, Just to... Uh, you know, that's rape. I love this. He's disgusting. <laughs> uh, Diaz is a fat toe. Yep. <laughs> I know, no, that's that's what happens when you hang out with Joey Diaz too long. You start uh you start yep. you start justifying rape. Ah. A good dick sucker never hurt anybody. If if a teacher Very funny. Uh, I'm dying. Regardless of the situation, if my fourteen year old son got molested by a teacher in a school system, I'd think about killing them. Wow. Like that's not that's not sex that's not that's rape. You know that I haven't that's seen not a, I haven't um, seen the rest uh, of it here. You know you send your kids to school because you you think they're gonna not be raped. I like how he broadcasts out of uh, like the same scene from Beware Children at Play. Have you seen that movie? No. Beware Children at Play. Pull that up the trailer for Beware Children at Play and let me know if this it really looks similar. Beware Children at Play was really crazy. It was uh, this B movie. I've talked about this on the show many times. It was similar to Children of the Corn. It had that same vibe where the kids are evil and the parents got to kill the kids now. And uh, Beware Children at Play was so sick. The kids were so vile. There's a scene where a kid shoots an arrow through a guy's neck. I mean, it really is crazy. And Owen lives on the same type of turf, the same sort of territory as these kids from... uh, Beware, as they call it in the industry. Let's see if Jules found a clip here. Beware, Children at Play, a movie my uncle gave me. This was 1989. Wow. I was alive in the 80s here. Look at this. Oh, it was a Lloyd Kaufman movie. This was really gory and disturbing when it came out. Lloyd Kaufman, of course, is from Tromaville. And you might know Troma because of the Real Ass Podcasts Zack Snyder. That big uh, fat fuck with the mohawk there. Zatch. Or Zach, Zatch, or Zatch. Lloyd Kaufman, I think he worked for Tromaville. Here we go. It's the same guys who made Taxi. Here, Toxy. Uh, hey, are you Toxy? Okay. Here, watch. The trailer is wild. Yeah, watch this. Jules, you never saw this. Watch this. A trauma release. Okay, guys, it's the tra- Look at this. This is similar to David. Listen to that music. Cradle will fall. Down will come Alex Grove. That's my vibe. The demon has come to wow. enroll your children into the school of evil. Look at this. Soon you will learn that the only thing worse than Look at these kids. your children disappear is when they come back. 
Now, the only way to discipline Look at this. children See those woods? Look at that. The land. Anthony! Shotgun. Look at watch this. They shoot the kids head off. Beware children at play. Look at these kids. Look at that. This is where Owen lives. Very similar. I was right. This is Owen's property that this happened on. Look at that. The arrow! The arrow! Look at that. They're killing a kid. You gotta see the video version of this. This is so cool. Look at that. Shooting kids with a rifle and a shotgun. Oh! He raped them. You've been raped. So instead of a rape. Look, he pulled that kid's heart out. Very gory. That's Owen's land. That's Owen's trees. These are children. Watch this. They oh. are demons. You see that? He killed a little kid. Wait, wait, wait. Look at this scene here. Shocking. This is what's so gross about the movie because it's... Look at this kid and his parents had to sign off of this. So your son's going to be like held up against uh, the wall and then a guy's going to put a gun in his head and shoot his... Uh, and his head's going to explode. Is that cool? They're like, oh yeah, it's... What do you pay? $300? <laughs> Watch this. These are children. Look at this kid. Jeez. Look at this scene. That looks like that little kid from that meme. Again, goes, yeah. Again, this is a movie my mom forced me to watch at the age of six. He's holding the kid by his hair and putting a revolver into his mouth and going, ah, and it's just a little shot and the kid's head blows up. To me, that's... Right in front of the most haunted smiley face Watch of this, time. watch this. I know These that kid. That's children. Ashley Butterfield. Thank Look at that Jesus. shot! Look at that shot, man. I, we've done this jag on the show years yeah, ago. Yeah, the but kazoo the, kid. Yeah, what? Oh wow! Here, just one more time. I want to see them. These are children. Ah! Oh man, I really wanted to pause right on that. These are children. They're... These are children. Look at that, oh man. God. I mean, come on. You know, fun, fun, fun. This was a real movie, and this was supposed... To, I saw this movie. I was so sick. I thought this... <laughs> in the movie, by the way, it's like three hours of boring two-shot dialogue, and then this scene happens at the end. So you have to sit through like eight hours of just close-ups of two men barely talking. It's like the Josh Denny movie where it's like, Seth was a big part of our laws. <laughs> it's like that for two hours, and then this happens... And you're like, holy moly! They are demons. Oh, thank you. Joey. Be aware children at play. Okay, and that looks like where Owen uh, is doing this uh, vidcast from. Look at that. Same fucking land. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like I said, I've been up all night editing burger videos. And while I edit burger videos, I need to eat the burgers. While I edit, so to keep me fueled, and I've been very sick. So here's Owen talking about Joey Coco Diaz. And uh, we're going to listen to this. Did Joey get killed by Tony Soprano? I don't know. Diaz and Rogan both have the spirit of the toad in them. Yeah, they're, uh, they're disgusting. And if that was a male student with a female... A male teacher and a female uh, student, you would you would see it a lot more clearly. Wait, wait, wait. But for some reason, people I'm think that they kidding. can just... Right now, you said Owen's sweatshirt is lit. It's light. Yeah. Okay, Owen's sweatshirt right now is of a forest green, very similar to the pine trees in the background. That's a forest green. My dad had sweatpants of that ilk, and he got them at uh, Sam's Club. I remember that. Uh, it says the unbearables on the left chest, and it's got a really crappy logo of an axe, a hatchet, and a bear. And then underneath, I'm not kidding, right here in small letters, you know what it says, Jules? Yeah. I'm going to read it for you. Joy, not soy. Oh my God, I need that. I'm not even kidding. Somebody needs to get me this sweatshirt. The unbearables, joy, not soy. I'm a part of his shirt, and I don't even think it's dirt. He's living in a land that the kill me killed. The kids are killed. The kids are killed. Joy, not joy. Joy, not joy. Yes, yes, yeah. Cross the living street. Joy, not soy. Man, I swear this whole world is simulation theory built around us. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. 
Hi, I'm Mike B from B Movie. Okay, let's see the uh, rest of this. All digging horse, joy not soy. You can finally cop. Italy, where did you get that shirt? Here we go. Let's hear the rest of this. Joey Coco Diaz under attack. Views boys. Joe Rogan, D Joey Diaz, these guys. You know, in Joe Rogan's new special, he talks about how um, uh, teachers should be able to suck off their their students. It, it, these people are <laughs> oh so God. fucking gross, man. Yeah. They'll, they'll Joe, have it. They'll, they'll, there will be justice. Explain yourself. There will, there will be. be justice. I, I know that. I pray for it. Um, I know that someday these people will pay for what they say and what they Jesus. they think. I'm so scared of him. Uh, they'd be outraged if it were a chick. It's it's all just they know better. If it was a chick, they'd probably still be okay with it. I want to hire I, I Owen be as a writer on our show for fifteen hundred dollars a week. Let's Send him it. an email. Do you know his email or is does he not even have one? I feel like this guy He's doesn't have email. He's email. been banned from all email. Uh, email him. I want him to come work for the show. Wouldn't you like to see him sitting right here typing me stuff and then passing me a note? And I go, this just in, uh, the Jews suck. <laughs> that would be great. I would pay him to work for me. Prize if they've, why did you, why did Joe Rogan go to Thailand? Wow. He went to Thailand. You know, why did Joe Rogan say praise Jesus when someone so said he is setting this up that Joe Rogan is an actual pedophile that abuses children. Now, we wow. know he does what he does to deer. We saw this today. He tried to pull off. He posted a photo of a Johnsonville brat soaked in Prego. You know, Prego, <laughs> the uh, $2 pasta sauce. And he goes, oh, I'm eating some elk sausage. Uh, no, you're not. It's a brat. You only eat the filet. I posted this. I go, he only eats the filet. One filet, by the way. He gets the whole tenderloin. Cuts the middle piece out, the best piece, the queen cut, eats that, and then he beats the shit out of the deer like this. He he strings the deer up and goes boo, 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 like that stupid punching bag thing, where all you have to do is basically be in rhythm. You don't need to be a good boxer to just go. That's not boxing. That's just being in rhythm and the bag is swinging and you find this rhythm. It's like uh, working a fidget spinner. It's not boxing. You know, all boxers, they have this cut of them working out. They'll do push-ups and then they got on the speed bag and they're going... Anyone could do that. Just go like this. And eventually the bag and your hands sync up and you just got to kind of hold that for a little bit. And then... He does that with a deer. He doesn't eat that meat. Okay. Said that their baby was aborted. I have questions. You need one of those for the show, a speed bag. Yeah. Jules, I need a speed bag for the show where I could go. Boo, 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 Got boo, it. Hanging down here. And mine, I want to be, uh, I don't know. What colors do they come? They come in black, red, and stuff like that. I want a different Supreme. color. Supreme. Yeah. I want a different color that nobody else has had. Something new. Something Mauve. cool. Here we go. This is great with 2,000 plus in the chat. Yeah, that's what happens when you ban people or you put people in timeouts. Uh-oh. He's got milk in his mustache. He drinks milk. Are coming. That's how you know this guy's sick. He sits out there in the field and drinks milk all day. That's pedophilic. That's Only fucking babies sick. Drink milk. He's drinking goat's milk and shit. Hopefully. So is this what Mersh does? Is this? Yeah. Just watches Owen. But I like Owen now. That's the cool thing to do is to show his clips in support of your arguments. Right? Yeah. That's exactly. cool. All right. There he was. Owen Benjamin making fun of Joey Coco Diaz, the big time slapper. And I guess Joey Diaz is on the, uh, you know, people around the lookout for this guy. All right. We got two big things coming up for you guys today. If you don't mind uh, me resetting. Huge here. to do, Jules. Oh. Because uh, we're already at three hours here. So we're just doing fun ones now. Uh, Joey Diaz performs on stage. Should we check this out? I haven't uh, seen the full version of this. People have been tweeting this to me nonstop. Let's see this. Joey Diaz killing it. Doing, uh, what's that? Like a Rage Against the Machine song? Is that it? Look at this. Joey Diaz. Let's check him out. And somebody says, I dare you not to laugh when it hits 43 seconds. So let's try this. Joey Diaz. Oh, wait. Oh. Here he is on stage. 
Look at him go. Let's see what he does in 43 seconds. Four seconds, ten seconds more. Watch this. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Huh. How does he not fucking fall over and have a heart attack? It's like the most unhealthy guy I've ever looked at. I mean, he really looks terrible. So, what's this new link? Stephen Crowder, attention, we're canceling tonight's That's scheduled the same show. Link as same before. link. Why'd that guy send it? He don't know. He don't know? Uh, okay. I think we should do now. I want to save Biggie Mike. Oh, Joey Diaz. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. That's a good one. Joe <laughs> Rogan. Wait till you see Joey Diaz. You know, uh, he's got a lot of fans. Joey Coco Diaz. And uh, we did a video about Joey Coco Diaz. It's doing very well, like 79,000 views or something one like that. One of our most viral vids. Yeah, and it's when I was in my hippie uniform. It was, we were celebrating legalization day here in Chicago. It was a big gag and I was dressed up like the stoner. And a lot of people thought this was my real clothes. A lot of Joey's fans, we put out this YouTube clip about him because he was, uh, he was admitting to shitting in the shower and shoving the shit down his shower drain with his foot. Yes. <laughs> so you could see why I was a little bit disgusted with this we made a video about it and it didn't matter his fans uh first of all they thought i was actually a stoner where did this guy get his clothes from the 90s <laughs> i mean i it couldn't have been more obvious i was wearing literally like party city rasta costume clothes Dreads made of yarn yeah. oh yeah <laughs> fake it was a hat a jamaican hat with fake dreads yeah i look that really looks bad so I've, I have what's called dreadlocks. <laughs> Who the fuck is this wannabe Rasta? This guy looks like he'd go to a three... It's obviously a getup, okay? <laughs> it would be like if you were wearing a party city vampire outfit, and they were like, Who the fuck does this guy think he is, Dracula? What is he, a count? Uh, it's a co it's a, clearly it's like a fake cheap like shitty 80 costume. Like 80% of the commenters thought they were your real dreads. Yes. Even though they're just clearly They were clearly fake. As fake as it gets. There was even a time where I took off the hat attached <laughs> to the dreads. And in the video you did reference how you were wearing a costume. Yes. And it was all a an I outfit. mean, I had a lava lamp going <laughs> and all this stuff. I kept yelling, "Legalize it." It, 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 so these are the types of people, though, really, and it hasn't changed. I mean, all of our YouTube commenters, you could really play with them and feel free to do this in the comments. You could say whatever you want to them. They fall for it. They don't know what's going on. They don't know up from down. So we did this video about Joey Diaz stomping on the shit. And still to this day, I got a lot of people. Oh, yeah, Joey's way better than you'll ever be. And, and now we can say to them, I got a great response. Well... Not for much longer. Yes. Unfortunately, Mr. Coco Diaz is about a day away from death's door. He can barely get out of bed. He can barely walk. Oh, yeah, here was the comment. Someone goes, I hope Joey Diaz kicks you in the face. I go, Joey ain't kicking shit. He can't even kick his Xanax addiction. So... Guy could barely get out of bed. He could barely kick his Xanax. Xanax. How do you say it? Xanax. Addiction. I doubt he'll be kicking anyone in their face. You know, for a guy who works out every day, does jujitsu, does kettlebells, and eats healthy, he really looks like fucking dung. All right? Uh, spoiler alert. He doesn't work out, use kettlebells, do jujitsu, or eat healthy. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody who does those four things, <laughs> but they're not 300 pounds coughing and gagging and moving at a snail's pace. I don't know what it's called, but who could possibly be going against him in jujitsu? Like, who would volunteer? Why to would be you want to? Imagine <laughs> voluntarily wanting to be smashed by this guy. Think about that. Having Joey Diaz with all of his sweat and grease 
wrestling you to the ground. I mean, I really couldn't think of it. Who do you match him up with? A 78-year-old man who's willing to do this? I mean, wouldn't he need to sign multiple documents saying like, what do you think he was going to... If Joey forms. Diaz came up to me and they're like, would you fight him in a jujitsu match? I would go, are you out of that? Be like fighting an old grandma. No, he's going to die. Look at him. This is like if a boulder, a rock, a physical rock had emphysema. Now, we're going to show you this clip. He was on the powerful JRE, Joe Rogan Experience. Again, Joe Rogan doesn't understand quarantine. He's had Joey Diaz over, Brian Redman. I mean, everyone's just coming through. And then they go off and do 15 different podcasts. They think if they're just one-on-one -on -one with somebody at the time that it's okay. But you're out visiting hundreds of people a week. It's the same thing as being in a large gathering. Don't you see? Even the powerful JRE does not understand the simple concept. So we've got this clip um, from... Uh, where is he? Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz is hiding a Xanax addiction, and we <laughs> caught him. We caught him fair and square. If you're watching this later, don't go, oh, no, 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 he doesn't. He does. You're going to love this one at 2.01.30. And uh, Joe Rogan knows it's true. He don't give a fuck. It's like Joe Rogan pretends he cares about Bert. Every day, Joe Rogan's talking about Man, it would be really nice if Burt Kreischer could get out of his drinking addiction. And he'll really say some awful things about Burt Kreischer. Like, if I were Burt Kreischer and tuned into Joe Rogan, and he's sitting there with Tom Segura talking about how awful I am for an hour, I'd be mortified. I mean, you'll tune in <laughs> and it'll be like, man, Burt Kreischer really has to get his life together. He's throwing his whole life away. He's going to die, probably. He's addicted to alcohol. He can't stop drinking. He's a physical mess. And they're not kidding. But then Burt Kreischer comes on the show next, and Joe goes, have a drink, buddy. We're drinking. Come on. Well, why would you do this? You just said you wish he could quit the booze. So it's just like this with Joey Diaz. Joe Rogan pretends to care, but I don't think he really cares because you could just replace him with another comic. Let's see. 20130. You're going to love this. You're going to love what we found here. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. He works out every day, does jujitsu, and eats healthy. Doesn't that look like a healthy man? People go, how old is he? 88? How, how old is he, Jules? Can we find 88. out? 88. No, how old? Tell me, for real. I'm looking at a straight-up papa. He's 57. 57. So I mean, no, no, no. That looks like 77. <laughs> 57 today is Joe Rogan is 57. His shirt says ass. That is a straight up papa from Cuba. That is a grandfather. There's not much time left with this one, unfortunately. Would you like to hear what he says here? Oh, I want to take a little drink. Have one with me, by the way. This is a wonderful moment. This is such a little one, but I love it so much. I love hearing it. I love seeing this one. We caught Joe, Joey in a little uh, shameful lie here about Xanax. Have one with me, will you? Do one real quick, far from home. Here we are. By the rivers of Babylon mm. Where we sat down And there we were All right, cut that shit. <laughs> Here he is, and uh, I hope we back this up far enough. Let's hear what he says. Surgery. When this shit is going down... He beat the surgery curve. He like beat the years. surgery curve. Oh, my God. Imagine. So, I'm okay all day. I'm with the family. Fucking Did 6 o'clock. see cut. how loud I have to make it just to hear him? Joe Rogan's voice is normal volume, and then when Joey talks, he's like, I once went to a... Why are you whispering to me like this? Joe Rogan, you don't even know. His lungs are bad. He doesn't have the power anymore. It's over, folks. Look at that face. Look at that face. Look at his little face. Listen to this, though. It's so good. I'm okay all day. I'm with the family. Okay. Fucking six o'clock comes. I got to jump in the shower. It's basically where he lives. Jump over Laurel Canyon, make a right, go a mile past the comedy store. That's it. For some reason, man, I went in the shower. In the shower, I just started getting on a regular heartbeat. Oh, an irregular heartbeat. Okay, that sounds like a nice, healthy guy. 
I got an irregular <laughs> I came out. So I took a little anxiety medication. Wait, 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 wait. I got out of the shower. I took a little bit of my anti-anxiety medication. And Joe's like, wait a minute. I'm one of your best friends. You're on anti-anxiety medication since when? I'm Joe Rogan. I'm a firm believer in optimize your health, mind, body, and soul. Eat well. Exercise. Do this. That's how you get a good mind. You don't take pharmaceuticals, SSRIs. I didn't know this about you, Joey Diaz. What are you, weak? And yes, I do. I don't like a tele... Listen, if you're at home and you're shivering and you've got gorophobia and you don't want to go out, please take the fucking pill. But if you're one of our comedians, our tell it like it is big shots, I don't need you on SSRIs. You can't be so weak minded and then be telling me how to live life and, and, and ranting and raving and, and receiving all this applause. Your brain is all fucked up. And again, if you're one of these people at home, you're not a comedian, you're a scared guy on the computer, yes, fine, please take the fucking medication if it helps you get through the day. But why are all of our comedians on anti-anxiety medicine? You know what anxiety is? Fear! I don't know about you, but where I'm from, if you're afraid of everything, you're what's called a pussy! Remember this? Hey, you fucking pussy. If you're on anxiety medicate and everybody's just okay with being anxiety anxious and scared. No, no, no. This isn't cool. You're all fucking losers and pussies. Listen to this, though. This is where he gets caught in the lie. All right. <laughs> and don't start emailing me, Mike. A lot of people. I don't give a fuck. If you need CBD, if you have seizures, if you're weak in any way. You're one of God's mistakes. <laughs> this is what I think of you. Chow, I just started getting Listen. on a regular heartbeat. I came out. So I took a little anxiety medication. Got okay, dressed. wait, wait, wait. I, I, I know I keep pausing. He forgets, you know, a liar can only do so much. A liar's forgetfulness, forgetfulness is always the worst part of being a liar is we're only human beings. We can't remember every lie we've ever told. So Joey Diaz forgets. Oh, yeah, I can't tell Rogan and everyone that I'm on anti-anxiety medication because I've never told anyone this. But he forgets. And Joe's going to interrupt. Watch this. I came out. So I took a little anxiety medication, got dressed. What are you taking? Would they give me a point two five, whatever? I don't take them. What is? Wait, wait, wait! So Joe immediately, what are you taking? Uh, they give me taking all responsibility is off of him. Uh, uh they give me a point two five or something. I don't even know. It's such uh, nothing burger. Point two five. Oh, really? Now watch this. This is a fucking lie. This is like how a child lies. Watch this little thing. They give me a .25, whatever. I don't take them. What is it? Uh, like uh, Stenazol, whatever the fuck they call it. Xanax. Whatever. Oh, Xanax, of course. The drug of choice by all fucking crazy people. Uh, you didn't know? Oh, I don't know. It's uh, Xanax or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even take them. Oh, you don't? That's weird. I'm not prescribed to a lot of pills I don't take. You know what I mean? I go to the doctor every year. Hey, can I get a bunch of pills that I don't take or know the name of? You know the <laughs> fucking name of your medication. So look at this. It's like you're a Xanax user. You probably take it all day, every day. And then you know Joe's going to be against that. So you're like, oh. Will they give me a .25 Watch or whatever? I don't take them. What is it? Uh, like uh, Stenazol, whatever the fuck they call it, Xanax, whatever. Take Xanax? It's, it's a football. It's the baby one. It's not the sticks the junkies take. It's oh, the it's just the baby one, the footballs. If you're referring to drugs, uh, shapes is, is like that. You're Seems like a big like drug. you know a lot about you it. You know all <laughs> about it. It's, uh, I don't know. Turns out he used to sell this shit. 
<laughs> I don't know if we could find that. You don't go in there. Uh, see if you could find while we're here because we didn't note this out. He used to sell Xanax and shit. So in he knows this all episode? about it. Yes, in this episode. It's probably right after this a uh, little bit more. Just type in Xanax. See what you find in the transcripts. What you would do in YouTube, it's brilliant. If the, the YouTuber has closed captions turned on, you could do something called open transcript. Everything's transcribed. You hit control F, type in a word, you find it, go right to the part. It's really nice. But listen to this lie. The Xanax? It's a football. It's the baby one. Just the baby one. Don't worry about this. It's take. It's uh, <laughs> the little fucking <laughs> footballs, you know? So you got a little anxiety, so you took a Xanax. So I took How often do you take those I things? I take them. Listen. And he's also, talking. I hate this. Joe's talking so loud. He's talking so soft. And Joe knows. See the weakness of Joe's like, ha, 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 ha. It's all fun. No, but if he wasn't here, you'd be talking about how bad Xanax is and how anyone who takes it needs to reevaluate their eating and diet, right? So you're like, ah, oh, Xanax is fucked, and he knows that you think that. So he's going, oh, I, uh... Joe goes, how often do you take it? Listen to this. I, so you took a Xanax. So I took... How often do you take those I things? I take them... Most of the time, between you and me, I wash them. My wife washes them when she... Because I put them in my drug pocket. I take them down <laughs> to the store. And you forget they're in there? And I forget they're in there. And I yeah, I out. don't think so. I don't think Joe's <laughs> believe... Uh, how often do you take them? No, most of the time, it's a wash. What? <laughs> Most of the time I wash him. What? I leave it in my pants, my wife. That's how little I care about the drug. I just put it in my pants and uh, my wife then washes my pants. They get ruined. I Listen to this. He's actually... I want this man drug tested right now. I'm ordering it. I'm <laughs> ordering a mandated drug test. Let's put... Is there going to be Xanax in your system? Milligrams of it. A drug pocket. Listen. I take them down to the store. <laughs> and you forget they're in there? And I forget they're in there and I throw them in the hamper. And then my, so oh, between yeah. you and me, I wash more of them than I eat. And uh. I only get like, he gives me, if I ask him, he'll give them to me. Oh. I ask him for like maybe two prescriptions a year. You know? So you just keep them around just in I case. Just keep them around. Just what does it do? Uh, you see Joe's eyes? Mm. Look at Joe's fucking eyes. It looks like Larry David when he's singing. Okay. Okay. Look at so just keep them around, just in case. Oh, uh, yeah, Joe. Looks like you really believe your good friend with those suspicious eyes. Look at that. Keep them around. Just what does it do? I've never done it. I Just in case I get that Morgan Murphy freak out. Like I did. Morgan Murphy freak What's out? What's her name? What's her name? Morgan Murphy. Yeah. Yeah, one night I had a follower at the store. I don't know what it was. I fucking walked up the stairs and my anxiety lit up. Really? I almost passed out, but I went up there and destroyed the room. Oh, this is your king. My anxiety was... I couldn't even... I needed a pill in order to get through life. So I don't want to hear about how badass these guys are when they need medication in order to get out of the house. Did we ever find the other like part? 208, maybe, 208. that's what you're talking about. 208. Listen to this. So Joey knows all about Xanax. He's a fucking drug user. He's going to end up dead from drugs one day. And everyone's going to pretend that they miss him, and they do miss him. They love him. Listen to this. When I work out heavy, like heavy Wait, weights, I don't know if this is even. I gotta go to the bathroom before. We'll see. And before I get in my car, I gotta take a long piss. Does that ang does the medication help you? Oh, here we when go. you take an, a Xanax? Not if you don't take it. Right, but if you do I got take shit it. to do in the daytime, dog. I got no time for a fucking Xanax. No, I don't know no, what no. Well, what does it do? That's what I'm asking. Well, about. I'll tell you what happens with Xanax. I know for a fucking fact that nobody can tell me. When I first got into comedy, how I the, Joey D is the secrets of comedy. You ready? Okay. Listen when I got into comedy, all these jerk offs, you got to bring five people to a fucking show. Ah. Okay. Oh. Uh, let me interpret for those of you who don't speak <laughs> monster. What he's saying is when he first started comedy, which wasn't that long ago, by the way, he was uh, he started comedy in his mid 60s. Uh, when Joey first started comedy, he would do these open mic shows called bringer shows. You would have to bring five people. That was the deal. You want to get up and perform? You got to bring five people that pay and buy drinks and fill up the room. So in order to do that, he's going to tell a story about how he used to send out a text. Come to the comedy club. I've got pills for sale. That's how he would get. So he was a drug dealer. 
dealing out of the nightclubs. This wasn't in the 70s. This wasn't in the 80s. This was about six years ago. All right? A drug-dealing dope fiend. Listen, if you deal Xanax, you probably know exactly what they do. You know the name. He was playing yeah, dumb before. He's you're... like, it's a Tazamapin Zen. <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't you add up. You dealt it last year. Listen to this. Jerk off, you got to bring five people to a fucking show. Ah. I'm not asking nobody to come to a that show. That means I just no. Wait for Joe Rogan to call me and ask me, he wants weed. <laughs> you want weed? Meet me at the comedy club. Well, I got to meet you at the comedy club. Don't worry about it. Just meet me there. Next thing you know, you're paying 10 at the door. Oh, so I got into selling Xanax. A man who rips off his customers and friends. Is this a good man? It's not like you just change. You don't rip off people throughout your whole until you're 50, and then at 52, I'm done ripping people off and scamming. Seems like it's ingrained in it you. It just by seems then. like Joe Rogan gave you a life where you could rip people off in other ways, maybe steal their time. Uh, but uh, this is what he was doing. This isn't something nice and cute and funny. You invited people over, and then you hustled them in uh, paying for the comedy show. Listen to this fucking drug story. You know, I got you paying ten at the door, so I got into selling Xanax. There was a crazy oh. guy in Boulder who had just gotten out of prison for murder. And his wife, I don't know, they were getting Xanaxes from a pharmacy. So I was getting uh, Valiums, the V's. Oh, the V's. The V's. You don't know anything I don't about know anything that about world. It is. You know what the worst part about the LGBT community is? <laughs> the V's. Ah, oh, the V's. All right. So you are a drug dealing liar. What else are you fucking doing? You're stomping shit down your drain? You're drug dealing. How is this guy an honorable guy? You just like him this much that you're going to let all this slide? This is a straight up criminal who eats his own feces. Valiums. <laughs> the V's. The one with mm -hmm. the V's. The v's. You don't know anything I don't about know anything about it. 10 milligrams. You could sell those for two bucks a piece. He was giving them to me for like a quarter. So when I first was an open micer, I was a Zadix salesman. Oh, it, it always because I go. was a Xanax salesman. Can we just take a break on this stupid statute of limitations thing? He's admitting he was a Xanax salesman. Can't you just charge him just as a joke? Lock him up. Let him die in jail. Contest. Sorry. So for they me to should win the have contest, a joke right? jail, like a joke jail where you can hire them for pranks yes. and they go over and like arrest a guy, throw him in the slammer. Yeah. He stays there all night. And then the next morning they go, this was just joke jail. I mean, this guy, listen, this guy has sold drugs. He me too did the shit out of about several thousand women. <laughs> He's eaten his own shit. He stomps it down the drain. He's a physical monster. He's a literal monster. You know, I don't know why you get such a kick out of him. He has a huge audience. They love Uncle Joey. Uncle Thief. People there. <laughs> so they would say, hey, when can we buy some Xanax? You got to meet me at the broker. Listen to this. So I would make the, all of them would come up to me and go, what, what the fuck's wrong with you? I just paid $10 to get in here. You got to take that off the price of the pills. Don't worry about it. I got you covered. Oh. I had such a high profit margin. It didn't really matter. So oh, nice. I would sell Xanax to people. Oh, in the hundreds. Oh, 20s, in the 10s. hundreds. Cokeheads love those things. Oh. So what was that? I was a cokehead. I loved it. I could eat 10 of those. Dog. What does it oh, do? Oh, you could eat 10 of them, huh? You would eat 10 of them. Joe Rogan, Wait, what does I it do? you didn't even know what I they I thought were. you didn't really even know, but now you're kind of, <laughs> eh, Joe doesn't really care, so yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll just be honest. Uh, <laughs> knocks you the fuck out. Like how? Like, you're going to pass out. You could die like that. When people OD, <laughs> that's what they eat. Fucking Xanax. Oh, and, fucking... and you it's... sold that to people? So you've done attempted murders. This is a murderer. I sold Xanax by the hundred. What does it do? Well, if you eat too much, it kills you. Didn't you just say you sold it to people at, by the hundreds? Ugh. I don't think if there's a statute such, of limitation on people dying if you sold them drugs, if right? If you're such an experienced Xanax salesman, why would you let such a valuable he pill doesn't care. Be washed away in the water? Because he's an animal! <laughs> the, yeah, exactly. Why would you let your wife wash them? He doesn't to sell let, them if you don't want them. He's eating them. He's selling. I bet he still sells drugs. <laughs> you don't just stop selling drugs ever. Haven't you seen Blow? 
But it just relaxes you. <clears throat> it relaxes you, but if you eat 50 of them, yeah, you're going to die. And oh. I was eating 50 of them. You were eating 50? Oh, good. You were eating 50 of them, selling 100 of them. You know that that's the amount that you die from. You're doing it anyway. Somebody says, he's a serial killer. Lock him <laughs> up. Yeah. He deserves the electric chair. He sells Xanax to Tana Mojo. Yeah, I bet he does. I want him getting the electric chair. That's what the, Joe Rogan's headphones should be hooked up to this. <laughs> They're big enough. <laughs> the end of the day. Dog, I ate 30 of them in three days in Beaumont. It took me five days to recover. I told you, I owed Dean in Beaumont, Texas in 2005. <laughs> wow. From eating 30. Wow. What a good friend. Dollars. What a cool friend. Jesus, problem, that's a lot. The problem with that shit and me is, you ready? Uh, is we know. No, 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 no. We don't even. We know years. what the problem is. Oops, mic. sorry. Yeah, we understand what the problem is with lying, cheating, and selling drugs and eating 30 of them. Yes, we get it. Bad. And volumes. The Jesus, problem, that's a lot. The problem with that shit and me is, you ready? This is what I realized 20, 30 years. When I was an open mic, I was selling them. I was dating a chick that didn't do, didn't get high. So for me to Do you be mind if we just watch so I he has sentimental things to say? And I would be high. That would be good enough for me. So I, I was used to popping like six of them. I had my tolerance up there fucking high. And why did you like it? If because I ever see this guy in public, I'm going to tease him like a fucking bull. You, know? woo, 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 woo. you hold up the sheet. He starts charging. You go, ah, ha, 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 stupid idiot. He hits a brick wall, falls into a puddle of his own wrinkles. What a monster. You're an ape. You're a Um, No, I don't like him. He can barely speak. Is there any more here, or is that no, it? No, that was it. Joey Coco <laughs> Diaz, the role model, your idol. I hope Joey kicks you in the face. I don't think he's going to be kicking anything anytime soon. Uh, uh. That's what he does anyway. I filmed him once. <laughs> Have you ever watched his own podcast? He sits there like a... Uh, uh, I'm uh, sleeping in the back of the truck on this furniture pass. Once I was working in a bed for a dog Tom about as boring as a floor Tom for a drum set. <laughs> Not even a thing, isn't he? Talk about a floor Tom. That's his should be his nickname, floor Tom. He's the same monotone as a floor Tom. You use him, but then you're over here most of the time with Mike over here. Hi-hat, cymbal, bass drum. That's Mike. Tom Segura is more down here. Do, 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 do. You need him for a build-up, but then once... I don't think you You're not going to listen to the whole song is the floor, Tom. <laughs> you need that cymbal. Cymbal of hope. Me. Now. <laughs> <laughs> now. Um, they're all together doing Sober October. Are y'all doing Sober October? I keep forgetting that you have a giant ponytail. Like, yeah. when you're facing oh, yeah, forward, I have, you can't like, see it at all. And then when you turn, it all comes out and it's ridiculous. I'm like Shway from MTV News if he would have dared let his hair down. Look at this. You look like D-Smoke. I look like D-Smoke. Look that up. <laughs> I'm not going to legitimize or vandalize my hypothesize. Yeah, I look. That really looks bad. So I've, I have what's called dreadlocks. <laughs> and uh, not just dreads, dreadlocks. Such a cheesy outfit, too. They don't make any good hats for stoners that aren't given in the whole... There's no mi mystery <laughs> to it. You know, you walk in a place like this with a necklace and everything, they go, I bet this guy smokes. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing I don't like about weed clothes. <laughs> They're a little on the nose. You know, this is, uh, I just, you know, this is how they dress. So, uh, J-R-E. They're sitting around and the fellas start doing fart and poo humor. I don't like this stuff. You don't watch Red Bar. I'm not sitting around talking about my farts and my shits. Uh, you know, I have some respect for the people who watch this show, but Tom Segura, Bert, and Joe Rogan even is a big fart muncher, apparently. They start talking about L.A. monster Joey Diaz. And I know why they call him Coco now. What's the color of Coco? Brown. 
What is the color of the brown that comes out of the down? Shit. Joey Coco Diaz. Pull up a picture of Joey Diaz for us so people could see. He's this guy, and you've seen him. Toro. This is Joey Diaz. Toro. Thank you. I never thought of that. And you go, oh, he's amazing. He's brilliant. He's this big, fat paisan. Wait till you see him. I'm pulling up a picture of him soon. <laughs> as soon as our equipment uh, complies. Is this, yeah, get me uh, some others. Get me a close-up of him, because you got to see his Goomba face. This is his Goomba body. Big, fat fucking guy. And there's Ari Shafir in the background, probably getting ready to hose him down. You know, they were the original Legion of Skanks. That's one of their nicknames. You know what they used to call me, though, Logan? The original Legion of Skank. And they go, why? Why is that? Because we used to fuck around about doing gay stuff before anyone. You son of a bitch. And then he starts coughing. Uh, here he is. And again, yeah, I thought this was guy was on The Sopranos, right? Now, people watching this are like, this Red Burger is such an idiot, he doesn't understand. Joey Diaz is actually funny. He's not just some old man, you idiot. Red Burger, you're so out of... No, we know every aspect of Joey Diaz. We know that it's not just an Italian old mafia guy. We know the ins and outs. We've seen all his appearances. We're judging him as you failed to do, as his true self, a violent fool. Okay? Uh... In the past, people go, Mike, why are you hating on Joey Diaz? He's fine. He's committed uh, heinous Me Too's. We have audio of Joey Diaz himself going, When I was uh, at the comedy store and Chelsea Handler was there, this is when she was just starting out. You know who cannot stand me? You know who you can't mention my name around? Chelsea Handler. Oh, no, she's the worst. The first time I met Chelsea Handler, I went off on her in a sexual way. You tried to fuck her? She was fucking gorgeous. Yeah. She was gorgeous. I knew that at that time she was doing drugs. Yeah. She was opening up for Dave Attell. And I see Chelsea Handler looking finer than a motherfucker. Did she have big breasts then? Or oh, in 1998, Chelsea yeah. Handler was fucking banging. So we start talking. She tells me what her credentials She's very sweet to me. Yeah. She tells me what her credentials were and not six minutes into the conversation I'm like let's get a rock of coke and let me eat your pussy and shit and her face turned pale she was a fucking 11 she was a dime I used to go up to her and go come on over I'll give you some coke I'll eat your pussy all night and then she would run and I'd go Rah! and the ground would ripple as I dragged her back to my Laville Deville sorry then I beat the shit out of her and shit down her throat. And everyone's dying laughing as if this is hilarious. Not me. I find that to be revolting behavior, as should anyone. And I'm not a liberal. So what you're about to hear is a story about Joey Diaz that will shock you and blow your mind. We're going to start right here. I got problems. <laughs> problem. yeah. This would have been a problem That's in problem 97. With hair. When I wipe, sometimes I wipe it with hair and this, the width of the smear is so disgusting that I just yeah. take a shower. I'm like, yeah. what? I is go straight to shower. Shit showers. Are you oh, shit shower God, all the time. Yeah. You go shower. with no wiping. No wipe. Here. Wow. Okay. First, with a nice double from Ari Shafir. He shits. He takes a shit, doesn't wipe, does the wiping in the shower. Could you imagine sometimes the amounts that I have to scoop and scoop until this process is finished? I can't imagine going into my shower and getting anywhere near that. So he'll take a shit. He's got an ass full of jelly, runs over to the shower, probably does his hair and everything first, leaves that stuff on till it stains and burns. And then he gets in there and he goes, mm, 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 shower, uses it as shower gel. <laughs> It's sick. I would never do that. So let's hear some more. 
You're fucking Ooh, I wipe it. first. Why? Because it's too much. I don't want shit in the floor and of the top. Of you don't leave it there. <laughs> what do you mean? It goes down. You're fucking, fucking out of your mind. It goes down. You're not cleaning it good, though. Cleaning what? You don't, you don't the clean the floor. Oh you got shit bacteria stomp. on your floor. Stomp, stomp. 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 Joey stomp. Do the stomp, stomp, he says. Because you got to clean it. You got shit all over the tub. He goes, you do stomp, stomp. You know what stomp, stomp is? I'm not kidding. I reviewed these tapes and others. These people will shit in the shower and stomp the feces tube down the drain with their foot. Yes. And they call it Man. the stomp stomp as if they're producing a rare wine. You'll hear more. You mean, it goes down. You're fucking sink. out of your mind. It goes down. You're not cleaning it good, though. You know what? You're, you're you clean the floor. Oh, you got shit. Stomp. Bacteria There's a guy in the chat that says, I don't think it's that gross. There's a series of people doing this. I, this isn't the first time I've heard this. That's why most people didn't even bat an eye when they heard this. Think about the millions of people who saw this app. I'm the only one bringing up this. We've heard this story too many times. We're used to it. Oh, uh, yeah, guys shit in the shower. They push it down the drain with their toes. Uh, no, no, no. Come on. Get back here. No, no, we don't do that. <laughs> And if your friend did it, if you do it, you're perverse! Listen to more, this gets worse. Floor. Stop, stop. Stop. Joey Diaz, stop the drain. Stop Joey the drain. Diaz is telling me a story once stop about it. how he had to take a shit, so he took a shit in the in the bathtub, <laughs> uh, and then he had to smush it with his foot to get it to go down the drain, and all... Joey Diaz, that giant fucking boulder that I just showed you, the Italian pizza, says he would shit in the tub and smash it down the drain with his foot. And they're conversing over this as if it's a funny story that happened at the sub shop. Joey oh, Diaz, stop the drain. Joey stop Diaz the drain. is telling me a story once stop about it. how he had to take a shit, so he took a shit in the in the <laughs> bathtub, uh, and then he had to smush it with his foot to get it to go down the drain, and it all wouldn't go down. And that's why he's too fat to use the toilet. <laughs> Dude, he, Dude put, put, he told me a few times. Do you remember those logs? He, he told me leave, a few times. He used Listen. to leave logs, and he'd say, come look at this. And he, he would to. go in there. No, no. His, when he was really big. He couldn't read his couldn't ass shit. pushed him from front of yeah. the toilet, so he, he couldn't get ass. all the way back there. Wow. So his, his oh, yeah. Why giant are we shits would leave they would lit they would land on the beach in the front of the water. They didn't land The beach. He's referring to that patch of porcelain, which I don't have a low flow level toilet. So I can't even I keep my toilet water almost up to the where the seat is. Flush. It's like an infinity pool, my toilet. Okay, uh, that's how high I keep the water. You go, how does the water not fall <laughs> off? It's an infinity pool setup. Okay, it looks, it's an illusion. It looks over the rest of the bathroom. It's beautiful. Um, it's a little modern, yeah. Uh, but Joe's talking about Joey Diaz would take a shit and it would land on the porcelain. The water level was so low, because I guess in LA they conserve more water maybe. Mm. Water level so low, so his shit would stay on the beach. They couldn't get it down. He would just leave it there in Joe Rogan's bathroom and let it harden on there, and it would become part of the porcelain. It would fuse would with the porcelain, and people, it would actually that. become valuable, quite valuable at that time. It turns into <laughs> copper, a copper pot. You ever heard the term copper pot? That's where it came from. Wow. People like that leaving load. <laughs> leaving load. All right, listen to this, more of this horse shit. Land on the water, oh, so right. they never really flushed. Oh my god! So you just see them, and they're like, Bleh. he sends me photos. No, all the still. time. Yeah, oh, shit. All his, the time. Now that he texts, he's he texting sends, like a fucking ninth grader. He sends me photos of his log, <laughs> of his run, <laughs> of his laid track. Oh. God, he sends me photos. That is a me three. <laughs> the phone company is the third victim in that one. All right. The computer. Computers have feelings too. So uh, they're talking about this, and Joe Rogan. That's going to get even greedier than this. Listen to this. Yeah, yeah. He's so. like, yo, you see the monkey on this chick? Yeah, everything. Yeah, he sends me pictures. Everything, dude. My shits in Colombia from all the just the greasy uh, oily. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's travel dropping again. Yeah. My shits in. Colombia, yeah, I was actually in Colombia. I learned a lot more than you've ever learned. Would you like to know everything? Okay. Yeah. Just trying to get away to Colombia so I could tell everyone I went there. I doubt he's even going on these trips. 
he disappears, he's probably seeing Star Wars 50 times in a row. He was talking about Columbia the whole first part of the episode. He could have learned that all from Narcos. Exactly. Uh, in Colombia, uh, there's plantains. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah, I didn't bring a cell phone or a, uh, a desktop. Congratulations. What a life. <laughs> Let's uh, fast forward, I think. We're going to go to uh, 3346. You know what? We're almost there. 3346 here. And if you're just tuning in, I'm, uh, I've hippified. Because of the legalization of weed. Right out of his ass. Yeah. Uh, Joey told me one time that uh, he was about shitting in the shower. And he was like, yeah, it was great. I did it all the time. I was like, you fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Joey told me once about shitting in the shower. Yeah, it was great. I did it all the time. So imagine this guy, like the lead character from the show, Dinosaurs. He comes in, Fraggle Rock... You know, literally looking like, uh, what do they call that thing? A national landmark. Looking like a landmark. Walks in. Shits in the shower. I used to do it all the time. Shit in the shower. I'm washing. I'm plopping. Imagine this. He's washing. Do they, like, just... squat over to no, do the shit? No, he just shits just as out? he soaps up. He goes, <laughs> and he's loofing himself up. So it's like And the then melted... it's going, blop, 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 out the back. It's like the melted animation. Yes. Oh. And he doesn't even care because he's so... And he doesn't do the spread cheeks lost. move. Melton Listen to this. actually cleaner. Listen to this. Shitting in the shower. And he's like, yeah, it was great. I did it all the time. I was like, you fucking... <laughs> Shit shit in, in the, the shower, shower? and he's like, "Yeah." He goes, and then he's like, "If it's like a log, I just shit, and then I just toss it uh, to the <laughs> toilet." And I was like, "Come on!" If it's a log, I shit and then take it and toss it into the toilet. Now, what you don't know, double vanity in between the shower and the toilet. This was a long hurl over cabinetry and sinks and beauty brushes and makeup. So the shit would fly, and it's this is Joey Diaz's shit. It's as loose as, you know, Taco Bell soft taco meat. And it's flying, and it's raining all over all of his wife's stuff. And he's like, oh, fuck. And then he falls through the shower curtain onto all the shit. It gets everywhere. And what does he do instead of clean it up? Skips town. Listen to this. He would throw, he would handle his shit and throw it into the bowl. Log, I just shit and then I just toss it uh, to the toilet. And I was like, come oh, on. Oh, no and then, way. Yeah. And then uh, he, he said, listen, uh, he said that. Uh, how much uh, practice does he have in doing that? Well, I know, you know, he must have missed before. Crumple <laughs> piece of paper, you go yeah. for the, the can and you miss. Oh, missing oh, that. He's, missing would be so bad. He said that, I go, you, did you stop? That's so fucking revolting. Did you? He goes. He's like, I had to. I go. Why? why? He goes, My wife saw me do it one time. She wow. Said, no more. No, no, no more. My wife yeah. saw me do it. Yeah. Yeah. Walking in on oh some my god. With shit. That's when the police should have been called, and he should have been. <laughs> why is this funny? Oh, you know what? And it was then on. I knew I should be in cahoots with him as a comedian and friend. What? <laughs> if somebody told me that story about e anyone. My dearest relative, believe me, I, they would be from a from me. <laughs> so that, what a harsh reality on that show. And later on in the show, they stripped to weigh each other for no reason at all. They haven't even been on a sober break of any sort. So very weird. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to keep this show moving. But first, a quick little break, right? No. No. To hell with it. We stay. Because we high man, <laughs> Coco Diaz, everybody. He had his last podcast. Now, what do you mean his last podcast? Mike, I thought this guy was cool. I thought he was better than you. Nope. Turns out ever since I did his little Xanax expose on YouTube, which went viral here, uh, he quit his podcast. I'm going to go ahead and you could uh, uh, spread this rumor as well. Who's going to stop us? Joey Diaz quit podcasting. Because of me. Well, and Jules. Remember, it's, me. it's the boss of us. I hope that cunt gets corona in her butt. She did. Okay. I've never been called a cunt before. Yeah, so don't talk about my wife. Imagine I was like, don't talk about my wife. I don't care. Um, This is really <laughs> wild. Joey Coco. He's, really, this is his last show. He's saying good. Oh, he looks wonderful, doesn't he? 
Meanwhile, I got this beautiful white shirt on. He's got the same white shirt you would wear uh, in line while the guards check your anus for uh, contraband before you go into prison. Which is where I'm going to send him because he issued a an extremely violent threat against my life. I don't know who he thinks he's messing with here. So the Scarmucci brothers apparently are the next knuckleheads in line to come kill me in Chicago. Did you hear this, Jules? They're looking Fuck. for me. Thanks apparently, they've been looking for me for three months. Uh, they're not very good at looking. <laughs> So we're going to show you this. This is wild. And this was sent to me. And listen, I don't want to yell at anybody. This video clip was sent to me over 8 million times. Mike, even today, this morning, Mike, Joey Diaz is top. I'm the creator of Red Bar, you know. But somebody's got to tell us. So you don't want to poo-poo that because then nobody's going to tell us nothing. Then, and then we have no scoops. Anything. So how about this? If something is a week old, well, I can't even say that. Because sometimes things get Just missed. keep sending just it to me, it. I guess. Just You're keep just sending it to, to me. I'm ripping it. out my hair. I scolded a guy once. If I'm in the wrong mood and you text me something that's been sent to me even one time before, I take, I find you in the phone book. I come to you. I do stuff to you. I start ripping wires out of your, by the building of your house. Don't worry, guys. He does it to me, too. Yeah. I'm a very, very touchy guy. I explode <laughs> at a moment's notice. You know this about me. So step away from your keyboard when messaging me because you might be on the receiving end of a violent yell. <laughs> it leads to nowhere, though. And I love all you guys. And I think, you know what's so Don't cool about offense. the show? But nobody is. People are allowing... Now, they know my personality now, and now I could scream at them online, and they go, ah, this is... Uh, he's the best. And I go, That's oh. nice. Instead of going... Because, you know, back in the day, you'd yell at somebody online. You'd have the same... Um, what do you call that? Uh, uh, you'd have the same uh, intention, but they go, whoa, somebody's butt hurt. Now, when I scream at people, they go, oh, it's one of Mike's patented screams. Man, this rocks. Can I get an autograph? Sorry for scaring everybody. Okay, you want to hear Joey Diaz threaten me and my wife's life? And are you going to let him do this? Or should we all go kill him and his wife? I don't know. Is this a killing thing that we're doing now? I'm killing scared. people? You accuse a man of doing Xanax as a gag, and now you must die? I like how it they're seems constantly strict. complaining about how you can't do any jokes yeah. anymore, and then we make a joke about them, and then we need to yes. be killed. Guys, I want you to think about this. These are the same people who whine and complain that cancel culture is out of control. I make fun of this fat man, and it rings true, and I need to be put in the ground. These Talk guys about just have canceling. one tiny article written yes. about them when they make a bad Talk joke. about canceling. You want to cancel my pulse. <laughs> so, guys... I mean, really, we're really exposed. I didn't know. I thought Joey would see this video that I did about him and go, he's a hell of a guy. He's got my endorsement. Out That's the anyone, type of guy I, I like. that he would like it. These are supposed to be comedians. Your comedians are threatening me. Have I ever done anything that deserves threatening? I want to make it very perfectly clear. This is all I do. If you don't see it on the show or in the bring back group, I didn't do it. Uh, I don't go behind the scenes. I don't try to mess with people. I don't, I'm not an internet troll. I'm not a, one of these weird guys. I like to make fun of people. I've always loved this. And you do All it right? in the most honest possible way yes. in front of a camera with your own face. So when you hear, oh, Joey wants to kill him. Don't think, well, oh, my, maybe Mike did something, but I don't do stuff behind the scenes. I've got a 17 uh, year track record here. It's amazingly clear. There's not one person who's ever said a bad thing about me. Except. And then we have a speed reader come in. <laughs> he does this thing where it's like 50,000 names. Okay. Uh, you got to hear this. I've been threatened. Me and my wife have been threatened. Okay. Check it out. Joey Diaz. Then invite me on to your show. Uh, we're living in just weird times. But we kept it solid for you we kept it so th they're saying goodbye by the way i was the star of this demise who do you think brought covid into this fucking country no not me <laughs> but i mean somebody did 
This was me. I, I pretended I was Chinese. I walked around and go, Oh, is it okay if I bring a vial or something into your country? Can I bring this here? They go, Yeah, of course. You're Chinese. I go, Oh, thank you. I'm just going to put this stuff in all the food. Uh, I might have spread something. <laughs> all right, check this out. Look what this guy's going to say about me. We're only 20 minutes in. No. Is that true? Mine says 115. 115. Wow. But that's including the pre show. Guys, uh, the new Red Bar Season 19, each show is only going to be 38 minutes long. I just can't. I can't come up with stuff to talk about. <laughs> you know me. I got nothing to say. Here, check this out. As real as we could for you, you know. Buses, man. We did a lot of drugs on the show. You know, I ain't going to lie to you. Okay, so here, this is how this all happened. And pay attention to this. We did a lot of drugs on the show. Not going to lie. And, you know, somebody made a good point. They go, Joey's so old, in his mind, drugs are like something that people bust you for. We all do drugs now, you stupid idiot. Like, if somebody accuses me of doing drugs, I go, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you make that face. Joey Diaz, because he's so old, he got busted for doing drugs so many times that when somebody busts him for doing drugs, I go, I don't do it. You're allowed to do drugs. Joe Rogan is sitting there going, Hey, man, yeah, last night I did shrooms, and I'm going to try Coke, and we're going to make a whole pot. Don't you see, Joey? You don't even have to be defensive about doing drugs. Don't worry about don't it, Don't worry man. about it. Let Chill. it slide. You're very greasy. Can't you just let it slide along with everything else? Listen to this. So he brings up doing drugs, and then he goes, Oh, yeah, that guy. And this sparks a lie. I want to show you how a lie gets formed. Watch this. We kept it solid for you. We kept it as real as we could for you, you know? We did a lot of drugs on the show. You know, I ain't gonna lie to you. That fucking idiot in Chicago, he's eating Xanax. You should have come on the show a couple nights. You see how, how does his listeners follow this? Because they're really fucking stupid. I mean, these people are grave diggers for a living. He goes, that fucking idiot in Chicago, he's eating Xanax. Do you see? And they don't even follow. What he's saying is, remember that guy in Chicago who said that I'm eating Xanax? That's what he means. That fucking idiot in Chicago, he's eating Xanax. He's talking out of both ends. You see this? So he mentions drugs. That reminds him, oh, yeah, I was exposed for doing drugs. Ah, shit. Okay, well, I'll just talk about that guy now. So this is what he does, okay? A lot of people were worried for me. This is his final farewell show. This would be like if Johnny Carson started mentioning uh, that one time I dressed up as a Jew. <laughs> na, 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 remember that? <laughs> you guys got to watch Halloween from last year. It's on the Scars Club. I can't believe it's almost coming up Should on Should we play year. them a clip to promote the Scars Club? Get Halloween like from the Bring Back Group. People were posting those clips. Okay. It will show them my dance. Yes. And they're not going to believe how funny I could be. <laughs> Watch this. As real as we could for you, you know. Glizzy. We did a lot of drugs on the show. You know, I ain't going to lie to you. That fucking idiot in Chicago, he's eating Xanax. You should have come on the show a couple nights. And that poor bastard's got COVID. <laughs> Fuck him. Him and his cunt girlfriend could fucking die. And people are looking for him anyway. Aww. I had a room. I had a bad room about that dude in Chicago. People are looking for him anyway. All right. They're looking for me. They've been looking for me for months, huh? Going door to door. Do you know this guy? <laughs> Maybe they got the picture of me dressed up as the Jew. With You know, they can't recognize me. People are looking for me as if, as if it's 1970. And they don't have my address. Watch this. We could fucking die. And people are looking for me anyway. <sighs> I had a room. I had a bad room about that dude in Chicago. So if you know him, tell him to fucking leave town. Oh. The fucking guy Genie Brothers are looking for him. That's the word on the street. He insulted somebody wrong. Not me. Oh. He insulted everybody. He insulted somebody wrong. The Gargini Brothers. Uh, two Fuck. brothers from his fictional mind. Again, tell that guy to leave town. You know, that's not a, a phrase people use. You better leave town. What are you talking about? No, uh, you, what? people don't Does do he that anymore. against me, by the way. I what do you mean, Jules? About are him. you crazy if some bitch like you <laughs> ever said anything about me oh my god seriously i mean isn't it funny though? i'd peel that pussy right How off and i'd get so mad about a girl saying something about he's you. so mad about everybody saying something about him he's never been teased do you remember that movie never been kissed 
I'm making a film now. Never been teased. It's about Joey Diaz. And, you know, everybody has kissed his ass. Everybody treated him like the godfather. And then I come along and I'm ragging on him. I'm making him feel minuscule, man. I'm making him feel like, uh, you know, like one of his dingleberries. I was re-watching the original clip of him talking about us for a special project. And he was so he was like, don't call me fat. Don't call me 80. Yeah, don't call me fat. Don't call me 80. Like, you want to talk about something? Talk about the edibles I eat. This is what he said. Like, we can't call We don't fat. do videos about edibles. <laughs> this guy ate an edible. Are you out of your fucking mind? What can we How about this, of? Joey? Me and you, one-on-one -on -one in the ring. Whoa. Hold on. The ring from the movie The Ring. A well. <laughs> Me and you in a well. Now, I'll get into that well super easy. I'll fall right to the bottom and break my whole body. You'll get stuck, in which case you might win. So it's a good deal. The offer is on the table. I'll come to New Jersey. You're disgusting. And by the way, is weed legal in New Jersey? I think it's still on the table. Let's arrest you. I'm going. This is what I'm going to do, Joey, because I'm so maniacal and Freddy Krueger-like. I'm going to the police station. I'm going to chop up this audio and say that you've threatened me. Now, the police are so stupid. They can't see edits yet. They're 50 years behind on editing tech. According to they will arrest you. you don't even have to chop up, chop up the audio. Wow. Okay, we're going to show that soon. Uh, should I keep playing or do we go somewhere else? I think I'd just play it for but a second. But what do you mean, according to Thomas Wojewski and you're pointing? Oh, just oh we have a Facebook link. link. So look at this. Uh, we've made videos. Spread this around because my life's in danger. Guys, we don't play around with uh, human life here, okay? Especially not mine. Very valuable. His life, not so good. All right, check this out. And we will be, Joey. Here's the thing about Joe. Oh, wait, I want his video. Somebody made a video. I know, I can't find it. Hey, so guys, whoever made the video, Thomas Winooski, let's go. We've got an edit here I want to share with people. But, uh, Joey, you've been arrested several times. The police in Jersey literally know you. I'm going to call them. The DA, I'm going to go, you hear Joey Diaz is coming back in town, and he's launching his move back with a threat. You should keep an eye on him, and then I'll everything you do, I'm going to feed to the DA. How about that? Do you like that, Joey? Oh, my anxiety! Now, of course, we're just scaring you. We ain't snitches. But imagine what I could make your anxiety go through. I could really turn you into a puddle of shit. You got to take three Zans just to go on the comedy store stage and tell your fart jokes and spray your osium into the air. Joey, seriously, stop. Because I, I could destroy the rest of your pittance here. The, you only have 10 more gears here on Earth. A a and by the way... Wait till you see the funeral episode I have planned for you, <laughs> where I play music and we celebrate your death on this show. It's all going to happen here. We'll be here while you're in Earth's ground. So you got to stop and you got to give me some cash. You go to Rogue and you tell him, Joe, I need to pay some guy off or he's going to keep me. I want $200,000 in my mailbox by next week or I'm going to the DA. Sorry. You get it from Rogan. Rogan, please, just one more time, I promise. <laughs> so look at this. Aiding and abetting a crime. So yeah, he knows a perpetrator's illegal plan. That is illegal. You're going to get 31 years in jail. In these situations, you're culpable under the accomplice, uh, accompli, accomplice liability theory because you knew of the illegal plan and you willfully did something to cause it be carried out or concealed. And that's what I'm going to tell the judge. They're going to believe it from all your kidnappings. And then what? You're going to spend, you're going to be like Bill Cosby. Oh, I'm blind. Oh, your honor, I'm blind. I could stay at home. I could stay at home. Lock him up. I send my enemies to jail. You'll be jailed. You mess around with this red bar. You'll be framed. You'll be jailed. Pretty fucking fun. Uh, Joey Diaz is threatening my life once again. Remember the Gargini brothers? Those boys work for me now, right? People always ask me, Mike, what happened with the Gargini brothers? I heard they're out there. I said, those boys work for me now. They came, believe me. You know, those twins. I slit one of their throats, by the way, because I was angry. I was trying to prove a point to this other 
uh, in, in, what do you call this? inferior employee of mine that I had. They were shooting through the back of our Jeep and we were hiding under, uh, yeah. uh, what do you call that? Buckets of like chicken batter. What, yes. That had meth hidden inside it. But they had meth in them. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, the Garginis work for me now. They're, they're not a threat. So Joey Diaz is, you know, he's, uh, well, you'll see. Let's <laughs> watch this video. You're not going to believe this video here. Uh, but before we do that, I'd like to take a drink. And I'd like to uh, celebrate with everyone here. Um, we'd like to welcome you to our new life here in the desert. And you're all welcome. And we'd like to welcome you to the new era of Red Bar. We think it's going to be great. And we're really excited to share this chapter of our lives with you. This is what you told me to say. I'm in a great mood Are they mood buying today. it? I'm in a great mood today, too. Um, we're going to play you this. This was inspired by uh, our move. It's perfect for us. And uh, it's from Tom Green. And I think this will make a perfect drinking song. You could all have one with me here today. Fill up a glass. Ooh, when do I get to try my aperitif? I wonder, uh, I'm sorry, Jules, that's actually a digestif. <laughs> it's an aperitif. I believe Strega is a uh, digestif. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Life on the Road by Tom Green. Uh, this is really sad, and, uh, you know, we have a lot in common, me and Tom. Every time we see one of his vans, his Spreaker vans, what do you call those? We go, is that Tom Green? Yeah. My dream is to run into Tom Green in the desert, drive up to him, tell him that I'm a huge fan, and tell him that I do this podcast just like him, and then we become great friends, and we discuss audio, and we discuss gear, and we have almost the same dog. You know, except he's got what, Jules? No chick. Yes. <laughs> so I am one above Tom Green in that department, huh? Am I right, guys? Fucking people in the ass left and right around here jacking off. Showing people everything over here. Here, guys, we're going to drink together. Let's raise a glass. Let's fill up glass. Let's see. You guys are peers. I thought somebody was going to say, you guys are awesome, but it turned out it's you guys are peers. All right, here we go, guys. Raise your glass. Have a drink. Tom Green, everybody. Yeah. Yes. It's like this. 2020. 2020. <laughs> Cheers, guys. From the Valley of Fire. For real. TG. Woo! From the Woo! Valley of Motherfucking Fire. For real. Yeah. A TG. It's like this. Here we go, folks. It's like this. 2020 was a bitch, but I don't give a damn. Head in the sand like ostrich. I feel like Aaron Brockovich with jock itch. Put on your mask or get That's sick. sick. I'm not so slick. I headed to the desert with my van and my dog, but, but no, no chick. chick. I'm not so, so slick. slick. I headed to the, the desert, desert with my van and, and my dog, dog but, but no, no chick. chick. Kind of pathetic, but I can rap though. Check my phonetic. Put this microphone on credit. If I was rich though, I never said it, I keep it copacetic. And if my nose don't blow, take a seat call. And baby, give me a call. <laughs> I'm not so slick, I headed to the desert in my van with my dog, but no, no chick. chick. <laughs> oh shit. We put that idea down. So. All right, there it is, I Tom Green, the everybody. On when I recorded oh, there's it, Charlie. I wanted you guys to hear. Okay, stop it. If uh, anybody knows his whereabouts, you let me know. I'll go uh, run into him. We'll uh, create a friendship there. In the chat, they were asking if you wave at other Jeeps. I do. Yes. I do. Uh, yeah, you turn into this thing where you're friendly. They don't like it, though. And by the way, we have the top of the line one. So every Jeep we see on the road is less than ours, and they all get mad because we have the one with the painted. If you notice, we have the one that's got the painted bumpers to match the car. And painted uh, handles. And that shows it's the luxury city <laughs> version. So they don't like that. They still treat us like Jews from the city because we have the luxury Jeep and not the rock climbing Jeep. And but ours is the most expensive one. You, you can't get it. You cannot get a more expensive Jeep than the one we have. And that bothered the other Jeep guys. <laughs> they look at it and they go, yeah, now mine feels like a piece of crap. So... We've done it again, folks. We've alienated ourselves we from a community. We just to be a part of the Jeep crowd. Hashtag we noticed. Thank you very much. I'm very proud of that. You know, um, I've never bought a car in my life. And a lot of people, they even say this. You drive a new car off the lot, you lose a lot of money. 
You know what? That's true. If, you know who said that all the time? My dad. You know why? Because he never made any money. If you never made any money, that's a great rule to follow. Don't buy a new car, you crazy, stupid idiot. I always said this. I go, you see these people, they got 30000 And back then it was 30000 They got $30,000 cars. They're making $40,000 a year. Yeah, that is stupid. But, you know, we're lucky enough to be in a situation where none of that matter. I don't care what the car is worth. That's not what I'm interested in. I mean, people still say this to me. I don't buy things because of what their resell value might be. I buy things to, uh, you know, I like to burn money. I got a hole in my pocket, my dad <laughs> used to say. I got a hole in, I, I worry, that money is Isn't burning a, a hole in your pocket. That? That's what my dad used to say to me when I was a kid. If I got $10, boom, it'd be gone. He said, that money is burning a hole in your pocket. Did anyone else, your dad, ever say that to you? That Have you ever heard that term? Oh, of course. That money's burning a hole in your pocket. But isn't there a song where it's And like, he would say, slow down. I spend, oh man, if my dad knew how much I spent on this move, he would shoot himself right in the skull. Um, but that's because he grew up poor and he is poor. He's nothing. Someone He's says nothing. a 1970 Jeep is better than a new Jeep. Well, that's Fine. not true we'll at all. Uh, I guess it looks cooler, but it's not true at all. Uh, Capability-wise. We're getting the next. And, yeah, and we, by the way, we have a whole Jay Leno's garage of cars, okay? <laughs> 1970s, 1960s, so like all the, the years. Jeep, if you don't probably... like the Jeep, I got a car that you like. What do you like? A Hyundai Escort? And people have been telling me, oh, get the Toyota Tacoma, get the 4Runner. I like those new 4Runners. They're not as nice. I'm telling you, I looked at all of them. It's not as nice. And this Bronco is going to be a plasticky mess for most people. All right? They're not going to be able to get that good one with the brown leather, which is still a plasticky mess when you get down to the bottom of it. Rattles. You're going to see the people with the Broncos, they're going to be rattling all through the trails with plastic parts spilling out. No one's going to be able to get replacements because they're all sold out. Trust me on this. <laughs> Uh, but ultimately, I don't care. I mean, I'm the type of person, I don't care if that car blows up tomorrow. I don't give a fuck about cars. All right. All I care about is Mersh saved up his whole life for a $4,000 car, and I dropped so much more than that <laughs> in a blink of an eye. And I, by the way, this ain't leased, and it's almost paid off. His dad must have bought him this car. My dad couldn't afford that fucking car. My dad, by the way, this was so crazy. I was so afraid to tell my dad that I got this car because it's a lot of money, more money than he's ever spent on a car. And um, it turned out, I called my dad, I told him about the car, and it turned out on that same day, he bought a car that same day. Aww. I cucked him. He bought a used vehicle. But he got a Mercedes. He got a Mercedes, but it's from 2018. That's pretty good. Mm, it's cheap. So you and your daddy had a little moment. No, and I'm done with him now. No, you're not. That guy's fucking poor. Mike loves it's his nice. parents. He calls them up. He's like, Mom, Dad, I got a new car. Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. Uh, I my parents don't officially give a fuck about me. smoked my parents in the financial <laughs> department, which is nice. That's where you really, that's feels so good to make your parents finally now they have to listen to me you well, know they're under me 30 years. your parents are under me my parents are under me our whole fucking family's <laughs> under me by the way we're the biggest celebrities in this city <laughs> seriously that's what's so cool the place we live right now the town it's not really a city it's a town we're the biggest celebrities here we're the richest wealthiest people here <laughs> in our whole population really there can't be we go to the restaurant we walk in they don't even know. I've never been in this situation. Sometimes you got to put yourself in a situation. Yeah, in Chicago, I'll never be the richest there. Here, I'm the richest person here, and I've got the most fans. I'm sure that it won't last. I can't last. believe it. It won't last. This is all tanking. Believe me, my parents raised me with this thing. As soon as stuff starts going good, oh, it's yeah. all going to be taken away from you. I believe heavily in jinxing. So now every day is torture uh, because we think that we're going to lose it all. It's actually you know? way worse. It's way to worse to be more successful than to be poor and shitty. Because yeah, because the worry we could lose everything, and then what are we going to do? It's going to be such a hassle. 
the restaurant. Mike needs options. I know. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's very pretty few. Much the restaurant. There's the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we, uh, we don't, uh, we're not into cars like that. And, uh, you know, as long as you're happy with your car, like I even congratulated Luis J. Gomez, it uh, bought a new car too. Everybody's moving and buying a new car and podcasting. And Luis J. Gomez bought an Audi. I believe it's a pre-owned vehicle, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's such a, he, uh, congratulated me on my new car today. And that's what you he do. Did. By the way, if you like somebody, when they get a new car, you just say, regardless of if it's the car you would get, you just say, congratulations. That's what you say. You don't say, oh, you should have got this. You should have got that. Or that's, you don't do that. That's a subnormal does that. So yeah, do I want an Audi station wagon? No, but I said, that's sick. Congratulations. We both got new rides with purple lights. You guys should do a little race. We'd smoke them. We'd smoke them. I actually had a custom mod. We got the uh, V12 engine from the Corvette put in. Wow. Fastest Jeep on the line. Where was I? <sighs> she doesn't even know. She doesn't even know what's going on with this car. Trust me. says, I don't know anything about cars and I don't care. I like guitars. <laughs> this is why I love Mike. He is not a hater and he has a heart, somebody <laughs> says. That is true. See, people think I'm going to be like, you know, these other guys that are so hardcore like me, Nick Fuentes and the gun guy, aim, aim, aim. They're too crazy to listen to. You listen to me. I do the crazy stuff. But you know, at the end of the day, OK, this is a normal person. Um, Someone asks, has Jules driven the Jeep? Mike will not allow Never. me to drive. She it. don't have a license. She's like a grandma. <laughs> she doesn't even have a license. She doesn't know how to drive. I'm going to teach her how to drive in the desert. What are you going to hit? A uh, scorpion. By the way, our dog was killed by a hundred scorpions the other day. <laughs> I'm terrified of snakes. You know, we um we were in uh, Roswell, New Mexico. You saw that in the picture this morning. Part of our road trip. What a wacky town. You know, this is where Area 51 is. What a wacky town. Um, everybody there is insane. You go to the gas station and this guy, I'm not, I'm not kidding. This is Roswell, New Mexico, and this might be like the South. Going to Roswell, New Mexico, I pull into the gas station covid cases everyone's dying i saw a man like oh his grandfather died while he was walking with him he just laid him on the ground and kept walking guy comes in the gas station and i'm in line ready to buy a couple red bulls and a couple of waters buy a couple of red bulls a couple of girls a couple of shrooms a couple of girls a couple of shrooms what's that a couple of shrooms a couple of girls a couple of nuts this is stupid kid Cuddy kid Cuddy. Song. he ripped that off from um hippie chick Cigarette, acid, di it's just Chula howling in the other room. It's fine. What are you going to do? I'm going to go tell him to shut up. No, no, it's fine. He's not going to listen. Um, anyway, we're in the uh, Roswell, New Mexico gas station. Roswell is cool. It's got this little main street and everything is alien, as you know. Area 51, the McDonald's is a UFO. The Dunkin' Donuts is a big alien holding up the Dunkin' Donuts sign. It's pretty fun. And... Um, but the main strip is kooky and is very trafficy in Roswell. And there's a lot of people and we pull into the gas station. By the way, they only got to like 89 gas. That's how you know you're in a shit town. When you can't get 90, isn't it supposed to be up to 93? I'm trying to put premium gas in my car. It goes up to 89. 89! You know. Um, we go into the gas station. I'm waiting in line. And a guy comes in, no mask. And he goes, oh! So sorry, must have forgot my mask. And the owner of the gas station goes, oh, no, what will we do? You'll have to leave. They did this whole laugh. <laughs> and then he goes, ah, and they all laugh. And I go, this is how they're getting COVID. Like, they just think of it as a big joke. And maybe you do, too. I don't even know who I'm talking to anymore. Maybe you all think that. I don't fucking know. But that's what happened. I'm sitting there like this. I'm sitting there like this. Oh, God, it's got no mask. Um, you know, I'm terrified. You know why? And I'll tell you why. I don't want to lose my taste or my smell. How am I going to smell them coming? You know, I like how people are like, dude, COVID's no big deal. You just can lose your smell and taste forever. Uh, what? That would be like if somebody told you, you'll never be able to come again. Or you could come, you won't feel it. Imagine losing your taste forever. I live for two things. George Floyd and food. All right. Sorry, this is all delayed. It's because Apple removed the headphone jack, and now you got to do it digitally through this connector here, and it's a mess. 
We're going to fix it on the next show. If I lost my taste, I mean, that, I'd rather die than lose my taste. Sorry. And I like how people are like, yeah, just lose your taste. Who cares? I'm not willing to lose my taste. Okay. Or my taste in clothing. So, um, yeah, I can't believe it. We loved Roswell. And we'll tell you about, we stayed at the Four Seasons on our road trip, too. I call that camping. We stayed at the Four Seasons. I'll tell you that story coming up in a little bit. Uh, what we do we got next? We talk about Joey Diaz. Oh, yeah, let's do Joey Diaz because he's threatened us once again. And I want everybody to call the cops. And maybe we should report his YouTube. Can you be uh, threatening people's lives on YouTube? No, we don't report. Okay, but Joey Diaz is off his rocker. Wait till you see this video. You might have seen this from the Church of What's Happening Then. Is this it here, uh, Jules? Yes. Joey Diaz makes violent threats about Red Bar. Oh, God, he looks awful. <laughs> and this is what's going to happen. You know, uh, you take away people's right to live. Really, I, maybe I am not for the lockdowns anymore because people cannot handle being locked down. They really cannot handle the lockdowns, and they're turning murderous. The things people are saying in my wildest dreams, I couldn't say. Uh, let's see this. Joey Diaz, number 28, Uncle Joey's Joint. And this is his set. Look at this guy. This is his face. Look at this guy. All right, we're going to go to 2915. Oh, it's queued up. This video will speak for itself. Please, guys, I'm not invincible to bullets, to knives, to stabbings. Not at all. You're extremely susceptible to and them, in fact. I'm almost so loosey-goosey. I get death threats like every day. People, for some reason, I go, what do I do? For the life of me, like, I'll read our Reddit, and the way they talk about me, you'd think that I was doing something. And I go, sometimes I go, what do I actually do? <laughs> that is so awful that I need to die, that I need to be arrested. Like, really, what do I do? Um, you, you know, sometimes I even get people, like, for the longest time, I almost convince myself that I am as bad as these people say, but all I'm doing is talking crap. I, I really am not doing anything wrong here. Um, so when they say they want to kill me, I, you know, I get used to it. But then I look, uh, are other people getting death threats every day like this? in rape threats like you get all the time? Is this happening to everybody and they just don't talk about it? Or does it just happen to us? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't understand what's driving people to, to want us dead. Like, they literally just type, he needs to die, here's his address, let's go kill him. I'm pretty rapeable. Let's call the it. cops, let's do this to him. I, I just don't understand. And they're doing it to me here. Look at Joey Diaz, this is what he's going to say. And this is psycho. You know, you guys got to get our backs here. Here, Dan I go. Listen. I'm lucky I have mercy. I'm lucky. His daughter. That I have mercy because this. Okay, so he starts. I don't know how they started. I haven't watched this episode. He's going, I'm lucky I have mercy. Is this really it? 2921? I thought it started earlier. Jules, when we were listening to it yesterday. No, this is the beginning. He repeats himself, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're lucky I have mercy. And by the way, no one's afraid of you. If you come and try to kill me, well, very easy. Again. Even his trigger finger is slower than my, you know, dodge. Um, nobody is afraid of you. It would take you 20 minutes to get out of the chair, okay? And this is coming from a man in a wheelchair who's disabled here. So stop with the fear. It's insane. You make fun of somebody, they're going to tell you to kill you. Here it is. Gee, particularly, I think somebody really got hurt. I think... Since last December. Let's have a drink. Fate was, for the last year, year and a half, there's been a handful of people Listen. that indirectly or directly have been fucking with me. It doesn't bother me. You know me. I give oh, more of a rope in the world. I don't understand that. He's going to he start here. It doesn't bother me. Well, then why are you going to say, and he's going to come out, he wants to kill me. I've never killed somebody that hasn't bothered me. I mean, you would have to bother me pretty good for me to want you dead. I don't wish, you know, I've had a lot of enemies out there. I don't want them dead, except for Joe List, of course. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun. I love that. The only person I want that is Joe, Joe List. List. Because of the airplane jokes. All right, uh, that's a joke, Joe List. Oh, thank God. Hoo, hoo, hoo. I was actually getting... He is scared. I oh, think I... We should show that other clip from... Big J. Yeah. This. Oh, yes. I haven't even heard it. 
guys, we're ju- this is just the intro. We haven't even gotten a light news, folks. It's just the intro. All right, let's hear this. Because I give them rope so they can hang themselves. I give them rope because they don't know that I'm a fucking savage. Get the rope. And I told my wife about a week ago, we were sitting upstairs, and I go, can I believe, can you believe Mercy's going to be fucking eight in a week? And I said to her, you know what? A lot of people should thank Mercy. A lot of people should get up every morning and go, thank God for fucking Mercy. Thank God for mercy. This is what he's saying. He's talking about me. A lot of people, I should wake up every day and go, thank God for mercy. Joey, this is mercy. Otherwise, what? Otherwise, what? Because if I didn't have mercy right now, the last couple of years, and I didn't have, and I, and I just had my wife. My I'm wife. Some, in my 50s, especially after what I've accomplished already. Yes. What would you have done? I wouldn't mind doing a couple of years in jail. You know what I'm saying? Just Ooh. at the end. <laughs> Just to prove my fucking point, you know, like I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind dying in a fucking cell. And I know you people are crazy. You know, I don't want to die in a cell. What I'm trying to say to you people is if I didn't have mercy the last eight years, I mean, I look at mercy. I kiss her every day. Like, And 20- there's people who think this is cool. Yeah. Kill people. Live out your life in a cell. Yes. <laughs> he's really. What the fuck? This is what I mean about kooky kooky. A You're cell. cheering. Yeah, me too. I want to go to. Oh, yeah. Cell. He'll live out the last year. Yes. Jail time. <laughs> Get him. What do you say? You're fat? <laughs> yes. I take the electric chair. I don't understand why this is cool. This is rooted on. Then do it, Joey. And this is on YouTube. You can say stuff like this. Trust me. Because I'll live out my life. I'm fit. I did it. Listen, it goes on. Five fucking times. I kiss her in the morning. I tell her I love her. But I thank her. I thank her every day. My daughter knows me. My daughter knows me better than most fucking people. A lot of people, you know, this year was a bad year for Why? my friends. A lot of my friends got oh. beat up this year. A lot of, listen to this, a lot of my friends, and he talks in code, right? A lot of my friends got beat up this year. Who, Dalia? Brian Callen? Who got beat up? This is what he means, beat up, like canceled. Catherine Fiore Tigerman was I, beat I, up. I don't understand. And because, but they did the stuff. <laughs> Do you understand? They got themselves into these situations. Now you're mad at what, us? For making fun of them? So we need to die because Chris D'Elia was caught messaging underage kids and because you were uh, because you made girls blow you for stage time at the comedy store. I need to die. Do you hear yourself? Black them up. Say these threats are turning a little bit toothless. What does that mean? After a certain point, you're like, so you're yeah, not well, going to kill I, me? I, you're either going <laughs> to kill somebody I, or you're not. You, you big fat fuck. <laughs> Come and kill me then. You know, and this is the world we're living in where it's like, oh, I think he's going to kill you. Oh, okay, then come and kill me. <laughs> really? We're in a world where we're like, oh, we're right. And that's what it's moving towards. You didn't believe me last, uh, you know, uh, the last 18 years. It's going to get to this point where it's like one of these weird books that Jules reads where everybody's just like, yeah, he killed him, but, you know, <laughs> that's what the left and the right do. They kill. You can't kill. And a lot of the people that beat up my friends, if this, if I didn't have mercy, I, I would have been shooting people. I don't know if you people know this about me, that I'm not all fucking there. You're not all there, and if you didn't have mercy, you'd be shooting people for making fun of Brian Callen, Chris D'Elia, and you. You'd be shooting them. It's kind of disturbing. That's it's cool. Kind of the same. I mean, Jeffrey Dahmer at least wanted to fuck <laughs> These people and experiment with their brains. You just want to shoot them. And you know, why is this applauded? I want to shoot people dead with handguns. And he owns a gun. You're lucky I have mercy, and I don't send all this to the FBI and the police every day. Okay? I don't know if you're really you know they you can't do your shitty podcast in jail, right? You know, you can't eat uh, spaghetti every day. He thinks jail's going to be with, he's going to be like the famous guy from uh, Goodfellas where they're cutting up the garlic and making, that's not going to happen. You're not really that guy. Just because you look like one of them. 
And Joe Rogan, this is his best friend who he's on every episode is, oh, Joey Diaz is the greatest person. He is? He's going to kill people, Joe. I want Joe Rogan jailed for this, too. This is what I mean about everything going kooky. Everyone's connected to a psycho these days. You know what I mean? This is like crazier than Gavin. At least Gavin's like, no, I don't want anybody dead. Like Gavin McKenna seems nice compared to him. And I don't like people messing with my fucking friends. I do not like it at all. And a lot of my friends got messed with this year. I got messed with this year. A lot of people I cared for got messed, this, messed with this year. And it's so weird. Like, all you motherfuckers better be thankful I got mercy. Because at 58, I'm crazier than fucking ever. Trust oh, me. You're, you're crazier than ever. I'll drink that. I just wanted to drink. Cheers, everybody, to him being crazier oh than God, ever. You spilled. Yes, I did. Cheers, Jules, to a wonderful... You're doing great. By the way, I couldn't have done this without my lovely wife, Jules, oh, here. Oh, please. Yes, you could have. What do they say about Jules? I don't, I don't have that on the soundboard. anything board. about anything, and I just stand there and hold a wire. I know, but you could scream it, or you could go, Jules! Get in here! Where's the tape? You know how many times I say, where's the fill-in-the-blank to you, and you're scrambling, panicking around the house to find, like, scissors? <laughs> Cheers to Jules, everybody, okay? You Thanks. thought she was going to ruin the show. Remember that? Here you go. Ooh. Thanks, guys. Woo! Feels good. Ooh. Mikey Medicine. I can't wait to have a People drink. enjoying the show so far? Do you hate it and you want it dead? Let's listen to this. You know, but before we go on, we can't, we have to stop ourselves and remind ourselves that this can't go on. I know times are getting kooky. I know you turn on the TV, you hear crazier stuff than this. We can't just keep going into the world of crazy. So it must be stopped. You know, you can't go, oh, well, he's killing people and piranhas on TV, you know, conducting this fucking raid and everything. It's got to tone down a little bit before we need order. This is coming from me, Mike Redbar. I'm out of order. But we need some order, okay? I was saying this. That's why this uh, capital thing, people don't understand. Yes, the BLM thing was the same thing. When I watch the BLM things, I'm just as disturbed. When I see a Maltov cocktail into a CVS, and, and it has nothing to do with the CVS. It has nothing to do. It has to do with order, and it has to do with example, and it has to do with, you know, kids are watching this. What happens when a kid grows up and they watch this shit on the news? They think that that's what you do. You know, and uh, an order has a lot to do with reality, right? You got to keep things in check or it's going to get too messy, too psycho. Someone says the order is scary, too. What do you say to that? What does that mean? You should see my order at a restaurant. It's complicated. <laughs> okay. No cheese. They go, oh, would you like mayo on that? No. <laughs> mayo is cheese, spreadable cheese. I don't want any fucking gunk. On my shit. You don't put cheese and meat together. Don't you know anything? We separate our milk plates from our meat. Should I do a song today or no? I think so. People miss my music. You miss my song? Okay, let's hear what Joey Diaz says. Isn't this incredible? I am really in the epicenter of all this stuff. You got Joey Coco Diaz, the top living comedian, according to Joe Rogan of the world, saying he's going to put a gun to my head. You got Ally Alexander, one of my old friends, on the news. He's in charge of this whole uh, end of the world. Gavin McInnes, the leader of the Proud Boys. I'm tied to them all. And all of them, uh, after today especially, Piranha was the only one who didn't want me dead. They're all going to want me dead. Imagine having these three after you. And Kumia and all these people. I, it's really sick. <laughs> you know, luckily I live in the desert now. I can have a whole, you should see what I'm allowed to carry. Uh, yeah, now, which is pretty incredible. I could do whatever I want. You should see me. I look like I the alt right. Shooting people. Oh, I I'd could be... shoot a gun in the air. You know, we were watching you the news over here. I have mercy. We were watching the news here. Here's how different the desert is than other uh, states. On the news, it was New Year's Eve, and they go, and just uh, so everybody remembers, um, if you're doing fireworks, just please be careful and do not shoot your guns into the air. That will cause can cause death. <laughs> And I said, I turned to Jules, I go, have you ever watched the news and heard them talk to the viewer and tell them not to shoot their guns into the air? Maybe you're used to that if you're from the South. Where in Chicago, they don't say that. You just assume people wouldn't shoot guns into the air or even have guns. 
Here they tell you on the news, do not shoot your guns into the air because the bullet actually will fall down into... Haven't you seen the movie The Mexican with Brad Pitt? That was the whole premise of the movie. Somebody shot a gun in the air and the bullet fell down, killed his friend or something. I don't remember. Mike, that's basically all rural areas in America. You just lived in Chicago. Yes, that's what I said. Have some patience. I'm not against it. I'm part of it. I'm rural. You know, these people, they think that I'm against it. I'm not against it. I'm with everything that is cool. Guns. I love guns. I'm not anti-gun. You know, because I'm anti-stop the steal. I'm not anti-gun. I love guns. I love grenades. I love rocket launchers. Okay. Um, what else do I love? Fireworks, bombs. I'm more into guns than you are just because I haven't lived that life. I couldn't live that life in Chicago. I grew up in Chicago. I can't shoot guns outside in Chicago. It would hit someone. <laughs> now I can. And believe me, you'll see videos of me all day. I'll be cleaning guns and buying pink guns for my wife just like you. Okay. You happy with me now? Listen to this guy, though. He's got one little tiny six-shooter. He thinks, I'll catch that fucking bullet. I'll throw it back at his teeth. <laughs> this is what's happening now. This is the state of America where we're talking about what we're going to do when the bullets fly at each other. <laughs> I don't want that. Um, But this guy's got a little pea shooter. You know, it's some hand-me-down gun that he got in a cigar box from a friend. It's like an illegal pistol in New Jersey. you got some fucking gun... Good deal. Imagine him trying to load a gun quick. Oh, get y'all, get y'all. Bah, bang, bang. A big fat guy like to shoot in a That's pistol. That's actually it, fucking scary as hell. It is. A big fat guy like this with a pistol holding it close to his chest for Ooh. is scarier than like a cop with a gun. Yes. Like at least you come up, bring it on the gun. He's like, bang, 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 bang. You're like, whoa, that's fucking Freddy Krueger. <laughs> that's Jason. And you should see the dreams I'm having, too. Uh, guns don't kill people, but they are used to kill people. I don't agree with that. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to kill anybody ever. I mean, I can't believe what's happening here. Do not ever kill anyone. <laughs> That's where I draw the line. Nobody deserves to be killed. or. Uh, and we're having to explain that because the other <laughs> podcast guys are telling you they're on the yes. verge of a big kill. They're on the verge of so. killing Mike left Chicago just like Rogan left L.A. Well, I don't know if that's an insult, but very, that guy's sharp. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, Mike, sell all your guns. To who? You? That's illegal. That's a loophole. I know about that from Amy Schumer. I'm just kidding. I'm going to sell my guns to myself. You should see the gun tactical shops they got in town. I drive in town. I go, hey, to direct me to the tactical shop. Ooh, I got all the stuff. Smoke bombs. Flash grenades. <laughs> I'll throw a flash. No, I won't throw anything at anyone. You'll throw a stink bomb. I'll throw a stink bomb. A little glass stink bomb. I'll make it smell like rotten eggs in your face. But uh, these people, this guy carries a gun illegally in his back. Like, imagine putting a gun in your pants like they do in the movies. That's crazy. You're going to shoot your ass crack. All right, let's see what he says. I get thoughts that come into my mind that would rattle you. Oh, I am still a fucking derelict criminal. I oh, just, the comedy and the family and everything has taken all that stuff away from me. Do you hear what he is saying? If you cheerlead this, you're as stupid as him. I am worse than ever. Los Angeles cool guy says he can easily block your stink bomb with an osium cloud. Well, I raise you. Well, can you block? Uh, I can't even say what I'm about to do to these people. Listen, I'm not going to do anything, but I will defend my honor. All right, listen to what he says again. That would rattle you. I am still a fucking derelict criminal. I just, the comedy oh. and the family and everything has taken all that stuff away from me. But trust me, I have thoughts in my mind. Like, I forgave my wife, my ex-wife. I don't, me and my wife. You got sick thoughts. I got more of them. Huh? <laughs> I mean, can you believe what he's saying here? I got thoughts in my mind that would blow your emotion. Okay, well, should we arrest you then? <laughs> should you be checked into a mental hospital? And this is what I mean about stupid Joe Rogan. Do you even know this is happening? Are you aware? This is supposedly, you mention him every five minutes. 
to scientists. Elon Musk has to know about him and how great he is. Do you know about this part where he's got thoughts in his mind about coming and killing people with guns? Are you okay with that, Joe Rogan? Put this on YouTube. Share this with the world, folks. You have my permission. Hear that ball, Edit out Zach. anything that could get me in trouble, Valzak. Fractional reversera, the fucking tarred channels out there. <laughs> Listen, put this on YouTube because I want to see him be arrested. I, you know, I would like to see you live out your life in prison. Big fat you said slob. You wanted the cell. You want to get so. fucked up the ass by some uh, George Floydian men? I'll take a dick in the ass. I don't care. As long as someone who criticizes my looks dies. You'd get fucked in the ass by Debo from Friday in jail just because I make fun of you. That's a weakness. <laughs> and people make fun of me for uh, restricting someone on Instagram. For posting a swastika on my family's p photos. I mean, come on. This is worse. Even. Me and my ex-wife are even. I've forgiven everybody. Everybody, I'm not mad at anybody. Oh. I'm just letting you know I'm happy oh. that I have a daughter. Because I was like... So what if I took your daughter... The, I, I wouldn't. But what if your daughter somehow... See, if he loses his daughter, then it's over. Then Keep you got a madman. Keep his daughter safe. Keep his daughter safe at all costs. <laughs> Because if that daughter goes, so does his uh, patience for human beings' lives. This is scary, you know? How many of you have had to deal with a movie star, famous comedian, death threat? It is an awkward situation to be in. I already well, did everything I wanted to do. I did movies. I did the comedy store, the documentary. I'll be on the documentary. Like, they'll go, that guy was on the documentary. He's doing time for stabbing a motherfucker ten times or what? shooting somebody. I swear to fucking God. I have had, I'm thankful for mercy, you know. And when I was younger, I was out of my fucking mind. And, oh. But Zoraida could always calm me down. That's cool. So after my mother died, you know, I mean... My mother died at 3 in the morning, and Zoraida These people was... and their fucking mothers. I would not give a shit if my mother died. Let me tell you this. Him and Kanye, enough with your fucking moms. Were you guys having sex with her or something? What's going on? Everything is their mother, their daughter. We get it, Eminem. You love your daughter. You do anything in this world for her. Oh, my God. Eminem made a new song. No, about... he didn't. Did he? Remember his new well, album? Oh, yeah, 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 of course. And then he made a song about, like, social issues and then said the name of all of the black people who had been killed or whatever. Did like he? Brianna Taylor. But he didn't but say. But he didn't say George Can we hear Floyd. that verse? Maybe you could find that verse for us. Yeah. Whew. Fractional reverse. Have you heard of this guy? He messaged me today. He goes, do you mind if I post clips of you on YouTube? I said, yeah, as long as you don't post any Mersh clips. These channels, they post me and Mersh. We ain't the same, bro. Everyone has permission to post red bar clips, but you can never listen to Revenge of the Sis again. Not that I don't like Revenge of the Sis. I do. I just don't want to be categorized with them. Eminem is a George Floyd truther. Let's see. How's everybody uh, doing here today? Are people tuning out at a mass number? Let's see what happens here. Let's finish this up with uh, Joey Diaz. And then uh, I don't know what we'll do. We'll party. We got more bits coming up. We've got some fun stuff. Let's do uh, one of our fun bits after uh, Joey Diaz. It was already there. I think I called her at fucking 8. Thank you. And Zoraida got there, I don't know, maybe 9.30. Look at my hair. It's a disaster. And she used to, her operation was out of Spanish Harlem on 113. Spanish Harlem? By, the, by Spanish Harlem, by the park. That was her operation there. Can we she, talk about this hoodie here? It's got a uh, like digital map of the universe on his hoodie. You don't even know what he's fucking wearing. Imagine him. I, I don't know. Does he put up the frames? I always like to go, you know, like Melton, you know, Patrick Melton, our OG fool. You see his room. He's got like something hanging on the wall. That means there was a scene... Where Patrick Melton, that big fat guy, goes, oh, 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 oh. that looks good. No, no, no. They're decorating, folks. I can't believe it. There he goes. They're decorating. So is Joey Diaz hanging shit on his wall? Is he using 3M strips? Sure they don't hurt the fucking wall. Is he using panel nails? What's he hanging things with? That, to me, is the more interesting story. Let's see what he says. 
He had a second floor apartment over a little fucking bodega. I'm not, dog, I can live to be 80. I'll never forget being a kid and walking up those steps in the 70s and seeing all the junkies fucking <laughs> nodding in the hallways. And it was way better than going to any fucking zoo or any <laughs> movie or any fucking love bug in the world. Like, I, I knew they were on some type of drug. I just didn't know what. And, but I enjoyed seeing people like all fucking. I mean, that, that's that's why I think I. Dosed. Okay, uh, that's it. He threatened us, and I can't believe this lives on the internet. This is completely psycho guy. You know, party time is over, and uh, put this on YouTube. See if we could get it trending. I, I don't know if it can. I found the Eminem song. Uh, Eminem. Where do I go here? And the fighter and the kid is usually Joe Rogan, Eddie. You mean Bro the fight companion? Yeah. Uh, fight companion is what I meant. And it's usually <laughs> Joe Rogan. And why they call it fight companions because they are uh, watching the fight with you. They're your companions. They're not my companions. And also, um, uh, I can't see the fight. So what they do is they sit around. It's Eddie Bravo, Joe Rogan, Brian Callen, and Brendan Schaub. And it's a series called Fight Companion. They watch the MMA tournament live and they talk about it. So you're, if you're watching the fight at home, they're your fucking companion show. Well, uh, there was a big fight, but Brendan, Brian are sick. And Eddie Bravo, did you hear, killed himself. Because it turns out Eddie Bravo was Epstein. I like Eddie Bravo. He's the one I like. People are confused by that. So fight companion, instead of just not doing it, it was replaced. Guess who uh, took their spots? Brian Callen and Brennan Shop. You're not going to believe it. Joey Diaz and Tony motherfucking Hinge Cliff. We could not believe it. I mean, you know, sometimes I look at Jules and I go, hey, Jules, you know, the see the guys on the screen? Yeah, they all want me dead for real. Even Joey Diaz wants me dead, remember? Yeah. It's so funny. Moments. I mean, imagine living a life where every time you turn on TV, it's a couple of guys and they literally have a whole thing with you that they can't deal with. <laughs> you forget almost. It's very funny. You know, you turn on, I can't uh, watch any channel. Every show, every movie has one guy who at least is thinking about me even during the scene of the film. <laughs> you know, you could tell I'm on their mind. And that's horrible, you know, for Joey. All right, so... Fighter and the kid. No, not Fighter and the Kid. Let's go to uh, JRE, Fight Companion. And we got a couple of clips. Tony Hinchcliffe, of course, and Joey Diaz. Booyah, and we're live. The COVID crew cannot make it. <laughs> oh, yeah, we just saw this. Brian <laughs> Callen, Brian Callen's still coughing, not doing so good. Uh, Brandon Schaub is 100%. He even tested negative. But there's a 14-day mandatory quarantine, bitch. You got to take it. Joey, motherfucking Diaz. Oh, wow. I, wish I, could, oh, I would clip that too. Joey Diaz has never been more relaxed and free. He was so worried about that Me Too and nothing came from it. And now he feels free. He's great. Yes, I, I mean, he's never looked better. Show. Look at that smile. He looks like Shvani so happy. I don't think we ever got a chance to show his live streams that he did after. Yeah. He was worried. He Joey D to get okay. all of his explanations out there. So remember when Chris D'Elia was exposed, thousands of people were exposing Joey Diaz. But nobody cared because nobody knows who he... Listen, they only want to cancel you if they know who you are and you're invading their TV. Okay, so like Chris D'Elia's on Netflix, so it's, we can't have that. But Joey Diaz just on the church of what's happening now, his own show, who fucking cares? Just some sad old man. But Joey Diaz was so panicked about being canceled. I mean, it was unbelievable how defensive and scared he was being for a whole week. And then when that went by, and now he realizes nothing happened, he is never been healthier. He's Thin. He's jumping around like Mario. He's running around. He's doing somersaults. He did. Uh, he, he can do cartwheels now. Perfect cartwheels. I saw him do a thing where he does like a backflip off of a cool roof into a pool in Palm Springs. <laughs> and he's hot and he's dating Alexis Wren now. <laughs> he is so fucking happy. And you know what? Now I like him. I know, I've, right? That's all it takes. All it takes for me to like an enemy is if they're being themselves for a second. 
Then I go, oh, okay, I got no problem with you. But I still will kill him. I'm just kidding. Watch this. Bitch, you got to take it. Joey, motherfucking DS my is in the house. house. I'm back, baby. My me, too didn't st my me Too didn't stick. I'm having a... That's really what's going on. Oh, my Me Too didn't stick. I can't really tell anybody how happy I am, but uh, come on, I'm having a party. But no, I don't have parties because of COVID. I take that very seriously. But I'll rape someone. But COVID is... <laughs> what a nice guy. Talk about a papa. I would... I would... uh. Elect him for grandpa of me. <laughs> if they said, Mike, you got to vote for a new grandpa, I'd say, right, I'll take him. He could run my country, a.k.a. eat my box and my balls. He loves balls, boxes, cons. This guy rules, man. I owe him a deep second chance. Never an apology. A second chance. Only betas apologize. Cool guys like me give you a second chance. All right, Joey, you have 24 hours to accept or I'll fry you. Tonight. I'm very excited. This Fucking is an amazing Fire card. Island. This is an amazing card. And of course, the golden pony in the house. Yes, yeah. he is like Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Very similar. Carl was a bit meaner, I would say. Joey's a bit stupider, but uh, Carl was sharp. Carl's rich now, by the way. You ever seen Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Never. It's I a don't even stupid, know what that is. fake kids show about fries. You got to see this. Amazing Fire card. Island. This is an amazing card. And of course, the golden pony in the house. Yeah. Tony Hinchcliffe. This is, uh, we are taking precautions. Is Tony Hinchcliffe married to Nate Diaz? He's wearing another Nate Diaz shirt. Does Nate Diaz even know who he is? Like, what is Tony doing? He's like trying to suck up to MM. Look at this. Nate Diaz represent LTD. Why is he obsessed with this guy, Nate Diaz? They're not even, even of the same race. Why is there a sarcophagus right next to him? Why Are they in Egypt here? Are they in a tomb? I hate Tony, man. Tony will never be cool. And Joey Diaz is, uh, I don't know if you knew this, Tony Hinchcliffe is there because Joey Diaz uh, needs a toothpick. He uses it. Sorry, bro, I got to use you to clean out this crap from my teeth. It's too, it reminds me how I keep saying that I want to get like a big, huge, like Great Dane or yeah. Rottweiler and then a tiny Chihuahua because yeah. the two dogs the, It's a good contrast. Ridiculous. They this should make a show, are. a buddy cop show of Tony and Joey. Hey, Joey, I'm pretty much afraid of you and I suck up. The Shut the fuck up, you skin e cock boy. I mean, but this Nate Diaz clothing line thing that he's doing, what is this about? Do you know who Nate Diaz is? No. Cameron Diaz's son. Wow. He's what not even. Sicko. Yeah, and he's printing merch about him. All right, let's see, <laughs> let's see what happens. A golden pony in the house. Yeah. Tony Hinchcliffe, this is, uh, we are taking precautions for COVID. Everyone oh, gets yeah. their own joint. Mm -hmm. That's how we do it here. And uh, Buffalo Trace. Everyone kill gets their own suction cup facility. Shrink wrap thing they're yeah. saying that uh joey copied the toothpick from logan paul yeah oh yeah oh my Definitely. god plus logan and just tweeted that james charles is gonna be on impulsive oh tomorrow. my god logan paul's been on a winning streak lately i love him now he's been great he's been getting straight a's with me okay uh <laughs> let's go to uh, this is gonna get good tie up talk now, there's something weird whenever Tony's around. And I came up with this concept long before they ever joked about it. Ever since I came up with this S&M Dungeness Crab BDSM bullshit that Tony and his wife do. Dungeness Crab. Yeah, I don't know. It's actually really amazing. Really? Because he's a lobster and he oh, likes wow, sex cool. dungeon. Yeah, wow. Look at that. He's a Dungeness Crab, folks. <laughs> My theory, and this is all just made up in my mind out of pure imagination and fun, is that Tony is an s and sub, <laughs> meaning he allows people to spit on him, fire their cocks at him, he'll shrink wrap himself in front of a crowd, he likes to be degraded, humiliated. I saw a video on X videos, it was Tony and he was naked, it was shot in uh, 180p, it was square, and it was him naked and a bunch of girls laughing at him, and all the girls were British. It was sick, and they were laughing at his pee-pee while he was tied up to a chair. And this was, it said, for all audiences. It said, uh, acceptable for all audiences. My son showed me this. I was in shock. So I have this theory that he is an S&M queen. 
And uh, what we're going to hear right now, and what's so funny about my theory, is that anytime anything similar to what is brought up around him, it seems like, haha, we got you. So let's see, 2420. You know, which shouldn't even exist. If there's only 24 hours in a day, then you shouldn't go over. It should start at uh, zero again. Here we go, 2420. Let's see what these boys are talking about. It's real sick. And, um,. Probably, uh, sorry, I'm having a hard time here. 23, 10, 24, 16. Here you go. Look at this. Where God tried to trick the guy into killing his son. And then <clears throat> right before the guy kills his son, he goes, ah, I was only testing you. That's how I'd be with tying people up. What? I'm like, you want to tie me up? Go ahead, tie me up. Wait a, a second. Who? Why? The tie up. You want to tie me up? You can tie me up. Tie you up with what? Like tie up. Oh, you're tying up my time. Why would you want someone to do you want to be tied up? And then you want to eat the pussy of that woman with Hannibal? What's going on? <laughs> Imagine if a woman was holding your head down and you were eating her box, she was forcing you to. And now you want to get tied up to oh yeah, I love getting tied up. Yes, I'm so glad that Brandon Mueller said this. Okay. But he brings up something I wanted to say. Tony screams like a deer. Does anyone else wow, think that elk. Tony has... Oh. Oh, why? Okay, go Tony on. Tony has this crazy new laugh that he keeps trying yeah. out. Well, I'll tell you why. I made a video called Tony Hinchcliffe, What is His Worth? Why He's So Depressing and He Sucks. He watched that video. And now every time... Ha, 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 I'm fine. Oh, yeah? Too little too late. Some of his laughs are just Yeah, too this much is his new me. thing. It's called... Oh, yeah? He thinks I'm depressed? Well, then I'll just be really happy all the time. Well, it's fake. I can see through it. And this guy's getting tied up how? He should rip through any rope. He's so strong. Which, wh right, which was the story? Yeah, We're Tony is involved in CFNM. Have you heard of this? What's that? You know nothing about the best stuff. I'm not telling you what it is. It's just too, tell me. It's too gross. Just say it. CFNM. You ever seen this title? No. I hate to admit it, I looked into this before about a thousand times over the last ten years. By looking into it, I mean I've seen these films. It's not good. C F N M. I can't say. Just say it. <sighs> it has to do with you. This has all been a setup. No, I'm kidding. It stands for clothed female, naked male. <laughs> It's a genre. It's a humiliation Wait. thing. Go on. That's what you search? <laughs> no. I've never even heard of anything like this. Uh, let's just change subjects. <laughs> you gotta go. I'm telling Wait, you. There's little acronyms for like every oh. possible clothed oh. nude combination. It's a, it's a sickness. I'm telling you. <laughs> Jules, you gotta start looking over my shoulder. What do you think I'm doing on the phone? It's all online. Is there clothed male, naked female? No. No. That would be perverse. <laughs> this is where you tie up a guy. It's naked. Pull it up. You want to see? No. Pull I, it up. That's why I asked you so I didn't have to look you it gotta up. You got to start being a little more open, Jules. You know, I'm you're sorry. so square. I'm sorry. All <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's what Tony is into. Not only Tony. Uh, no, not me. I know everything that's going on in there. I study this. Okay, come on. <laughs> Do you know what B, C, N, G is? No. Black chick nigger girl. It's disgusting. Wow. It's a genre if you want to see a black woman just blow a kiss. Oh. All right, here you go. You got to hear this. God tried to trick the guy into killing his son. And then <clears throat> right before the guy kills his son, he goes, ah, I was only testing you. That's how I'd be with tying people up. I'm like, you want to tie me up? Go ahead, tie me up. Oh, my God. And then right when they're about to tie me up, I'd be like, you failed. <laughs> you can't fucking tie me up. Yeah. Why would you want to tie me Have up? Have you ever had somebody ask you to tie no. me up? No, no, never. Oh, but yeah? Really? Remember, Crystal Lee? We should have that as a video sounder. You ever had somebody tie you up? I had a person do it. It was a cattle farmer. The only guy that could have enough rope. <laughs> you ever have somebody... Th Imagine if Joey Diaz looked you square in the face and did that low talk tone. You know he's serious. You ever had someone tie you up? Yes. Either have I. 
tie me up. Yeah. Why would you want to tie me Have up? Have you ever had somebody ask you to tie no. you up? No, no, never. That is the craziest <coughs> thing it's in the world. It's just a weird Wait, thing what? to want to what do did he somebody. Say? That is the craziest thing in the world. <laughs> oh, yeah? You ever been to the stampede? The running of the bulls? You ever seen what they do? What do they call that where you tie up a... Like the rodeo? Yeah, what do you call it? You throw a rope around the legs of a cow and you pull him towards you and everyone laughs at his face. What do you call that? I would call it one of Kettle the elements tie. of what the rodeo. What do you call rodeo? it? Do you, I know. There's I a don't know. Term. I know. Yeah, you're probably Imagine right. Imagine Joey Diaz naked in a stadium of dirt <laughs> and there's like a guy who's doing all that cowboy shit to him and he's running. Rah, rah, rah. I'll kill every one of you in the stands. Oh no, the bulls could talk. We were wrong. We're sorry. Wouldn't that be funny? No, never. <laughs> that is the craziest thing it's just ever. a Wrangle. weird thing to want to do to somebody. Time. I don't want to do it to a girl either, and I don't want. I definitely don't want anybody doing it to me. Oh. Yep. One of my relationships oh. years ago ended because the girl wanted that so badly, and I just could not. There's like the. Oh yeah, right! I can't believe it. Is this whole world based around me? Oh, yeah, that happened to me once, but I was so against it that I uh, just stopped liking girls altogether. That's why I'm gay now. Three tied mice. Listen to these liars. See how they lie. See how they lie. They've all been tied up and fucked in the ass. They've all been tied up and fucked in the ass. Listen to this shit. I don't want to do it to a girl either, and I don't want. I definitely don't want anybody doing it to me. Yep, one of my relationships. Somebody screamed at you, Tony, in our chat. Fuck you, weirdo. That's what they think of you. You ever see this? You should watch this shit. Red bar? This is what we do. Here. <laughs> Tips but years ago ended because the girl wanted that so badly and I just could not. There's like the comedian, like a comedy part of me where it's just like, I just thought it was too silly. Just can't oh, get yeah. into it. I can't, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to. Yeah, but William wanna... H. Montgomery, that's uh, okay. I just thought it was too silly. You know? Doing so, the Kill Tony show that they've been doing in quarantine is more crazy than being tied up by a girl. Yes. It's more embarrassing. Yeah. I'm against being tied up, but have you ever done a shrink wrap? No, oh, it's a shrink. Oh, you don't know what a shrink wrap is. I can't afford it because it's too much latex, but Tony, tell him. <laughs> shrink wrap is where I uh, get wrapped in latex with a blowhole. You know, snorkel coming out. You only out. need one square yeah. of the vacuum machine to get him in there. Yeah, it doesn't need much. It's a small size. Doesn't cost much. Cost much as an inflatable mattress from Walmart. But for Joey Diaz, it's that's like an eight thousand uh, dollar sickness. All right, let's see more. Feel like I have to tie someone up. I don't feel oh, like she wanted to tie you up. Or no, you, she wanted me to, to tie her, her up. up. Oh. I just couldn't get. I, you know, bro, and, I never, yeah, but, yeah. Of course, you couldn't get into it. You want the opposite. She wanted to tell you, oh, no, I would love that. I'm tied up right now. My toes. He keeps a little, you know, butcher's tart. Do paranoid. What a great show. 808s, let's go. No thank you, Mike. No, they're saying no thank you, Mike. We don't need a song. You need a song. Trust me, you're getting one. No way out of this. Fake matches. Someone says they want to see some fire. You want to see some fire? Careful. Oh, Really? Oh, really, dude? <laughs> we have brand new red bar matches. They come in all these uh, colors here. These come free. You're going to get four packs with every order this year. These are real matches. A lot of people claiming fake. I get it. So, the whole pack gets lit. A lot of people won't dare do this in their own home. This is too scary for most people to do. They're anti-fire. I'm pro-fire. I'll burn him. I'll burn my beard. I'll throw it on my hair. Please I'll light up. I'll start spinning. In the hoodie, please. I won't. I I'm not afraid it. of fire. I came up with fire. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll do smoke shows. I'll do burns. I'll do burnouts. I'll do uh, acid trips. Doesn't matter. Did, did you get anything for me, Jules? Oh. Come on. We're waiting on her. Ooh, it smells like uh, steaks. Smells like uh, the 4th of July here. A bunch of snakes. Careful, careful, they're saying. <laughs> so these matches really rule. They're real. And uh, here's a song for everybody. And it goes like this. Here you go, guys. Thanks for listening to Red Bar. We got more coming up. What the hell is this? This is her. 
rewind that. Here you go. In the night, I hear them talk. The coldest story ever told. Somewhere far along this road, he lost his soul to a Mikey show heartless. How could you be so heartless? How could you be so heartless? How could you be so cold as the winter when it breathes, yo? Just remember you're talking to me, though. Yeah, you never watched you talking to me, though. I mean, after all the things we've been through. I mean, after all the things we got into. I don't know anything you could have told me. I yo, some of the things you better told me. And now you wanna get me back on go with me. You wanna run around and you know with me. You gotta do a friend with a homie, say, but in the end, I'm so lonely. In the night, I hear them talk. can't be right i'm serious i was looking for a million better ones but that was the only one that came up they don't have no they don't even have love lockdown and so like get your love locked down your love locked down let's get your love locked down it's crazy i know someone work on it clearly pre-recorded <laughs> mike thought he'd play the original and wouldn't notice. That's very nice of you. Okay, we've got more JRE and Alex wrongs. Where did those two guys go? Where are my motherfuckers? My motherfuckers just poofed. Let's see these guys. Let's bring them back up. They ain't off the hook this easy. What's our next code here, Jules? Um, you can go to 10250. Wow, 10250. How fucking pathetic, huh? 10250. Let's see if I could get there. This is a tough, tough timeline for me. 10220, 10224. That's oh, 104. Yeah, I know it's tough. 10232. That's as close as I could get. Tell me he's like Joe Rogan. You don't need to see what happens. Oh. You should get the fuck out of here. Joey Diaz. Grab your family. You got a beautiful family. Get the fuck out of here. So if I know anything at all, it's that he's imitating Joey Diaz. My main addictin. Joe Rogan, you better get... This is how a lame imitates Joey Diaz. Joe Rogan, you know, Joe Rogan, let me tell you something. Oh, you better get that fuck out of there. No. This is the real Joey Diaz. Let me tell you about my daughter. My daughter pussy is so tight. I kidnapped my own daughter. My daughter pussy is so tight. I put her in the back of my car. I take a gun. I put her in my daughter pussy. I went pop, 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 pop. I fucked my daughter with a, with a gun. That's what I do. Now that's the real Joey D. Should we hear what they're going to say? What are they going to say here? Is this more Joey Diaz stuff coming up? Is this the part that yeah. I've been... 
You want to hear an impression of Joey Diaz like you've never heard before? The Italian mobster, right? Yo, Rogan, I put a gun on my daughter, pussy. I'm sorry. I had to flee LA because the cops knew what I've done. I stuck the barrel of a snub nose 22 up my daughter's fairy area. Yup. <laughs> The limitless land of no limits. The hole of no return. Oh yup. Chick, chick, boom, I say. Bullet goes up like penis. Bullet goes in like sperm. <laughs> the daughter baby hole. That's a Joey Diaz impression, people. Can remember, let's hear a new one. Joey Diaz. And he was saying this when everything was great. And I was like, well, you know, I've been looking at property in different places. He's like, get, get, get your fucking shit. Get out of here. And he was telling me from the uh, beginning, he's like, these people are mutts. Why didn't he move to Let's Texas to instead of uh, New Jersey? Well, he loves New Jersey. You know, What's nostalgia? Joey's, he's, he's, you know, he's. I used to go in the porno parlors with the hookers. He knows a lot. Wait, wait, wait. What? I used to go in the porno parlors with the hookers. <laughs> Alex. Did so you adorable. just attempt a Joey Diaz impression? <laughs> Look at his face, by the way. I used to go into the porno parlors with the hookers. No, no, no. It's it's way worse. That's the wildest thing he can think of. I too, used to go into so the cute. porno parlors with the hookers. <laughs> Let's see if we can get. Listen to this again. He's, he's, he's you know, he I used to go in the porno parlors with the hookers. <laughs> <laughs> Even Joe, like, stopped in his track. Look at Joe stopping in his tracks. What's the nostalgia? He's, 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 you know, he's... I used to go in the porno pile. Wait, wait, wait. There's, like, this one inch of Joe. Pilots with the hookers. Let's see if we can get that again. You know, What's the nostalgia? He's, 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 you know, he's... I used to go in the porno Wow, look at Joe. I don't know if that's him. I think Mike maybe had a better one with the... The nose of the gun up the uh, daughter. The pussy. Uh, but okay, I'll hear this one out. Apollos with the hookers. He knows a lot of people. He old. has like very close <laughs> friends down there, and it's nostalgic Ignored. for him because, and he gets accepted there. Like they love him there. That's his Texas. Like <laughs> Joey Diaz, like gets so much love in New Jersey. So he's just going back to his roots. Yes, that's where he's from. And I, I basically moved back to East Texas. And there's Carl great, Ranch. there's great comedy around there too. You know, there's like a lot of really funny comics there, like Rich Voss and Bonnie McFarland. Who and anyone else? Who else in New Jersey is really funny, Joe? They're fucking hilarious. Would you ever go back to Boston? There. To live? I'm just a Couple gone. months a year, bro. <laughs> Once that winter rolls around. The beautiful thing is with Boston, the, the summers are so short and so fucking. Oh, that's really cool, man. Maybe I'll go to Boston and live out a short summer. Can Go you, fuck yourself! Can you do an impression of Joey Diaz doing a Stewie impression? <laughs> Yo, uh, Diaz. Lois. <laughs> you gotta understand here. I'm not doing what I'm doing because of Peter. Brian? <laughs> hum, hum, hum. That's me eating my daughter's own pussy. Where's Sorry. Where's my fucking money, Brian? Where's my fucking... Joey Diaz had a daughter just so he could eat her ass. Probably. Not allegedly. Probably. Can you say that, Your Honor? Probably he did. <laughs> Your Honor, I think he's the type of guy to have a daughter because he's horny. Probably. We gotta throw that out. It's a misdemeanor. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a drink with me, Your Honor. Certainly, Mike. Have my robe. You're the best. You're the best mini judge I've ever met. Cheers to Mike and to all the court and to all the court a good night. Thank you. Mm. Whoa. Now this means business. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm a good mafia guy, right? Maybe I'm scared. Mafia. Shut up! Who's scarier, me or a common mafia? You, for Thank sure. Thank you. I'm unpredictable. I'm shaking. I'm unpredictable. Bang! 
Mike is the dude doing the impression of a dude doing the impression of another dude. Thank you. Savage AF, bro. I'd like to eat the pussy of some one of my impressions. All right, what do we got here, you pussy muncher? Um, Here, I'm trying to pick the good ones here. Cheers to Mike, people are saying. Mike, you are the best. Mike is a king. Thank you. The Gargini brothers are dead meat, of course, because I'm coming for them. Uh, you could go to one twenty three zero zero. What if the Gargini brothers do really put a bullet in my head and they've been waiting this whole time going, keep talking, bro, keep talking, <laughs> keep talking, bro, keep talking, <laughs> keep talking, bro. This is the Garginis. They're not like that crazy, but they're from Philly and they're like, Dude, keep talking, dude. Keep running your mouth, bro. We're the Gargini. I like. I thought the Gargini brothers were like cooler than this. <laughs> They're more like Dave Portney's sidekicks. <laughs> dude, keep talking. We'll see how it ends. Oh, dude, the Garginis. You guys are a little like <laughs> emotional. All right, what time are we going to here? Uh, you can go to one twenty three oh oh. One twenty three oh oh. This is just... Joey Diaz's daughter's pussy circumference. Oh, my God. <laughs> Joey Diaz, you know what this is? <laughs> oh, my God. If somebody threw this up to me, this is like the biggest side of disrespect. Hey, guys, throw your Diaz daughters up. <laughs> it's the gape, you see. Can somebody... Do we have a measurement tool? Joey, you know what this is? I can see you. I can see you, Joey. You know what that is? Sorry, I'm not going to say, Joey. It's disrespectful. <laughs> I don't disrespect another man's little daughter. What time are we at? One twenty-three oh oh. Oh, this Joey Diaz, I'm telling you, so easy to beat. If somebody s spoke this way about me, believe me, they'd get a big email. <laughs> One twenty-three oh oh, And we're going to learn more about this ho Rogan. Gapey, gapey. Somebody said savage. Yo, throw your gapes in the air. Show Joey that we just don't care. <laughs> throw them up, Rose. They're making my daughters, Your Honor. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do an ass circumference thing, Joey. <laughs> That's the judge talking to Joey. Joey, I'm sorry. I, I have no jurisdiction here with your daughter's holes. Let's talk about Joe Ho. Mike's dirty today, they're saying. Ella Mayo, time to comment on all Joey's videos. Your daughter's pussy, dot, dot, dot. No, 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 no don't no, do that. No, don't. We got to keep it cool, guys. Let's uh, grow up. Let's keep the daughter stuff between us. Does the gape produce echo? Hello, hello, hello. Joey, Joey, Joey. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Mike, Mike, Mike. Yes, Joey! 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 <laughs> Mike, are you talking through my daughter's eyes? Eyes! Eyes! Yes, I am! How did you know? No! No! Well, it sounds like her tunneling! 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 Oh, you can hear! Well, that's all right! Deal! We're friends! Well, that's me friends. talking through his daughter's ass out her mouth to him and he's talking to me back through her mouth through her body to me <laughs> which is not something he gets mad about <laughs> let's hear more and instead amplify the signal <laughs> of people that don't think that way Amplify the signal. I agree. Of, You're right. Of people that are I like, feel like I, I focus. I said this. I, feel, I focus too much on the enemy instead of what I believe. But you've been through the ringer. That's part part of the thing that happens. Like trauma doesn't just happen to people that are two years old. It happens to people that are 44 years old too. Give me another taste. 47. Oh <laughs> shit. Whatever the fuck that is, it's good for you. I'm 47. Let's see what happens it's very here. Good. It's very good. It's very strong. Uh, but you know, it's the only way we're gonna get out of this. Is Still if playing. we look for the good look in people this. instead of looking for the bad in so people. You're saying we almost project but, but that's our what good. I'm saying, Alex Jones. Ah! Whoa. There's bad. Ah! Whoa. Why? There's bad in everybody. 
We can find bad in everybody. You know, these two are not friends. Can we give it a rest? Alex, you don't like Joe. Joe, you despise Jones. This is a forced fake relationship where they're both... Like, Joe knows if he ain't cool with Alex Jones, then he's got no street cred, right? Because everybody all of a sudden thinks Alex Jones is amazing. I mean, how annoying must that be to Joe? Where you're like, Alex Jones is a fucking idiot. Like, Joe's sitting there going, Alex Jones is a fucking idiot. And every one of my fans thinks he's the utmost, most important fucking thing in the world. God forbid his show was deleted. This fucking idiot. So I got to play along. And Alex Jones is sitting there going... God, I don't like Joe Rogan, but he's very popular, and I do need those numbers. Or my bandwidth chargers are fucking done. I got a lot of bills. So this is two men pretending that they want each other, that they need each other, that they like each other, mm -hmm. both so that they could get what they desperately is being, you know, taken from them. Alex Jones needs the the people. He needs the support or he's through. Joe Rogan needs the street cred or he's through. And that's what you got here today. Two men who fucking cannot stand each other. No one will tell the truth here but me. You know, and it's a shame because both of them have value in their own. Just kidding. So let's see what they do next. These fucking faggots. But when you look for good in people, you can find good in most people. And if you find good in most people and you encourage that good and you talk to them about that good, it helps. Oh, Joe Rogan's on a good, good tip here today. Everything is about, again, kumbaya. Let's all share a kayak, huh? Go down the Ohio River together. Bull. Alex Jones knows it's bull. Joe Rogan's a mean guy. This is what people don't understand about him. He's a dick. He is a bully. Crowder was right. He does bully people. He's an asshole. It's not kumbaya. Everybody gets a second chance. We're all part of the simulation. We're all one robot. Why don't we get together now? Because we're going to have to in the future. He can't even get together with a vegan he guy. He says this, and it's almost like a dismissal of every topic on hand. Joe yes. Rogan's way to dismiss every topic is, oh! Everything's so stupid. We're all just, uh, you know, this blob of microcosmic. Okay, well, that's exciting to no one. Because that gets us nowhere. We might as well kill ourselves if we're all just nothing, right? The topic at hand is, do you believe in abortion? <laughs> Tell us now. All of us I realize remember. we're all capable of good and bad. I agree. All of us. I shouldn't project my hatred of the globalists on everybody. You're right. I remember being like 12 years old. I want to be a globalist. How do I get in? Well, let's talk about that moment. Well, that's a very dangerous thing to say live. <laughs> you don't want to be a globalist. Do you know what? I don't even. You're on? I don't even know what that is. I'll admit it. I am a, I'm not afraid to admit when I don't know what something is. I do not know what the term globalist means. What it, what could it possibly mean? Is it terrible? Do you know what it means? I mean, you don't I'm know shit. You don't know shit. Does it mean the wrong. Jewish people are out there? To me, any ist is terrible. <laughs> Racist. Piece of shit. You racist piece of shit. I don't know. What's a globalist? I, I'm telling you, if somebody said, you know, Mike David, fuck him. He's just a globalist. I'd say, I don't want to be it. I don't want to be it. So you tell me, what is it? Look it up, Jules. Let's find out. Because nobody knows. Nobody who listens to this a lot or else. are saying is. globalist is code for Jew. Well, what does it really mean? Open borders? That would be awful. So why would Joe want to have open borders? That's crazy. Globalist equals the Clintons.
Yeah. Sorry, so Mike, but you just might be a globalist. <laughs> no. It's the people who want to run the world at a global level. I can't I even get say. along Someone with says. somebody else that's white. You think I'm a globalist? I see an Indian person, I want to vomit. That's a huge part of the globe. I see George Floyd, I want justice for George. That ain't global. That's anti-cop. I see a Chinese person, I want to squeeze them out like a vaccine. That ain't global. I am anti-globalist. It, to me, the word globalist means you like people all around the globe. You think they're great. <laughs> Not me. I like two people. Me and her. That's it. Aww. Let's see what these idiots say next. I remember being like 12 years old at a grocery store, and like my dad wasn't that cool of a guy. But like um, women you are can hitting go on to 145. Oh, oh, wow, 135. Wow. 145. Let's see what these, these two guys say next. Very funny stuff. Rogan Jones. To cancel out all of those compliments, should we quickly watch the video of what Sam Tripoli said about us? Yeah, let's watch that. You guys we aren't going to be too many compliments in a row. Yeah, it's well, sick. this is what I mean. It's like all the best guys compliment me whether I talk about them or not, right? All the best, even like Big Jay Oakers, and you're like, dude, that guy's pretty funny. Oh, so he's the best guy now? Well, I'm saying like <laughs> if you're talking about if you want a real meter on who is worth a shit and who really should be ejected from this game as a scam and a con. When you see people like Gino and Sam Tripoli say- I don't say think what, they're worth anything on anyone's meter. Well, they are. I'm telling you, people follow them. And um, when you see what they say about me, you go, they're hiding something, man. They're hiding something. They're trying to discredit me because of what I said about them. I always used to say this on the show, even though it's impossible not to. I said, this ain't about me, bro. Me calling you out for whatever I call you out for ain't about me. They always come back. You should always be weary of the people who attack right back and try to discredit the other guy instead of like either defending or ignoring the allegation. You know, that just shows, oh, so you can't really defend my uh, allegations I made against you. You're going to go and try to discredit the guy. Yikes, man. So I hold the remote control to who you hate, which is me, you know? <laughs> uh, even guys you see that go after me that hate me, unless I hate them, I don't go after them. You know, I'll even, uh, people go, Mike, why don't you owe oh, size on Z's? I'm talking about you. you go, hey, listen, man, you know, size on Z's, a pretty good guy. You know, this is a guy who wants me dead. He wants my stream down. It's hard to be uh, mad at him for too long. But it is. It's like uh, they they ask me every week, oh, go after size on go after size on go after. It doesn't, I'm not, there's nothing in my blood that's boiling about him. The only thing that would be is that he talked shit about me. And the only reason I would be mad at something like that is if I was some kind of gay ass nigga. You understand? <laughs> you shouldn't be mad at people just simply because they talked shit about you. Okay. You know, who cares? They talk shit about you. So be weary of the people who get really mad at me for talking shit about them. Let's play you this clip here. It's Sam Tripoli. This is a free speech guy, man. And he's kind of uh, falling right into my opinions of him. Just um, I said, you know, Sam Tripoli's kids, their special needs kids are disgusting to me. They're disgusting. And a person like him... And a wife like his, they really deserve those two numbskull kids that they made. Because you got two people that, I'm not kidding. When I say it's like Sam Tripoli to me is like under Gino in terms of, I don't feel like he should be on the loose. I feel like actually it would be better for society if he was behind bars almost. I feel that deeply about him. I feel like he is true. Talk about distorting reality and bad for people and a taking away from society instead of adding to it. You know what I mean? He's a weed. And uh, he internally disgusts me. And um, he's so stupid.
stupid <laughs> and so confident about his stupidity. And he's got these two fucking kids that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemies. You got one eye over here, another. I mean, they literally look like a cartoon hey, of a. He posted them. We didn't yeah. dig into hey, his listen. secret files to find. You don't have any. Picks. Uh, hey, they if were I had pushed down our throat, his kids look like if you had smacked the back of a gumball machine's head, <laughs> and they went. It was a cartoon gumball machine kid. I fucking hate them. Sorry. And this motherfucker is now on this kick. Dude, you don't ever talk about my kids. So he's pulling the old Eminem. I love it. Mike, what's the old Eminem? Dude, if ever anyone ever talks shit about my daughter, oh, my daughter is my life. Oh, my daughter. I mean, how long have we heard gangsters pretend that the only thing they care about in this room is the daughter? The sh Shut the fuck up. Because if that was true, you wouldn't be a gangster. You wouldn't be against the law. Um, I get it. You had a kid and you're an emotionally unstable fag. So, no. Oh, and then you've seen it in movies and heard it. And so, my daughter. Oh, if anyone ever tell me about my daughter, my daughter. Shut the fuck up, free speech champion. You know, maybe the way you're being offended about how I talk about your bobbly faced kids is the way other people are offended by the way you talk about them. You don't want to be banned from Twitter for saying any of the offensive things. You don't want to, uh, there shouldn't be any censorship, right? But when it comes to your key, that's what you don't do. Oh, so you have a line. Well, maybe the people who don't like racist jokes have a line. Maybe the people who don't like Chris D'Elia rape culture stuff have a line. You don't care about their line. But when it comes to my kids, my kids. Are you playing your kids' audio from Red Bar? That's bad. Your kids aren't going to hear this. Your kids' friends aren't going to hear this. This is actually not hurting your kids at all. It's exposing you for not being who you says you are. Samantha. And here is a... Uh... Sam Tripoli, this is a clip. You know, we're noteworthy now. We're clipped. I don't even know who this clipper is. Sam Tripoli accuses Red Bar of being a pedophile. Oh, hell no. Wait till you see. I hope I'm not a pedophile. Wait till you see. I'll gobble up those fucking kids of yours. I'll <laughs> suck their fucking nuts. <laughs> you better hope I'm not a pedophile. Where he's just not trying to be a twat. Listen to this. Here we go. Stop, watch, now. One minute to write what you heard and who told it to you. Free speech warrior, watch this. Oh, it's Red Bar. Oh, the guy getting busted for pedophilia right now? What? Oh, shit. Ooh, wait. I, I, Red Bar and I will have a conversation. Oh, will we do? Oh, really, dude? <laughs> Why don't you say it to my face? Oh, it's Red Bar, the guy being currently busted for pedophilia now. How many wrong... Assumptions does Q get to make before <laughs> they're considered not trustworthy? I mean, really, if I just had a podcast where I was randomly making assumptions that never came true, wouldn't people stop saying Mike's right? Probably. Sam Tripoli is like the leader of QAnon 2, and every pre it's me and Tom Hanks are pedophiles. <laughs> Mike David's currently going down. It's kind of cool to be one of the pedophiles, the iconic pedophiles of America. Well, this is what I mean. It's, you're really putting yourself out there. I mean, even I wouldn't be this flippant to say, guys, guess what? Sam Tripoli is going down as a pedophile. <laughs> and I just served that to you up as if it was a real bit. And then the next week you come back, you go, Mike, what's going on here? He's not being arrested. And I haven't heard anyone else talk about it, frankly. Wouldn't you start being mad at me for just lying to you? Not that he's lying. Let's, you know, everybody deserves their share in court. Um, <laughs> you could be, uh, maybe I am a pedophile. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> you know? I made the kids sign NDAs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I made that. You should see the little tiny handprints on these NDAs. <laughs> It's like the two baby yeah. footprints. Yeah. 
Well, I just steal them from their nurse's office. I cut the feet out and I tape them on. I go, that's an NDA, Your Honor. The kid solemnly swore to shut the fuck up when I suck his cock. So I'm now a, uh, I don't know if you ever heard this, but uh, sometimes Q, they don't like pedophiles, this Q. I've heard that. So, yes. uh, well, they're not going to like me. You know what they used to call me in school? What? Kids, uh, kidzilla. <laughs> Ask follow up question, Why, please. Uh, did they call you kids? Because Mike? I was 18 and I fucked a bunch, a uh, ton of kids, and there oh. no one's gonna stop me. Pretty good nickname for Who's you. Who's gonna fucking stop me? <laughs> Why don't your kids come over here and I'll do this whole thing where I wait till you see what I do. <laughs> Does that hold up in court? Oh man. Why don't you bring your kids over here and we'll see what I. I'll be like, Your Honor, I was saying, like, I'll take the kids. I have this great, like, basketball hoop, and we'll dribble a few balls. I'll teach the kids some <laughs> ropes. Oh, why don't you bring your kids over to my house, the pedophile? When you come say what you're going to say to me to my can face. face-to-face yeah, talk. When we do the face-to-face -face talk, can you bring your kids? You know, so that there could be face-to-waste with the D. The Michael. I want your kids face to waist with me. You will do face to face. Your kids will be face to waist. And your wife will be left to waist. Dude, no one told Don't about censor our comedy, to Sam. Don't censor Don't, my comedy, you, you censorship, censorship comedy, warrior. It's on, buddy. If you censor my comedy, I'm going to censor your kid's lips with one of my NDAs. <laughs> Listen to this. Where he's just not trying to be a twat. Here we go. Stopwatch now. One minute to write what you heard and who told it to you. Listen to this. There we go. Oh, it's Red Bar. Oh, the guy getting busted for pedophilia right now? How do you keep your job as QAnon leader? While making these claims, they didn't happen. Where's the busting? Where's the paper spinning at the camera? <laughs> Mike David finally locked up for the pedophilia. Man, why don't they do that newspaper spinning yeah, at the camera? Yeah, we should get that, that transaction. <laughs> I getting busted for pedophilia right now? Oh, my legs are asleep. <sighs> I think uh, fucking I, legs. Red Bar and I will have a conversation Let's... face to face, and he needs to know that. I'm not like these other motherfuckers. Why don't you come say that to my face? <laughs> <laughs> That's how we were about. He's like, oh, yeah, why well, don't you come say that to my face? Yeah, say it to my fucking face then. <laughs> you other motherfucker. Come say it to my face. I'll give you my address in Chicago. Talking about my <laughs> fucking kids. Listen, here it comes. Here it comes. Face to face. And he needs to know that. I'm Listen. not like these other motherfuckers. Talking about my fucking kids. You heard what I said about them kids? Do we have a song I could sing about your kids? Pull up uh, Eric Clapton's, um, what's that song about uh, tears in heaven? Tears and I, I got a song for you, buddy. You like performances or do you hate the karaoke? <laughs> what type of Red Bar listener are you? Uh, this is a song that I'm going to freestyle about your kids. And then you're going to come and say it to my face. You better say it to my face, you <laughs> other motherfucker. Battery low. I'll do it with the regular mic. Jules, hit all the effects. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Wait, can we get a better picture of Sam Tripoli up on the screen? Um, so he could be behind me. Sam Tripoli kids. Let's see what comes up. I mean, this is public. Oh, even I won't pull this up. I, know, I was just going to say. I mean, I have to. <laughs> Hey, I'm a comedy god, right? Sam, so, don't censor us. Don't censor don't me. Don't censor us. Sorry, Sam. This is just pure comedy. And a one and a two. Oh, wait. No jokes are too far. No jokes are too far, bro. Uh-oh. Hold on a sec. This is dedicated to Sam's family. <laughs> the light and all this, the fog machine and stuff. Would you know my name if I saw your kid? 
kids in heaven Would it be the same If Mike saw your kids in heaven Oh, yes I don't think they're strong They look like shit Don't belong here on earth. You hear that, Sam? I've got more. Did the doctor know that your two kids are brain dead? Did he even show you the reports from the ultrasound? I mean, come on. He must be dumb. Yeah, your doctor's dumb because I know. Oh, I just know these kids don't belong on earth. Thank you, everybody. Free speech at its finest. Hold on. Streams can bring you down. Red bar can make you frown. Kids are weird. They probably can't even grow beards because they're off and they're fatalic from the alcoholic syndrome of your big fat wife. Your whole family is off and retarded and shit. But I think society should even be Would you even know If I chopped their heads off and used them as ski balls Right to your wife's cunt Would you even care? Would you even know? Would you be with Brian Kelly, Allie, Allie, Allen? Would you be doing one of your podcasts Or your live stream to your Instagram fans? I know you won't care your kids cuz I'm the pedophile from Chicago goodbye thank you your kids are fucking through their lives are unfair <laughs> don't censor our comedy Sam stop censoring <laughs> Before Sam Can calls you turn all the lights up? Oh yeah, I always forget. Before Sam calls us out for this, I hope that he gives us due process. I think, yeah, I should have due process in a court of your kid's paints, bitch. <laughs> now say that to the my fucking face! <laughs> no one messes with Red Bar. Next. Nice try. Shut the fuck up. Let's go back to his little story about me that's never going to come true. Who the fuck is Red Bond? <laughs> you're done. Oh, wait. Here's the motherfucker. Oh, wait, you have to turn off your pedal. Oh, yeah, yeah.
talking about my fucking kids. Here I go. Talking about my kids. Don't talk about my kids. Don't worry about it, homeboy. Don't worry about it. Ooh. For what? For what? You psycho. You complete psychotic person. Do you have an opinion on Owen Benjamin? I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm pretty impressed with what Owen Benjamin's done. I wish him luck. Oh, and yeah, you're oh, at yeah. odds with Owen Benjamin. My new friend, Owen. <laughs> Me and Owen don't like the looks of you and your family. You're ruining America. I mean, really, me and Owen, we have real families, real human beings. We make America look good. You make America look like a fucking sweat park. You make America look like the rejects line at Six Flags Great America. Sorry, that's you can't just get in with a Coke can. You need twenty dollars too. <laughs> you are you and your wife and your two little kids are nobody wants that around. You're anti decor. You make every situation look worse. You when are you walk, not tiki. You're not tiki. You're ugly. You're poor. You're low rent. You're uneducated. You're the problem. And this guy's going to sit around and talk about black people. I'd rather have this whole place a bunch of mumbo jumbo monkeys jumping around, swinging from vine to vine in my house than to have families like this aggravating my parks. So disgusting, people like him. Disgusting. And you're not getting anything listening out of Tune out. Anything he says, I can say better. I want you to stop listening. 632 people are watching his Instagram live feed. The guy's got nothing to say. His wife looks, I mean, I'm not kidding you. It looks like you went to Walmart and you go, do you have any employees that had to take a break because they were raped on the job? You go, yeah, you met Veranda. You walk to the break room, there's a woman in sweatpants covered in punches. That's what your wife looks like. It couldn't be worse. And the rest of America don't want to look at that. We don't want to look at it. You're shit people. You ruin our zoos. You ruin our time out in cities. We walk around. We tolerate the looks of you low-life cunts. I mean, it really is disgusting. You and your whole fucking stupid family. Doesn't it make you so mad when a guy like this tries it with you? It, yeah, it's because it's like, it are seems you like we're out getting of your fucking so mind? Mad, like when we got really mad about size on Z that one time is because sometimes you're just like, can you believe? The well, you nerve can't imagine of this the nerve. Guy? You can't imagine the nerve of someone like you and your fucking. I can't stop bringing up your wife because. She is such a lousy pig. I saw her on that live stream once. Such a lousy pig that the fact that you would even converse with her in some point of history to the point where you forget having sex, yeah, having the kids. he is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're utter scum. And if it weren't for this stupid comedy scene who don't know, you know, the likes of a, a rat from a giraffe, you wouldn't even exist. You're very lucky how stupid the comedy scene is that they uh, let anyone in who just hangs around at the bar long enough. You're disgusting inside and out. And here's what I wish and hope for you and Brian Callen and your wife and the kids. Your full life in prison behind bars. And you know what? My wish is you don't want to mess with those. <laughs> And I'll even drink to this one. Lord willing and the creek don't rise, my Lord and Savior, the creek master, please send him and the wife to jail. You can put his kids in an orphanage where they could eventually put them to sleep they for being. They can be adopted by someone No, else. yeah, They'll who can be wife. adopted by a blind couple, maybe? Because they ugly. They can Cheers. And believe me, I got at least 500 people wishing along with me, which is just enough. Thank you so much. Cheers. You got to hear the rest of this. You know. Here you go. And he's on his own journey. And I have nothing to do with it. And he's just going to do his own thing. Me and Owen are coming yeah, for you, bro. I would fight. I will fight. Listen. I will fight Red Bar for charity. Okay. 
and the charity will go to stopping pedophiles. So I actually have a little announcement here today. And listen, we are enemies. I showed you that Jake Paul thing for a reason. I got an actual announcement here. On November 25th, a couple blocks down from the Staples Center, Sam Tripoli and I are going to have the boxing match. It's Tickets are up now with the zone. Just kidding. This is what he's saying. He's going to have a celebrity boxing match with me for pedophiles stuff. Fuck. So you're that anti. I anti-ped- hope it's not donating to take down pedophiles. I hope it's donating to taking pedophiles down pe- pedophiles. So we is, can get some of the money. I'm going to convince the world that taking down a pedophile is cancel culture at its finest. <laughs> you're not going to let this man have his free speech. What speech is more freer than the kiss <laughs> or the fuck? I mean, shouldn't a free fuck be better than a free speech? You're not going to let me free fuck. You're against free fuck. I'm pro free fuck. <laughs> I want your kid. And I don't even know how to do anything that crazy, but I imagine a world where I learn to juggle so well that they're going that high up and they're spinning it around and they're landing perfectly. Do you understand? Hey, maybe you could get one of the uh, Mike lookalikes to do the fight. Yes, I could schedule a lookalike for the fight. Because remember, we already need the lookalikes for interviews. For the charity against pedophilia. They better be the most raised money charity in existence right now. (laughs) Otherwise, you're pro-pedo. Okay, and the charity will go to stopping pedophiles. Okay, he'll fight me anytime, anyplace. It will stop going from guys grooming Canadian chicks who are 12-year-olds. Okay. And Red Bar is has threatened to sue me a couple times. Really? Whoa. And I look forward to it. Oh. I can't wait to get that motherfucker in discovery. Ooh, you just Josh Dennyed <laughs> yourself. We got guys like this, and I'm starting to pick out guys like this. When he said this, I go, discovery. So you know about the You're law. Like a legal like, guy. We wait. better watch it. You know more about the law than me. Like, I've never seen a TV Did show. Pass the bar. Dude, like, you're no stranger to the courtroom. Maybe I should back off about the good stuff. Fabra, <laughs> bruh. <laughs> Not the happening, bruh. So if I'm the pedophile affected child, yeah. do I get the money out of the boxing match? Yes, we're going to go to your family. I'm 12. I'm well, your 12. family should be arrested too for allowing this action. Yeah. Exactly. And um, so, wait, what did he just say about me? Um, that he's going to fight you, that you groomed a 12-year-old Canadian teen, that you sued him, tried to sue oh, him I tried before to sue or him. something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, and I'm no stranger to discovery, he said. This is like what Josh Denny does. They've, like, thought about suing somebody over cancel. It's like their biggest fantasy is to, like, be in court <laughs> and, like, win for being discriminated against. That's for the thing I think that reveals the most that yeah. people have never been in a lawsuit is how excited they get. I about know. The like prospect. if you've ever been in a lawsuit, it's you're like, like oh, fucking oh, hell. No. Like nobody would want to be in a lawsuit. Even if you could win and had enough money, you're like, why would I want? Just it would be like if somebody alone. said, well, would you like to read, go to school again while you're an adult? K it's, through 12. Nobody would do that. Even if you hated someone so much, you'd have to have such an ego and so crazy to want to destroy somebody to win in a lot. I mean, it the process, it would be like, would you ever elect to go to the DMV every day for uh, two years? Why would you want to do that? There's nothing a guy could do to me where I would. Even if you, you had the this. most solid case yeah. in history. What would like, be the point? I mean, going to court once is worse than being called anything. It's like going through a divorce. Yeah, it's like terrible. So you always know somebody has never actually done it. And these free speech are good. They like to present. They're like about the legal system all of a sudden. Talk about reporting people. The legal system. <laughs> I thought you were a free speecher. You want to go to court? You want to do discovery? How about I take your kids to the discovery zone and we see what happens in dem tubes? Okay? I'm going 
Act easy at Discovery Zone. You and your wife can please stay at home because your kids are here at Discovery Zone and I'm their chaperone. What do you think? How about I chaperone your kids at a birthday party only chaperoned by me? Would you allow it? If I really was a pedophile, shouldn't you be working day in and day out to take me down? Yeah, I thought that that was your big. I know. Cause. Like, if you know that I'm a pedophile, why are you just like sitting back and only saying this to an Instagram stream? Shouldn't you be? Seems like you're kind of pro pedophile. Yeah. If you're letting this go on. I mean, Eminem said it best. He goes, you're such a gangster. What does Eminem say? He goes, you're such a gangster. Well, then uh, why don't you kill a mother? Kill me right now. <laughs> yeah, kill a motherfucker dead. Shoot him dead, bitch. What does he say? It's such a great line. He goes, you're such a gangster. Then put the mic down. Oh, he goes, such a gangster. Then put the mic down. You should be out killing motherfuckers right now. Kill a motherfucker. Kill a motherfucker dead. Shoot him in his head, bitch. Go ahead. Rape my mom. Slap the fuck out of me. She can't sue you. She wouldn't get a buck out of you. What song is that from? It sounds like a positive song. Is that a positive (laughs) song? Nice song. (laughs) Hi, I'm Eminem. Would you like to hear some of my lyrics? Yeah! Do it all. Do it all. Sue me. What a nice song. You think Frank Sinatra ever said, Hey, you got any lyrics about how I'm going to sue and kill everyone? Let's sue some woman tonight. Let's fuck her up and hurt her. (laughs) Where it counts. Music didn't used to be so violent. I like it better. Yeah, what is that song? Eminem was good for about a six-year period. You know, it, it, would people think, oh, he likes Eminem, he must like Monster. I created a monster, he lives on my street. I created a monster, I wanted the cover of Newsweek. No. Didn't even know that was happening, to tell you the truth. Then what the, the fuck you stop for, dummy? That's, you got it. What's that song? Nail in the Coffin. Put that on Nail in the Coffin by Eminem. You're gonna love this song. And that's how it is. I am... You do, I'm sorry. It's a Benzino disc. People know what this is. Do you know who Benzino is? This motherfucker right down. Oh, Listen to this. Bitch, you owe me. You're gonna like this, son. I'm promoting you right wait. now. Yo, let's put the name wait, 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 wait. Pause it. Benzino was like the CEO, creative director, or editor for The Source magazine. Well, this guy, Benzino, and he was like a half- Mexican, one of those fucking guys. You know? I used to want a source hoodie so fucking really? bad when I was a kid. That was like the ultimate clothing piece you could have. Can you put that back on? Yes. Right now. This is what it's about. The nail in this coffin. I don't want to be like this. I don't really want to hurt no feelings. But I'm only being real when I say nobody wants to hear their grandfather rap. Oh, he was old. No men have heart attacks. He was old. I don't want to be responsible for that. So put the mic down and walk away. You can still have a little bit of dignity. I would never claim to be no Raven Zeno. An 83-year-old fake Pacino. So how can he hold me over some balcony without throwing his lower back out as soon as he goes? To lift me. Okay, so he said, I'll throw Eminem off a balcony, okay? Okay, well, how could you throw me over this balcony? You're so old, you know. An 83-year-old fake Pacino. So how can he hold me over some balcony without throwing his lower back out as soon as he goes to lift me? Please don't, you'll probably fall with me and I'll ask the boat be history. Very nice. But then again, you finally get your wish because you'll be all over the street like 50 Cent. <laughs> Cause you'll be all over the street like 50 cent get it if you fall with me dollar in the woods this is explained. a perfect way i want to show you this this is a perfect example of how you do a, a rap you, you got to sound happy jovial not angry and confident about what you're going to do to this guy it can't be in anger it can't be in defensiveness i think this is uh the perfect diss track you fucking punk pussy, fuck you, chump. Give me a one-on-one, see if I don't fuck you up. Try to jump the rough riders and they cut you up. And when you, you put Jada on a track, that's how much you suck dick in the industry. You're Swear learning. You in the streets hustling. So you're learning. You don't have to know about the guy. I didn't know about the guy. I'm like, oh, he sucks dick in the industry. He claims that he's in the streets hustling. Okay, Eminem is really 
let me know about this guy. Be on a fucking desk at the source, butt kissing and begging motherfuckers for guest appearances. And you can't even get the clearances, cause real lyricists don't even respect you or take you serious. It's not that we don't like you, we hate you, period. Talk about a midlife crisis, damn. Last week you were shaking Obi Trice's hand, now he's a buster? What the fuck's with that? Get on a track, kiss a nut. See, I was explaining the situation perfectly. You don't have to know about this guy to go, he did what? He did what? Take note. This is a good diss track. Get the clearances, cause real lyricists don't even respect you or take you serious. It's, it's not, not that, that we, we don't like you, we hate you, period. Talk about a midlife crisis, damn. Last week you was shaking Obi Trice's hand, now he's a buster? What the fuck's with that? Get on a track, kissing us, kissing 50's ass, and asking me what I know about indictments. Fight me, bitch, I got two cases, and probation, fight me. <laughs> what do I know about standing in front of a judge like a man ready to take whatever sentence he has? What you know about your wife slicing her wrist right in front of the only thing that you have in this world? A little girl, and I put that on her when this is all over. I would never try to make her a star and eat off her. I don't know shit about no shopping rocks, but what you know about it? Pop shops, rocking okay. spots where well, you're the only white boy up in that bitch just stripping, pressing up your own flyers and your stickers, sticking them bitches up after spending six hours at Kinko. Making copies of your covers of cassette singles To sell them out of the trunk of your tracer Spending your whole paychecks at disc makers What you know about being bullied over half your life? Oh, that's right, you should know what that's like You're half white Vanilla ice, Philippines and rice I'm eating you alive inside Jesus Christ, if you're that much of a gangster yeah. Put the mic down, you should be out killing motherfuckers That's the best line If you're that much of a gangster Put the mic down. You should be out killing motherfuckers right now. Because what is a gangster going to say? Well, I'm not going to kill anyone today. Oh, so are you going to kill anyone ever? Can I just <laughs> flick you in the fucking head? Are you going to do anything? I thought the only reason I'm afraid of you is because of the killing. So if you're not going to kill... Meeting you alive inside. That's a Jesus pretty good line. Christ, if you're that much of a gangster, put the mic down. You should be out killing motherfuckers right now. Kill a motherfucker go. dead. Kill him dead, bitch. Shoot him in the fucking head. Go ahead, bitch. Slap my mom. Slap the fuck out of her. She can't sue you. She wouldn't get a buck out of you because you broke as fuck. You suck. You're a fucking choke. If you was really selling coke, well, then what the fuck you stop for, dummy? If you slew some crack, you'd make a lot more money than you do from I mean, that's a concise, because you're learning about, right? You don't know this guy, but you're learning about his crimes. I saw a guy in the chat while I was playing this. Did you see this guy, Oh, but that's Joel? one of Sam Tripoli's fans. He's been doing He's that the whole time. He's got a fan here? I think so. Listen what he says. Mike cannot wait to move on from Sam's accusation. He's acting like it didn't even affect him. It's got a point. Okay, well, then I'm going to rewind, and we're going to hear the accusation again. And guess what? I don't deny it. I'm a fucking bad guy. You don't want to mess with me. <laughs> I did everything he said. What you going to do to me? Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Come over to my house if you think I'm such an issue. <laughs> I'll introduce you to my cat. My dog is my only cat. <laughs> Come on over. Say it to my face. <laughs> For charity. There it comes. Okay. And the charity will go to stopping pedophiles. Okay. Ooh. He'll fight me anytime, any place. I will. It will stop going from guys grooming Canadian chicks He'll who are 12 year old going from guys. Okay. And red bar is, has threatened to sue me a couple times and I look forward to, it. you know what? You're fucking sued. All right. I hope you Does got he those mean, papers. Like we're yelling at him for being so stupid. And we said, I don't, we want to sue him for having a Imagine show that. or something like that. And he got, confused. cause I used to say, lock him up. He'll be sued. Oh. You know? I guess. He's saying he's going to sue me. You know what? I am going to sue you. The papers should be in your mailbox today <laughs> from the judges, and they're furious. And I'll tell you this, they were all on my side already. I've uh, worked out a deal with them. You're not going to like You're Discovery. You're not going to like Discovery, bro. <laughs> when I show them a picture of your wife in them gray sweatpants, 
They're going to go, ooh, discover me, no. <laughs> They're going to want nothing to do with that discovery of that pit-stained vagina that your wife has all the time. That V, that darkened V in her Heather Athletic cheapo sweatpants where she walks around your house gassing the place up, taking care of the kooky-eyed two. I want to. I wish I was a football player so I could get your kids over that field goal. Imagine me teeing up your fucking kid with a kick. Nah, I ain't a kicker. So how could that hey, be a threat? Randy. Randy kicked me in the chest. I'd like to kick your head, but I wouldn't do it. Yeah, I mean, you can get together with Randy. Since Let me tell you something. Uh, your kids. Let me think what I'm going to do to your kids. First of all, I'm going to take your kids. I'm going to do everything Jeffrey Dahmer did to everybody, to them. And then they're not going to be yours. This is what you got to really think about, like, what would drive a man nuts? Your kids are just going to live with me. And I'll send you video messages of me squeezing them so hard that you're worried about how hard I'm squeezing them. Why would this guy... See, this is how dumb he I is. I know, you're so fucking stupid. That it's like the worst thing that could happen to you. Is someone says something about your kids, so you my offer key, that up to key. everybody as the thing oh, that'll that's get my you key. furious. Because nobody's going to care. What are you going to say? Hi, I'm a QAnon artist, uh, Your Honor, and this guy said my kids are screwballs with googly eyes. I mean, I don't know what you think is going to ever happen. You're not beating me up in a charity match. <laughs> uh, I can say whatever I want about your kids every day of my life forever. Nothing will happen legally or physically ever, ever. You can't even find me. If, if you and the whole army came out to try to find me, it, it, at the very least, you wouldn't find me. So let's start over, Samuel. What are you going to do about it is my question. Face to face, where? Where will you stop me? <laughs> the street? The saloon? The Great Wall of China? Where on my Apple screensaver will me and you meet for the stopping? Because it ain't stopping. I might start a podcast called Sam's Kids. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just a show about what they look like to me. What are you going to do? Your Honor, he made a show called Sam's Kids. Okay, what's the show about? My kids! Well, sorry, my daughter's a big fan, so shut up. And what do you think's going to happen? I'm going to make fun of those kids till they're 18, and when they're 18, I'm going to fuck them. With Dave sorry, Le we just watched the Kevin Brennan yeah, documentary. Me and Dave Landau are going to 69 your kids when they're 18 and a half. We're going to give it, make sure they're fully 18. Then we're going to pile drive them in their slim anuses. Me and Dave Landau, right in front of Steven Crowder's lawyer, who has deemed it fine. What will you do? This is why people are always like, Mike, Mike, why do you always only go after right wing guys and not left wing yeah. people? It's so much more satisfying yeah. to make fun of someone who has to take it because they've been free spouting speech. out about free speech, free speech. for f 10 fucking years. Hey, they can. I Listen, if, I if the judge goes, hey, you've gone too far, you've wrecked these kids. We'll okay. apologize to the judge. You're still anti-free speech at the end of the day. So. <laughs> That's all I'm proving, and I've already proven it. So, Your kids are... My elixir, they're all I crave. Sorry, I'm sorry. I haven't done anything to the kids, and I would never do anything to the kids. We've got a disclaimer, I'll never contact them. It's a disclaimer. It's all comedy, but... And if you try to stop us, you're censoring comedy. Is it illegal to say, I am in love with a, this guy's kids? I'm not going to do anything, but I love them, and I love them as my own, and they're going to move in with me when they're 18, and they're going to be my sons. And I'm going to raise them to kiss me. Sorry. <laughs> Is that what you want to hear as a really worried dad? Or do you want to be free speech? Let's hear the rest of this nonsensical. Do it. I'm not going to do I that I can't to wait kids. to get that motherfucker in discovery. So <laughs> let him keep talking. Does he drink? Let him keep talking. 
I need water. Okay. No, his name is not, dude, Pedo Open uh, Mike. That's his name. Not enough water. Oh, hold I'll on. What back. time we at? Where, where we at? Oh, dude, Can we're we over a minute. Time to go. If I did this. I didn't say any quality of a job. Would you like me? You know, I feel like I ought to be so quality to be liked by anybody. Ashley Butterfield makes me a, be a goddamn legend until he kind of likes me. Damn Triple E just sits there. Do you hear the stuff out of his mouth? Like, let's back that up a few seconds. Pretend you're a fan. Pretend this isn't about me. Why is this okay to say? Uh, anytime. I don't feel so right. Same. Listen to this. Oh, hold on. What time we at? Where, where we at? Oh, dude, we're over a minute. Time to go. Guy didn't say anything, so let's go find fucking retard. Oh, there we go. There. That's entertainment to you? Some guy just spouting nonsense? I mean, I could, I, I drink all day and night here. You know, I wear my body down to a, uh, as thin as a sliver. If I said these things, I would end the show myself. I mean, I would really cancel it myself. This guy's just a lot. Duh, 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 duh. Oh, he's cool. He's one of our influencers. Here we go. Oh, man. Bang. Gone. Listen to this crap. <laughs> just got rid of people talking shit. He's banning yeah, people. He's gone. Oh, there we are. Solar opposites did it again, dude. Somebody says Mike doesn't feel well. Pressure is too high. Could this be? <laughs> Could it be? I think so. You know me. Am I These falling? allegations rocked you. Yeah, I told my uh, district attorney, I go, there's going to be some allegations coming in from this guy. They're going to say I'm a pedophile. Does he have any evidence? I hope not. <laughs> I fucking hope not, Your Honor. <laughs> That's all I'll say about that. But uh, I'm not uh, uh, worried about like anything anyone accuses me of. I have to double down on it. I have to go. I did it. No. Because you can't defend yourself because you it's so check. fucking gay. You can't. So like, if somebody said, you're a pedophile, it's like. you go, well, that's blah, 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 that's blah, blah, Then it's like this imagine that. gayest Well, that's the thing, thing is, uh, and, and I, I really, it's like an unspoken lesson on this show. It's like when you defend yourself, you're a total tool. So, you can <laughs> never defend yourself. So if somebody even accuses you of rape, you got to go, I could have brutally. We'll let the courts decide. When I, I had to explain to anyone everybody been... about my pictures thing, which was like, the only reason I did that oh. is because I just wanted the real story to be out there. Yeah. It was like the worst day of my life. Yeah. It was so gay. Well, imagine this. It's like, um, you know, you get accused of rape and you. It, 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 all I would say is, and you got to keep this attitude up. You got to keep this attitude. Well, let's see what that judge has to say. <laughs> About that rape that I could have done, could have not done. We don't know. Don't Leave. give anyone any respect about Never. the case till you get to the judge. Sorry, it's up to that judge. That judge is the only man. I mean, really, what are you gonna do? Yeah, so, someone quotes an amazing Kanye tweet. Any uh, rumor your, you heard about me is true, true and, and legendary. legendary. Uh, can we have that song? Sam Tripoli goes after Ethan Klein, calls him fully retarded. Calls him a fucking idiot and says he spreads blatant misinformation. He also wants to fight Ethan for charity. I can't believe it. it. Says here. So this is what Sam does. Is Sam anti Hebrew or something like that? So two weeks ago, Sam called me a fucking idiot. He said that I was a pedophile and that he wanted to fight me for charity. Now he's saying that he wants to fight Ethan Klein for charity. I would love to go to dinner with Ethan Klein. I said that to Jules the other day. He goes, he would hate you. And I go, why would he hate me? She goes, um, you said so many terrible things about his wife. And I go, oh, he'd understand, <laughs> right? In my mind, Ethan would understand, but probably not. I mean, I've it's pretty mean to Gila. What have I said about Gila? Like, can you think of anything I've said about Gila Klein? Um, 
just comments on her haircuts and looks. Have I said anything bad about Hila Klein where it would get in the way of us eventually becoming friends, do you think? I would... Like, have I gone too far with Ethan and Hila Klein? And I'm asking the audience as well. It's hard to say, but probably. In my mind, we're friends. I mean, it's not... <laughs> That's how Michael Rappaport must think about the world, right? What the fuck? All I did is say all the worst stuff about you. What are you so mad about? Sports. All right, let's see Sam Tripley's going after Ethan Klein. I might have to team up with Ethan to take you down. So here he is, and he wears these plasticky glasses that make him look like his children, which is marbly, remember. All right, let's see are people like Ethan Klein, who's <gasps> fully retarded, yelling at people. Why is he fully retarded? You know, Ethan Klein's great. What are, he's yelling at people. So what did he say? Something about you? This guy gets really upset when you say something about him or his kids. Google Sam Tripoli Red Bar Kids <laughs> if you want to get caught up on that. Are people like Ethan Klein, who's fully retarded, Yelling at people on the internet. Who's that? Uh, this guy, Ethan Klein. Is he one of your buddies? I don't want to get you a piss one, but he's on the uh, H3H3 podcast, this which is, is supposedly very big. And I love that everybody on the internet eventually collides with one, and all of our fools collide. Like Sam Tripoli and Ethan Klein should not be beefing, right? All right. Uh, he writes this. Hey, no vaccine passport dipshits. Uh, it's not fascism, you whiny fucks. Why are we trying to prevent? We are trying to prevent people from dying. If you don't want okay, to get so the Okay, so this is getting hairy here. Okay, a term I used to describe when things are getting a little too flexy on the off-road trails. Okay, it's getting a little hairy out here. It mohab. Off-roading. Oh, my God. Did I show my belly? I think you might have just if there are any screenshots I'm of my little slit thing. it'll look like a little like uh taco bell ah, it showed, it there showed, is it vaccine that's your right ah, shut I'll... the fuck up it does it showed. look like one of those taco bell roll-ups so covered in hair oh my fuck God. man well now we have to start an only fan <laughs> Giving me chills all over my body. Why chills? What do you mean chills? Why chills? Did it look good? I just can't believe What's that. What's wrong? All they saw was one ab. Oh my gosh. Fuck. Oh. Okay, okay. I'll get it I together. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Hey, listen. I'll release a full nude today to uh, to prove I'm going to be like Khloe Kardashian now. <laughs> and do like a thing. Yeah, exactly. All right, so this is getting a little hairy here. Don't get twisted up in this vaccine thing. Uh, and an update on COVID as far as, you know, COVID has really torn a lot of people apart. I am now anti-mask and anti-COVID uh, now. I am fully, like, I don't wear a mask anymore. I don't care anymore either. And I'm at parties, I'm at events, and I don't care anymore. Whatever you guys think, we agree. Yeah, so uh, COVID's... <laughs> over and i don't care about any of that stuff anymore but i also don't care if you do wear a mask i'm not getting all mad i'm not you know what i mean i'm just going out i'm living life i'm going to these malls i'm doing whatever i want and i think i've had covid three or four times throughout this thing every other day i go <laughs> i i have never got tested the other day jules was asking if we uh you know what we're gonna do for dinner i told her i can't i have covid <laughs> you know so don't get caught up in these things. Don't argue with this COVID anymore. Just who cares? What's going to happen? And then I started realizing, I go, yeah, actually I do. I do want the grandparents to die. I want the parents to die. I want everybody to die. Really, I, I really do. <laughs> what would be, why would I want them to live? For what? You know, here's my deal. As long as I could get my leave, my Nexium, my food and my puffer juice i'm pretty much good you know i really don't care what happens to anyone else i don't know why you would either 
So here he is. Obviously, he's mad at Ethan Klein because of a vaccine thing. He's going to read this tweet. But let's not pick sides over a vaccine thing, okay? Ethan is very scared of COVID. All right? I am not scared of COVID anymore. Um, I'm out. You know, I'm doing shows. Here we go. I also have the right to know that your dumbass isn't putting my family at risk at crowd events. Okay. What (laughs) this idiot doesn't... Can can you also go down a little bit? But the press secretary, who is doing an awful job... Okay, uh, we're going to circle back on that. That means I, I have what no answer for you. There? That isn't other than we're full of shit. Okay, so she's basically says that vaccine passports will be developed by the private sector. Okay, which is big pharmaceuticals. Mm-hmm. And who will enforce vaccine pa- passports but the government? This is what comedians are doing now. This is what you're all into. Why are you so all into this? And look at this fucking loser, Brian Callen. I know. Look at this idiot. He don't know what to say. Conspiracy Social Club. I mean, this really looks like one of those coffee houses that's going to close in a year. Yeah. You know? It's like, why would they? Like, remember when we were making fun of Santino and Bobby Lee's set before they added yeah. all that stuff? Yeah. Why do these people do a style that has nothing to do with their personality It's so whatsoever? weird. Uh, what does this have to do with anything? This looks like a place, again, where you're going to get coffee. It's really expensive and it's not even that good. And it's pour over and whoop de woo uh, You know, I just am really not impressed with it. The sets, I mean... Are out of control. I've never seen a good podcasting set in my life. Um. So okay, let's hear more. I mean, he's screaming, he's rambling. Can we all stop with caring about all this stuff? And again, these are supposed to be two comedians. Aren't you supposed to tune in and have a fun time with them? Have you ever had a fun time with them? Plus, isn't a vaccine passport pretty cool? It's like being a VIP. I know. And stop worrying Don't about you be a all VIP? this stuff. Stop worrying. You know. All of a sudden, everyone thinks there's, like, total freedom. I was saying the other day, like, okay, let's take vaccine passport. Oh, vaccine passport, that goes against my rights. Okay, does the seatbelt go against your rights? Doesn't everything go against your rights? What planet are you living on? Where, you know, I I think it was when I saw um, that black guy uh, the other day. He wouldn't comply with the cop, and then the cop got really mad, and then he pepper sprayed him. He wouldn't get out of the car. Was that you a big gotta, story, or were you just watching crime yeah, videos? Yeah, just crime videos, but um, <laughs> like a black guy. Okay, for instance, a black guy won't get out of the car for 40 minutes, and then the cop finally flips out and beats the shit out of it. It's like, ever since I was old enough to understand what a police officer was, I feel like I knew it's unfair, and they're horrible, and they're mean, and they're scary, and when you get pulled over... You sit like this and you do whatever they say. If you don't think that's fair, it's not. Did you think the uh, the K through through uh, I don't know what the fuck uh, you know uh, K through eight? What do they call it? I mean, remember I had schooling? To get like a million vaccines in order to move here, and I wouldn't this, have been allowed to. That's move what here I don't understand. Them. It's like. This has never been fair. This has never been fun. Life has never been cool or great. Uh, Do you remember school? Do you remember when you were forced to go to school for 18 years? Was that fair? Was detention fair? Was all the stuff that happened to you fair? Things aren't fair. The government's evil. The cops are evil. I don't know why this is such a surprise. Um... You're, you have to do what they say. That's what you got to do. You got to do what they say. All right? And if you don't like it, you find a way around it. You know what I mean? You find a way around it. You sneak your way around it. But you don't sit here and complain. Imagine if before COVID, if my whole show was just complaining that we had to wear seatbelts. Imagine if the whole show was just complaining we had to wear seatbelts. You have to. They're making you do it. And by the way, you went out and bought a $50,000 car. And if you don't wear a seatbelt, it beeps, 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 beeps. But, and you even, you're in cahoots with that car maker who's doing this to you. So you're okay with all these rules. All of a sudden we have this COVID and they put these very mild restrictions on people. And everyone is flipping out as if we've never had a rule before. So 
my aggravation isn't with COVID. It's not with any of the details of what's right and wrong. It's with, were you born yesterday? <laughs> it's the aggravation of two comedians who should be doing comedy are shitting here day in and day out complaining about conspiracies. You, you, you know, you can be doing this about a stop sign as well. I can make an argument that we don't need stop signs, but we've all agreed we all follow these laws. I mean, think about how many laws we have that we're forced to follow, but all of a sudden when a new one is introduced, they're freaking out, and it's the comedians freaking out. It's a conspiracy now. Okay, well, you know, what else is a conspiracy? Is everything a conspiracy? I saw Joe Rogan read the news the other day, and, uh, you know, uh, they're reading articles that are stating like uh, what used to be known as facts, but nobody wants to believe them anymore because everything must be a lie. If it's from the government, it's a conspiracy, it's this. So I don't know, but I do know this. Shut up. You do the comedy that you claim you do. How about that? How about we all shut up now about COVID and we do the comedy, all right? No more conspiracies. You live with it. Yes, you're in a very unfair, you're in a very unfair world, all right? Injustice around every corner. Teal with it. <laughs> Promotional line from Weezer's The Teal Album. Stop being such a pussy and letting tiny, tiny rules run your life, okay? Here you go. Ethan Klein, you <laughs> fucking idiot. That is fascism. When big corporations and the government Look come together I mean. I want to, do this to anymore. fucking limit your rights, that is the definition of fascism. That is it, man. Big business corporations, corporations, <clears throat> and the government come together. It's not dudes in pointy helmets goose stepping. Who is Ethan Klein? I don't know. He's oh. on that. He has something to do. Do you know anything? With H3. Wait, 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 Brian. Do you know anything that's going on on the internet? He's the biggest star in America and yeah. Israel. Do you know anything that's happening on the internet? Why is it okay to never know anyone or anything? That's not cool to admit. I don't know who that is. Don't know who that is. That doesn't make you cool. If you're doing a podcast, we'd hope you knew a few of these guys. I I would hope that somebody I'm listening to knows a little bit about a little bit of everything. These guys, I don't know who that is. I don't know. As if it's a badge of honor to not know nothing. Well, then why do I need an opinion from you if you know so little? Here we go. H3. He's the host of H3H3 H3 podcast uh, with his wife, Isla. You're fucking okay. through, by know. the way. But uh, I'm less concerned with people who have a point of view on this. Some people have no problem but, with government but dude, oversight. But he's yelling at people saying that's not fascism yeah. when it is 100% fascism, Brian. Yeah. That is. Okay, so what's wrong with fascism then? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, right. shut up. Oh, fascism! You're afraid of fascism, pussy? I don't understand. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you what that term means <laughs> till this day. I, I really couldn't. That's fascism! <laughs> this is what your comedian is saying, and you're watching. That's fascism! Oh, no, fascism! Are you afraid of thunderstorms, too? Those are pretty unfair. What about a tornado? What happens when an earthquake comes? Uh, I just don't understand what these people thought life was supposed to be. The definition of fascism. And when someone with this kind of reach starts fucking muddying the waters up. I mean, Brian, you're concerned about misinformation. That is blatantly misinformation. Look how many supposed likes it's gotten. 30,000. I mean, that is blatant misinformation. 3,000 retweets. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, you're mad about misinformation. I mean, really, this is Sam Tripoli being mad about misinformation. He thinks Tom Hanks rapes and eats children. He really believes this. And he's furious about misinformation. Oh no, misinformation. Oh no. I can't imagine what would happen if people had wrong information. Yikes. And it's like misinformation. You know, you've got two kids that are basically the definition of misinformation. Okay. You give them information and they miss it. They don't know what the fuck's happening.
So I'd focus on those two little kids before you start trying to heal the world. Look, man. Uh, this isn't Brian talking. This is Sam talking. Ethan, I'll fight you for charity. I've wow. said this, though. I've said, I've said that this is going to be something that is your, your, your freedoms, whether or not vaccine passports, just for your a second. Your freedoms. Let's just suspend this. Whether or not vaccines passports are what some people think are going to keep us safe versus not. It's like these guys who get thrown out by society because they're scumbags. They all want you to think that you're going to get fucked, too. So they got to put you where they're at. You know, this is a divorced guy. He's lost it all, been accused of rape. Here's a guy with two kids that, you know, like I've got like wind up toys from the 90s with that little white winder that have more fucking brains than his kids. And, you know, they want you to believe that, oh, yeah, your life is just going to be as shitty as ours. You know, they're coming for you. They're going to ruin your life. Oh, you're being lied to. Just please understand that that any time in history, people have lost all their rights to to a tyrannical group of wealthy, powerful Fitz people. Fitz fucking phonies. It's because it's because it was always done for your own good. Quote yeah, unquote. your safety. It's always done for your safety. It's never been any different. It was always done in the name of the people, in the name of safety. Napoleon did it. Pol Pot did it. Oh. Mao Zedong did it. All those people. So well, we've seen this a thousand times. It's done for the people. How many how many people were killed by Stalin for not being for being enemies of the state, for being enemies of the people, for being enemies of the working class? This is exactly you you know, these people Shut are so up, historically Kellen, ignorant. The fighting so Shut I up. would love to see someone like Ethan Klein at least be well, aware. You that- already know his name? That's amazing to me <laughs> when somebody heard about somebody for the first time for a brief millisecond and then they're able to repeat their name as if they've known he goes ethan klein i'll fight you and brian goes i don't know who that is and then a minute later he's rattling off ethan klein quite the memory quite the memory there so maybe you do know ethan klein huh very interesting that that's more about what people are worried about. I am worried about that. I Brian, am you, worried about Brian, it. Brian, within your, you are in some way okay with a vaccine passport, a passport I for, don't a think va- so, dude. for a virus that has a 99% survival rate. It's not that the death, the average age of death is older than the average age of death. At- you should do a thing on the show where you inject your kids with, uh, with COVID to see what happens. You know, if it's uh, 99. Crowder would do it. Crowder would do it. And he has done it. You're a pussy. Inject your kids with a virus now. As Americans as a whole. Yeah. No, no. See that you're getting into. I've been from what day. I hope your kids get COVID and can't taste. Okay. Well, Sam Tripoli got kicked off Twitter, apparently. He did. He got kicked off Twitter. He'll be back. They always come back to Twitter under a fake name. Uh, receiving less and less. Like Anthony Kumi is back on his 16th account and he's only got like 287 followers. You know, it goes down every time. Are those all the Sam Tripoli updates we have here? Pretty much. Has Ethan Klein responded to any of that? Not that I know of. Nobody cares. I'd like to see Sam in jail. Seriously, I really want that guy to live out his life in jail. And if anyone has pictures of his wife, please send them over. I'd like to go over those with a fine tooth pointer. Listen, I got no animosity toward him. I'm, when it comes to size on Z, I'm like Sam Tripoli. Listen, I ain't got no problem with anyone. We're going to show you a couple of things because I think they're important, but I, I will say this. You know, it's predictable. That's the word I'm looking for. It would be predictable of me to hate. This is why I don't like hating on the people who hate me. I'll tell you why. It's predictable. It's gay. When somebody hates me first, I almost feel that I need to pretend I like them. (laughs) Because it's too predictable to hate the guy just because he hates you. I always said this, like, I like to choose who I hate. So when somebody talks shit about me, I can't just hate them simply because they're talking shit about me. That would just mean that I have a problem with them talking shit about me, so I'm pretending to hate them 
So it is very hard to hate somebody that started with you first. It's a fool's move. So whenever somebody hates me, I go, I think they're pretty cool. It, but it's very tough. Sai Sanzi, of course, is somebody who I would have hated if you didn't hate me first. So now we like you. So now we like you. Do you understand <laughs> how this this works? But I wanted to show you a couple of clips from Shai Z, and I'm not going to state my opinion. These are neither here nor there. You've heard people say that. Uh, this first clip is Shai Z's uh, mother, stepmother. It's like a, uh, what's her name? Nicki Minaj, Beyonce verse. Stepmother. Your kids will understand that one. Pull me up, Sai Sanzi's mom came in and they had a little fight. The only reason I'm showing you this, it's not to pile. I don't like actually piling on my easies. When Jesse P.S. was banned from YouTube, did you see me pile on? I think even Jesse in his head goes, you know what? That's a classy move. You don't pile on to people that are that easy. So when I saw this clip, I fought long and hard uh, with myself. You go, do you show this clip? This is not to pile on. This is to show you, you know, we got to help Sai Zanzi. He's being abused. He's being abused by a white, a privileged white. This is called Sai Zanzi's mom beats him up. This just happened. You know, he lives, I guess, with his stepmom or mother-in-law. Who's this woman? The mother of his, uh, the his grand girlfriend's mom. So Sai Zanzi knocked up this girl. And they had, you know, Sai Sanzi, that Mexican guy, and they had babies, but they can't be trusted to live with these kids themselves. Or so the internet says, I, I mean, I don't know it, and I don't want to uh, insult the guy, because I think he's cool. I do want to insult him, kind of. Really? You do? Oh, yeah. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You see? Okay. Just okay. gave you a taste. <laughs> okay. So... He knocked up this girl, but they don't have the funds to, to do it themselves. They are in dire straits. So they live with the girl's mother, who is this white witch. <laughs> and the mother, Sai Imagine Zanzi being so poor, you have to live with a witch. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's so bad. I mean, uh, we saw the movie The Blair Witch. You know, let me have that one at least. In the movie, The Blair Witch, you know how there's that woman at the beginning? They're interviewing, like, townspeople at the beginning. There's this old woman. I thought that was The Blair Witch, that woman at the beginning. Yeah. I turned the movie off at that part. <laughs> I go, too scary. Okay, so he lives with this woman, and it's extreme poverty. And apparently, I'm not making this up, he broadcasts out of a closet. And again, I'm not trying to... Uh, knock him down. I just thought this clip was so good that you need to see it. It's part of the the history of it all. And he broadcasts out of a closet and apparently this woman is listening to the live stream always. Every time she's in the other room monitoring his live stream. Remember that time we got into a little uh, fisticuffs there with Shai Zanzi and his mother cut the stream. Came in, he cut the stream or something like that. Remember that? She's always scratching at the door. She's <sighs> making her markings. Every few minutes on his stream, you can hear the doorknob rattling with her going, no, 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 no. Yeah, and then you look, no one's there. Here's Sai Sanzi. It's in a private group. Uh... awesome if Shai Sanzi just picked up a guitar and rocked like that. <laughs> yeah. My enemies never rock. All right, Tim here Poole. it is. This is, uh, you you know this screen very well. And somebody made a good point. They go, listen, Shai Sanzi's great. Imagine every R in this chat, 92 R's in this chat. Who said this? Pat, Mar, the kid. The kid. Love him. Uh, if it weren't for people like Shai Z. All these R's would be in the Red Bar chat with you. So ruining we Red Bar. Be thanking him. So we actually now we've uh, readjusted here. We've reassessed, and we like that these people. Without Mersh, without him, we'd be flooded with those people. We'd be fucked. 
Thank you, Pat. You made a great point. Uh, let's see what happens to Saison. Although, again, I like this person. That's not sarcasm. I don't do uh, sarcasm that I never tell you the truth to. That's hate. There you go. Here's the clip. The fuck you drink every fucking night of the week. You lost your daughter's car. So here. Yeah. And put us yeah. in debt. Yeah. All right. So Sorry, I did, Kyle. This is all real. He's in this. Cl- it's a clo. It's not a joke. It's a closet that he's in. Apparently, this is what they say. And she's listening, and apparently he did something. She's this white woman, you know. She looks like a Matt, the Bachelor Matt's mom, <laughs> if she was poor. Did you guys know that Mike predicted that Colton was gay? Yes. From the oh, day yep. one. We of can do that later. Yeah. Him? But that guy Colton from The Bachelor, I said he was gay so many times to the point where I was blocked by him, his girlfriend, and his girlfriend's sister. <laughs> Because every day of the year, I would comment, you're gay, just admit it, please come out. I hate when people won't admit they're gay. I gay bash closeted gays, and once they come out of the closet, they're fine. (laughs) Uh, I was blocked by all three of them for calling him gay for two years. And And then then he comes out on the Today Show as gay like two weeks ago. Can you believe can I get unblocked, please, with an apology? It's like, what the fuck? I think that you deserve an apology. I predict it all. All right, here he is, and she's mad at something he does. I'll let it play, and you could uh, decide what we saw here uh, by your own eyes. Here. Fuck you, drink every fucking night of the week. You lost your daughter's car yeah, yeah, and put us yeah, in debt. Yeah. Sure I did, Kyle. Yeah, you did. You piece of shit. Yeah, you, uh, you took advantage of your daughter and fucked her man back when so she was guys, 18. Whenever she yells at him, I guess he tries to be cool once she leaves. So he's, like, really scared when she comes in. And then when she leaves, he goes, yeah, you abused your daughter and you also uh, stole a lot of money. And then she hears it on the speakers outside because it's like the Tonight Show where they got speakers in the green room. <laughs> That's a classic move when you're with your friends yeah. at your house and your mom goes, get over here and talks yeah. to you. And then you go back to the friends when you're like 14 and you're like, yeah. Ugh, she's, she's such a, bitch. a What did you say? Oh, I said you were an uh, itch. <laughs> Fuck you, drink every fucking night of the week. You lost your daughter's car. Yeah. yeah. And put us yeah. in debt. Yeah. Sure, I did, Kyle. Yeah, you did. Fuck yeah. Piece of shit. yeah, you uh, took advantage of your daughter and fucked her man back when she was 18. <laughs> well, oh, I did she's not in. fuck you. And then she comes in and she starts hitting him. It is an adult hit. We rarely get to see a streaming hit. Yeah, you Watch uh, took advantage of your daughter and fucked her man. So she hears that because she was 18. She <laughs> wait, <laughs> there she is, and she comes in. She's half transparent. Oh my <laughs> she comes in, and this is an old woman with long, stringy white hair. I can't and believe she that comes he has in to live with this woman. His, this isn't footage from the old 80s. Here, let's watch this again. I'll zoom in. Teen. <laughs> I did not fuck well, you. You motherfucker. I said her, man, not me, weirdo. Whoa, stop trying to be part of me. You'll never be part of me, fat ugly. Uh, you tried fucking her, man. Flop. You know, a, 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 that's the whole clip. You know, to normal people, this is extremely insane and, does and terrifying. Does he know that his life is horror? Is he even aware of that? Or so does that, he just think this is how people live? That's what happened with his uh, stepmom. If, that, if something like that happened to me, you'd never see me again. I'd be so humiliated. Yes. So let's see this other clip we got from him today. And this is the good one. This is uh, Sam Tripoli. So he called in, and you know the thing I don't, I like a lot about Sai Sunsi, but what I don't like about him is he actually wants to be friends with the fools he covers, okay? This is, We've seen this before. This is not cool. Like, imagine if, like, Josh Denny Skyped into the show, and then I was like, oh, I, I actually, uh... Like, imagine if I was groveling and trying to be friends with Josh Jenny. So I didn't know this about him, but, you know, Sai Sun Z covers Brian Callen and Sam Tripoli all the time. And uh, 
you know, he's talking shit about them all. I thought he hates them. Apparently, he just wants to be friend. He just wants to be part of it all. Uh, well, who can blame him? He's in this horrible situation with this mom. He's getting abused every day. So she he, comes into his room at night and she starts biting his stomach. Yeah, I mean, really scratching, biting. It's like drag me to hell. The he's movie. so drunk he doesn't yeah. even know. But then he wakes up and he's got these big chunks. She's like, from uh, his I think he keeps her in that hatch from Evil Dead. You know, on the floor she comes up. They're saying that we should reenact that scenario that would be great you do look like, like his mom. mother i was gonna say you same got the hair. same haircut same build all right uh this is another one from shy on z and he posted this himself he calls into a uh, podcast that sam tripoli is on is this queued up no, here that's queued up to the part that they bring should we just play up, the whole maybe thing we should watch the whole thing and see how much he sucks up to them so here's sam tripoli and what's good about the reason i'm showing you any of this I wouldn't have even showed you the size on mom thrashing um, if this clip didn't exist, because this is ultimately about Sam Tripoli and his fear of Red Bar. Yep. It appears after I saw his sons in heaven with my little Eric Clapton song, Sam said, I, I am unable to take on Red Bar. <laughs> and Sam wants a truce now. Sam Trusily. Sam Trusily. So let's see. This is uh, Sam Tripoli and I talk about Bob. Le okay. And Red Bar. Look at this. I'm in the title. Red Bar. I have every reason to play this. Red Bar, they say. You know, um, what does that sound like to somebody who's never heard about Red Bar? Hey, caller, what's the name is of your... Is that the stupidest word? I hate titles. I hate names. Let's see this clip. Let's see what happens here. But ultimately, it's proof that Sam is afraid of Red Bar. He's backing down from the charity boxing event. You know, it's costing me a lot of money. Oh, wow. How pleasant. <laughs> to ask Sam about Bob Lazar. So he calls in. Sai Sun Z is calling into their shows. That's a fool's move. Aww. Hosts don't call. All right. Host lead. The followers call. Host don't call. Keep that in mind. Or if he believes him or Let's not. Mm. Okay, I, here's what I think that is with Bob Lazar. I think they wanted him to see that stuff. So he'd go out and tell everybody. I, I, I make no illusions of having any clue. It you could, know, I just realized this. Sam Tripoli's wife is trying to get divorced from him and take the kids. Did you know this? No, who says? Yep. His wife. They're in a custody battle. What? For real. Yeah, 100%. She's uh -huh. trying to take the kids. Well, what a blessing that would she be. She may or may have not emailed me, Jules. No. No. Yep. Are you serious? Because I didn't know about that. We might read this email coming up on the show. I didn't want to stir the beans. But uh, Sam Tripoli's wife is in the process of trying to divorce him. She ain't got no money. That's the problem. I mean, he called you a pedophile. So that's yeah. like the worst thing you can call someone. So it's open season, right? So Sam, his wife is trying to take away those googly eyed helmet twins. And uh, Sam might it's be a wearing. It's custody battle. Both of them don't want yeah. the kids. We, Your Honor, these kids, trust me, yeah. they're very retarded. I bet Sam's got one of those goofy, retarded kid helmets under that. That's why he wears his big, <laughs> tall hats. Because he's got that uh, thing to keep your brain from scrambling that his kids wear. Those beige, medical-grade uh, helmets where you look like that Chinese fighter from all the memes. And he's got that same helmet. Uh. All right, let's see what happens here. It could be everything. It could be nothing in terms of what aliens represent. Yeah, right. I mean, like, if you look Sheila at Bill aliens. Cooper's book, he talked about how he thought that the government wanted him to see those documents so he would talk about that. Why didn't he just download Tor and get back in? <laughs> I've been repeating that over and over yeah. in my head since the Don't show. like the government? Download Tor, get back in. It's as simple as that. So, I don't well, know, man. I mean, it could be everything, right? It could be that there is both good technology, there's both good entities bad entities the bad entities are working with the military industrial size ones he's calling in he's not calling in to prank them he's calling in to try to be friends with them which is weird 
You know, again, it would be like if I called in, if you caught me calling in the Melton show and sucking up to him, and it's not a bit, it's not a troll. It's like, what are you doing? These are our enemies, Psy E. And all of Real his complex. fans in the comments of this video are like, Sam's actually nice, Sam rules. Yeah, you see what they do? They bend up their fools. They don't mean it. They got no heart in this game. No, nope, they're they not don't for have real. What it takes. These people just want to be these people. You know, they're what my YouTube commenters mean when they say, "You just want to be them. You're jealous." Well, maybe because most people, you'd be right. Let's see. They give them weapons, and that's the flying saucers we see, and then they're constantly flying battling sausage. these. Instead of flying saucer, I believe he said flying sausage. It's better. He's it's in better serious term. mode. Sam Tripoli's in serious mode talking about conspiracy. Listen to what he says. I got to hear if he said flying sausage. Good entities, bad entities. The bad entities are working with the military industrial complex. They give them weapons, and that's the flying saucers we see. And then they're constantly. That's the flying sausage we see, he said. Constantly battling these high frequency entities. And then, of course, the guy from Jackass, Johnny Knoxville, here <laughs> as the host. You know, today is Johnny Knoxville. It's who knows. You're going to love this who call. Knows? But what I won't Entity. believe is anything the media. Flying sauces is what he said. <laughs> yeah. A flight of sauces to taste test them to see which one is the best. And the government tells me. Yeah, caller. What do you think? Size on Z, the caller. Well, I do run a huge YouTube channel called Sam's Entertainment. And I oh. do, uh, cover Sam and Brian and stuff. Mm -hmm. So... I'm very new to the conspiracy stuff, but I tend to believe Bob Lazar. I I think he believes. Imagine believing Bob. I hate Bob Lazar, by the Size way. Size Sensei is always watching Sam Tripoli's show and Brian Callen's show, and then instead of making fun of them, fun he of accidentally them. got sucked yeah, into Yeah, he gets the sucked into the conspiracies. Fuck, man. This would be like if we watch Mountain, we got sucked into Ty Rivera content. <laughs> what are you saying? Uh, I would suspect that the people who run Area 51, especially the human resources you know, department. our uh, guys do that too. The people who hate Red Bar, they come in the chat. You're here today, and I don't want to talk you out of this. I won't be able to, so I, that's why I'm willing to say this. We get, you know, every time we do the show, there's 10 to 20 people that hate us. They're here to hate watch, right? But they end up getting sucked into the content. We watch them, they try to make fun of us, but then two minutes later, we see them commenting on the stuff we're showing. One or the other. You can't ever get sucked into the fool. If I'm the fool, you can't get sucked into the fool's content it's the while you're here. To it's the number one rule. That's how you know. I also, um, here's an easy way to spot an R. You know, I talked about this in the Bring Back group. It's brilliant. Here's the easiest way to spot an R. If there is somebody accusing me of being a R retarded, right? Or a fool. You ever see these guys? He goes, what people don't know is Mike is actually the number one fool in all of them. Okay. That's how you know who's an R. If they're saying something like that. Oh yeah, I'm the retard. Oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. I'm the stupidest one out of all these guys. Oh yeah, that, that's definitely probably it. So that's how you know when somebody's truly retarded, they say something like that. And if they start commenting on the content, but they're supposed to be hate watching. That's a true R. <laughs> and size on Z is guilty again. He's fallen in love with the content from his enemies. Let's watch. I tend to believe Bob Lazar. I, I think he believes what he's saying. Uh, I would suspect that the people who run Area 51, especially the Human Resources Department, when they reach out to a, a, a new candidate, they have done a psychological profile, and they will have uh, probably an analysis that will give them information whether or not this new candidate is likely to leak information. Got a guy in the chat here. You know, I got my eye on the chat right now, so be careful what you say. Somebody <laughs> says, this chat is super edgy. Excuse me? Did you just insult the whole chat? Not going to stand here. I don't have any uh, remarks for you, anything hard-hitting, but I will say this. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't insult the chat. Because they're all black. 
You want to be known as a racist? Go for it. That would be a good way to get out of things. Guys, our whole chat is actually Afro-Americans. You remember that when Kramer was busted for saying, He's a liar! He came on David Letterman the very next day and he goes, I offended an Afro. And they're like, ah. Keep their mouth Did shut. What kind, yeah. of person they, what kind of person they really are. And before they bring him into the most sensitive, secret testing facility probably on the planet. They're going to get and through And so they it. brought Watch. him in and they ran a psychological profile on him. They brought him in because they probably knew he would leak something at a certain Dude, point. Dude, I couldn't in time. agree more. I couldn't agree more. Midnight, I could not. You shouldn't be agreeing with anything right now. You have no business to be in agreement with anything. Nope. You're not logical. Agree more. <laughs> we are data. They have us down to our data. They know how we're going to react to stuff. So uh, imagine how big of a pussy you would need to be if you're afraid of someone having your data. <laughs> what are you, a data male? <laughs> what a fag. These are the same guys like, I ain't afraid of shit, man. Come fight me in the street. You're not afraid of a fight, but you're afraid of people having your data. You know, talk about a bitch. You're afraid of Mark Zuckerberg and his data? <laughs> Think about it. You ever flipped it on any of these guys? I thought you're big, bad, gun-toting, which I do. Don't take that as an insult here. All right, I got guns. Uh, I love guns, and I love shooting people, too. I take it one step further. I like the school shooting <laughs> part of it, where guns guys are like, oh, no, we don't do any uh, school shootings. Okay. Oh, then you're not into guns fully. So, uh, but imagine how big of a bitch you would be to be so afraid that somebody has some data. About you. Oh, I won't go on Facebook because they trace my data. So you're scared of a site. Imagine what it would be like taking this dude to a haunted cemetery. He wouldn't be able to go through the gates. You know, what kind of a pussy is afraid to have his dad a soul? You ever heard this take? Man up. It's data. It's not like somebody's killing your kid. You know what I'm afraid of? Ghosts and demon. <laughs> Which is the plural for demons. The right way to say it. Demon. I'm afraid of demon. <laughs> uh, that's real fear. You know, not, oh my God. They're going to know what t-shirt I want to buy. Oh my God, what will I do? They buy the shirt. You know what I do on Instagram when they target add me? I buy the stuff. This is what I say to them all the time on Instagram. I'm on Instagram and it's a tar Oh, another targeted ad. I hate and this. I think they do that uh, with everything. Shut I think the fuck up. You're interrupting. This is what I do when I see a targeted ad. I'll buy. I buy every product they show me. You know how many phone mounts I have? <laughs> Useless plastic foam mounts that don't work in my uh, events. You know how many t-shirts I have that are exactly the same as a t-shirt Big Mike has yes, by accident? Yes, millions. <laughs> so stop being so afraid of dad, my dad. You're supposed to be a man, not a bitch. I think they do that what with What it cops. takes. I think if you're, and I have cousins who are police officers and in law enforcement. Ooh. I think if you go and take. Oh, can I frame them for black M? murder everybody who's in law enforcement i frame for murder and everybody that's black i say the cops are coming and he has a gun i said this to a guy the other day some guy was talking shit about me i go say another word i'll call the police i'll say you have a gun okay i'm white you're black and then i spit on him is that right could you get canceled for that probably the police ex psychological exam and you come off as too nice maybe they don't want you yeah maybe right who when you join the military no, no, no. Do... hot take alert someone says it is actually a hot take it's way more advanced than any take you've ever heard on uh one of these shitty shows so i hope you were serious thank you Let's hear the rest of this. Wait till you see size on Z's trying to be friends with these two. Psychological exams. Maybe they take the craziest of crazies and put them in a certain program. I mean, I think data is everything. And I think they probably know who's going to leak stuff and who's not going to leak stuff. 
Hey, hey caller, what's the name of your channel again? Let's uh, let's get it go. out there. Here we go. Sands Entertainment. Size on Sand, Sands Entertainment. Time. Okay. Listen yeah. to this. I have a hard time knowing whether or not Sam and Brian like like me or hate me. I <gasps> I have a hard time. I don't want to make fun of the guy. He's calling in. I have a hard time. Do Brian and Sam like me? Do they not like me? Listen to this, man. But then here's why we're playing this. Sam has fully backed down to this red bar stuff. I go, I thought we were doing a celebrity fight. I thought I'm a pedophile. Discovery was on the way. Remember? Remember when Sam threatened me with discovery? Well, he's packed away those threats into a little box that are going with his kids and the wife. Because listen to this. For time knowing whether or not Sam and Brian like like me or hate me. I don't know. What so, do you do? Why, well, yeah. How do they know you? They don't even know you right now. Uh, Sam's on the phone with him right now. And he doesn't even know him. <laughs> he knows me. I can't call into these shows and start saying my channel name. What do you do? Uh, why, why, yeah. How do they Listen know you? This. Uh, <laughs> how do you know this? This is awkward. Um, I do videos about the guys. Like if Brian says something. This is awkward. I do videos about the guys. <laughs> why is it awkward? Is it awkward that I do videos about the guys? I hope not. I hope nothing I'm doing is awkward. Oh, I see why it would be awkward. Because you're trying to befriend the people you make hate videos about. Interesting concept. I've tried that too. It works. Or it does something. I covered the whole Sam Tripoli versus Red Bar thing. And sure. then I destroyed Red Bar. Somebody lit up when they heard Red Bar. You, Look at this. Watch. He was like this. And wait till, you see, wait till you see his face when he hears the word red bar. The whole Sam Tripoli versus red bar thing. And sure. then I destroyed red bar. Red bar? <laughs> wait, red bar? Wait, what? Red bar? Yes, red bar! bar. Oh, but, well, I mean, maybe he's not aware of you. Um, well, I mean, there's a lot of videos out no, there. You're supposed to say, Sam, you should chime in right now. He's a pedophile discovery. No one talks about my kid. But instead, we're going to hear this. This is what Sam has to say after hearing the word red bar, the scariest word in the comedic world. Oh, well, I mean, maybe he's not aware of you. Um, well, I mean, there's a lot of videos out there, and it's just hard to dissect everything and digest everything. Listen, dude, you know what my sure. opinion is? This is my opinion. No, I know what your opinion is. Fight in a celebrity match. I'm a pedophile, and no one talks about your kids. That was your opinion last week. Are you, you know, backing down? When my opinions change, I let everyone know. Guys, I got to change. Because it's not fair to tell you a bunch of crap and then change it on you without letting you know how I got to the change. These types of guys, they change their opinions based on what works for them. And they don't include you in that evolution ever, do they? Because you're not necessarily very important to them. So let's see what Sam's opinion on Red Bar today is. Last week it was fighting, pedophile, and discovery. discovery. This week it's... Affect everything and digest everything. Listen, dude, you know what my sure. opinion is? This is my opinion. And I, I, I'll check out your your uh, videos for you gotta sure. push this down. My whole thing is this. I uh, love everybody. Oh, and yeah. I, ho I, I, I hope oh. you're... Your, your channel blows up and you make money and you live a very happy life. You want me to make money. Okay, no problem. And <laughs> you don't want any of those things from me. And I'll tell you something, Sam. Boy, have your opinions changed. How quickly have they changed? I wonder... Was it the song? Was it the song? Was it I'm Unstoppable? Was it the seven <laughs> different people who made a clip of my song about your kids? It was a hit song. Will your kids live do, 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 when I bury them in cemeteries? Can they breathe underground? Wasn't that a lyric? <laughs> Can they breathe through packed dirt and soil and bugs? <laughs> They won't be around.
to ever see a town because they're grounded, literally. <laughs> Let's hear his change. He loves everyone. If you know, and that's really all I yeah. care about. And anything else oh, is yeah. just wait, like- Oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. Ch -ch 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 changes Don't tell them to go up on the yeah, of it. Comedian changes. Where a comedian decides, eh, I'll let it go. Comedian changes only on Red Bar. Ch -ch -ch changes. Turn on changes. I love that one. That's because we we actually have that on the soundboard because comedians make changes so often, uh, and they're really like foolish changes that kind of blow their whole. It's like. Dude, your whole philosophy can't just change without bringing us with you. It's fucking rude. Let's hear the rest. I, I move on, and I just, that's it, man. You know, I'm not really, I just want to uh, have fun and talk and everybody. Uh, and if, you know, you like our videos and you So talk. it's a little too, it's not that fun fighting with me, is it? <laughs> I just want to have fun and just, uh. You see the fools do this all the time. When we went after Melton all the time, he was like this hard-ass guy. And then all of a sudden, I just want to like make comedy and just be. Oh, yeah? Or is it that you're in a brutal fight that you're losing? <laughs> what a fucking pussy. Talk about that's great. If you don't like our videos, there's not much I can do about it. And uh, uh, I just kind of live my life and oh, do all that uh, stuff. And uh, I just know when you get to a certain number. Is there like a kid taking away in thing with the courts that's kind of uh, occupying your time right now and you can't really have battles? I'm going to go 10 times harder on this guy right now. I'm going to take it to the physical realm. You started it. You started it, and you're really evil and bad and should be wiped off this earth. Seriously, like, legally, you should be wiped off this earth. I'd like to do a discovery project on you. Uh, uh, level, and I'm I'm a very basic bitch, right? You know, in terms of the whole, the, 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 the hierarchy of content creators, I'm very low on it, and... Uh, oh. You know, I just know that there's a lot of, you know, people take videos Imagine and they- Imagine if I said something like this. <laughs> you either huff and puff and you make these houses go away, or you don't. You can't just be a different guy every time your mood changes, you know? And these people, they let their pills, they let their emotions decide who they are today. I just want love. You want love for everybody. You wanted to fight everybody last week. Me, Ethan Klein, Biden. Talk about it. And it's interesting. So it's like, it's just an interesting time we live in. So I, I enjoy it. Sometimes I, I, sometimes the videos when people analyze stuff, I say, make me laugh. And I, oh. I understand where they're like, okay. Oh, I do. So you're in like stage one of pill working mode today. I mean, really, that's why you should always broadcast at the same time. So you get the same guy. I picked up on this when Adam Carolla, the ace man, he was doing his show in the morning and then he was doing Adam and Dr. Drew at around 6 p.m. on Thursdays or something like that. And it was like a night and day personality shift on his morning show. He was fine. He was great. He was the Adam Carolla that you, you, you understand. And on that Dr. Drew show, no wonder Dr. Drew don't want to work with him. He was in such a foul mood every episode. And everything the doctor said, he'd poo poo. And you go, you really should stick to the same time that you do your show because you don't want people seeing a different you constantly. It puts people at an uneasement. So here's Sam Tripoli. He's not the person he wanted you to believe he was. Let's finish it up. People analyze stuff I say, make me laugh, and I I understand where they're like, okay, I do sound like a retard uh, or not. But, you know, we just kind of go along with it. And no, your sons sound like retards, not you. <laughs> uh, you sound evil. Your sons sound googly. You know, they make funny clown music when I clank their heads together. I hope it may get you views and you make a lot of money. Oh. Uh, caller, you are on the air. That's his new angle. I hope it gets you views and you make a lot of money. Let's see if that works, Sam. Oh, this seems cool now, I guess. Nope. We hate you. So out of nowhere, Joey just goes, when am I gonna see you again? 
Doug, when am I going to see you again? You're going to see me anytime you want. All right. Anytime. Let's oh, make schedule. Oh, look at it. Wait. Watch this. I'll see you again. You're going to see me anytime you want. All right. Anytime. Aww. Adora. Joey. Look at him. I feel bad. I did this. I started this whole COVID thing, too. I just want a comedy to end. I feel bad. It got out of control. <laughs> I went to Japan. I got a vial <laughs> of the good stuff. You made a wish. I made a wish. I regret that wish. Look what it's doing to people. It's tearing them apart. Okay, wait. This gets better. Let's make scheduled times when we see each other. You're going to do a comedy club down in a podcast? Most like. <laughs> Listen to this. You're going to do a comedy club out there in a podcast? Well, yeah, I'm kind of, I don't know if you remember the Spotify thing, so yes, I'm Probably doing, doing a, a podcast. But listen to this one, so Joe Rogan wouldn't have told us this, but Joey Diaz goes, you're going to do a comedy club out there on a podcast? Watch this. Let's make scheduled times when we see each other. You're going to do a comedy club down on a podcast? Most likely, I'm definitely going to do a podcast. Most <laughs> yeah. likely, I'm going to do a comedy club there, too. <laughs> Most likely, I'm going to do a comedy club there, too. Woo! Uh, should I get into it now, or should I? Is there another sure, mention of it? The, because it's I, it's a, he talks about it again in the Tim Dillon part. But. Oh, okay. Well, let's uh, let's hear a little bit more. Be fun for all of us. What are you yeah. going to do? Daniel you're going to have Lewis. your first winner, and you're going to be like, "Why the fuck am I here?" Exactly. <laughs> so this is Daniel Day Lewis explaining to this guy. Change the subject. So Red Band goes, and Joey, what are you going to do? You're going to have your first winner there, and it's going to suck. And Joe's like, Daniel Day Lewis, ha 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 ha. He doesn't want to talk about any of this stuff, which is weird. So you got Joey Diaz moving back to New Jersey. Joe Rogan opening up a comedy club. And also, should I get into the comedy club stuff here? Sure. I think I should. Um, here's what's weird. The comedy store is what they're all trying to recreate. So COVID comes around. The comedy store, for those you don't know, has been around since the uh, 70s, right? And it's had everybody. I mean, it's the world famous comedy store for a reason. And it's on the world famous Sunset Strip. You've seen this street in TV. And it's also in the world famous Los Angeles, California. Uh, the most famous city in the world outside of New York City. I would say New York and L.A. are probably two of the most famous cities in the fucking world. Now, um, Los Angeles is the second largest city in the United States. Los Angeles is huge. I mean, people are coming from all over the world to Los Angeles every day of the week to see the sites, to see the celebs. And in turn, they fill up Sunset Strip's comedy store, which has been fucking booming, nigga. Sorry about that. For, hold on, the last four years, ever since these podcasts started mentioning the Comedy Store, people from around the world, they've made this their travel destination. <laughs> Not to mention, there are people from all over the world coming to L.A. every day. So the Comedy Store for the last four years has been Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, from 8 p.m. or whatever till 2 a.m. sold out. Packed. Because... Not only did you have every famous comedian in the world going up there, you know, you go up there and for 20 bucks or whatever, you get to see 15 comics throughout the night and they'll be big names. OK, so Joe Rogan will be there. Chris D'Elia was there and uh, Poppins, Dave Chappelle, all these people. So it was a very famous joint. And it's in the I, I, I mean, it's it's five minutes from Hollywood Boulevard. All right. This is where the tourists are. You don't go to L.A. as a tourist without seeing the comedy store. It's like coming to Chicago. You're going to see the Sears Tower and the Hancock building. When you're in L.A., you're going to see the comedy store. It's right there in the tourist trap. So it's sold out every night. Joe Rogan seems to think this could be recreated in Austin, Texas. Let me tell you something about Austin, Texas. I live in Chicago and it's a much bigger city than Austin, Texas, wouldn't you say? And I ran a very successful comedy club for about a year here in Chicago before some complications came about. But not my fault, by the way. I ran a very successful comedy club. And in at the time, uh, this city had only two mainstream comedy clubs. Okay. 
And those two mainstream comedy clubs in all of Chicago, how many people are here? Six million people. Those two clubs in Chicago were only able to sell out on the weekends. Think about this. Big city of Chicago. You've only got two comedy clubs and you could only sell them out on the weekend. On Tuesdays, it's closed. On Wednesdays, it's closed. Thursdays, it's closed. You know why? No one is here to go to them. We all have to work in the morning. So when we opened our comedy club, we worked our asses off to fill the 200 seats. And it was a struggle every week to fill those 200 seats every single Friday and Saturday. And there were only two other comedy clubs in town. Um, And uh, the comedy clubs are all poor. You can't make a living running these comedy clubs because in order to have a, a business in downtown Chicago and pay that enormous amount of rent, you need to be open every day of the week. You can't just be open Saturday and Sunday and Friday. Now, someone in the chat says, the thing is, Joe has so much money, he can run it there at a go. loss forever and be fine, but it's going to suck. Hold on. There you go. So, listen to this. Joe Rogan is assuming he's going to open up Comedy Store 2 in Austin. Well, first of all, you need the comics. You need the comics. There's no comics in Austin. So is Joe Rogan going to get everyone from L.A. to move to Austin to to do these shows? Is he going to fly people out every week to do these shows? And where's the crowd come from? If Chicago can't fill a comedy club on a Tuesday, Austin, Texas can't fill a comedy club on a Tuesday, especially during COVID. So Joe Rogan has this dream that he's opening up this comedy store uh, in uh, Austin. It will work. He has the money. But will it be good? What is he going to do? Just have this fucking dying like, isn't business the eating that the comedy store is so great and they love it so much is because it's an iconic venue. Yeah. Isn't and again, you have like the comics Joe there. Rogan's so Texas Joe Rogan is going to soon realize like you can only people aren't going to keep coming to see the same three guys. It's an extremely uh, difficult process to get all these people in. And um, so here's the thing. Fine. He's got enough money to run it or whatever he thinks is going to happen. But. What about the other two comedy clubs in Austin that are struggling to fill their venues right now? Joe Rogan, this comedy savior, is coming in to Austin, Texas, opening up a club. He's going to wipe those two other clubs out of business. In fact, Jules, why don't you send one over to me, one of the clubs? Let's call them. Let's see how they feel about Joe Rogan moving in, and they're going to wipe out his business. Who's going to go to Cap City Comedy Club? When you could go to Joe Rogan's comedy club. You're only in Austin. There are only so many people. Again, on Chicago, on a Tuesday night, there are no people. And we have six million. There are not enough people to fill these seats. So the other two comedy clubs, Joe Rogan is going to push out of business. I guarantee you this. And we're going to call them right now and see how they feel about that in a segment called Bothering These Clubs. How exciting. How exciting. Let's get to the bottom of this. So we're going to call one right now. This is the big one. I think is this is what they call Cap City Comedy Club, the Capital City Comedy Club. Now, it could be, oh, it's 517. Let's see if they're open for business here today. They might, none of these clubs might be open, but we're going to try. Okay. Um, and don't call them before me. Uh, here we are. Let's see if I can beat them to it. Here we are. Calling a comedy club. Thank you for calling Capital City Comedy Club in Austin, Texas. Our box office is currently closed. Please feel free to email us at info at capcitycomedy.com, and one of our managers will get back to you within 24 hours. Wow. Thank you so much for supporting live comedy in Austin, Texas, and stay safe. Anytime. That mailbox is full. Wow. Hi. Wow. Mailbox full for, uh, and they're going to complain. Oh, we don't have any money. All right. We're going to call another one here. Don't worry. We've got, they only have three comedy clubs. So this is what I mean. Obviously they don't do enough business to fill these clubs. That's why there's only three and they only fit 150 or 200 people. So this is really going to be, um, a calamity here. He doesn't understand what he's doing. All right. We're calling another one. 
And believe me, they're not going to be. Hi, Esther's Follies, 525 East 6th Street, the corner of 6th and Red River. Due to the stay-at-home edict in Austin, Esther's will remain closed through April and wow. hopefully reopen for shows when we are allowed. For future reservations, our show times are Thursday at 8, Friday and Saturday. Okay, we're going to call another one. And this is a theater. What is this? Uh the Velveeta Room. Is this the Velveeta Room? Oh, no, I didn't see that one. Okay, uh, yeah, the Velveeta Room. Interesting. Again, there's only one famous comedy club in that whole city that shows you right there that this isn't the city to do comedy in. Most cities aren't the city. You can only have one club, and they're only open Thank on a week. Thank you for calling the Velveeta Room also known as the Veld, located in downtown Austin, Texas, at the corner of Red River and East 6th Street. First things first, folks, we do not have a box office. No one will ever pick up this phone. So let me answer all the common questions and then... Amazing. Imagine owning a business that you can't get in touch with anymore, and then you're going to complain to the state that you need a handout. You're not even trying. Where is this comedy club owner during the shutdown is he working does he have a second job or is he just chilling see i think people are chilling man they're not even trying to earn a living during their shutdowns thank you for calling cold town theater austin's home for the best improv sketch and stand-up comedy hmm. we are excited to offer your favorite cold town content seven nights a week from a safe distance on twitch oh check out twitch.tv Forward slide. Sorry, we're watching Dr. Demento on Twitch, not you. <laughs> Nobody is going to that. Uh, and here's our last one. Unfortunately, I knew this wasn't going to work, but we figured we'd try. You get the point. I mean, Damn they're gonna, it. Uh, Wanted to see what they would say. How about you? Maybe. You've reached the Hideout Theater, Austin's downtown home for improvisational theater and comedy. For this week's show schedule, press 1. To speak with someone at the Hideout Coffee House, press 2. For in Ooh. Coffee house. See, that's a smart business. You have a coffee house that runs all week. That's how you can make your income. You don't just open on the Friday and Saturday. It's coffee, coffee, coffee. It's 521. They... Of him. Nothing. Do you get the mayor's phone number of Austin? We got nothing. You should just call the regular comedy store and ask them if they're pissed about Joe Rogan. Yeah, well, give me the number. Yeah, yeah let's try that. If they're even open, you know, nobody, this is the thing. It's like, have your phones forwarded. You you can't just, you're shutting yourself down by not trying. Like, why can't this be forwarded to the guy who usually answers the phone and he just, it forwards to his cell phone during the day and he could at least speak to people. I got to talk about the Imagine video that uh, all the comics feel brave enough to make fun of. I said it earlier here today, uh, you know, They've got to wait for approval, you know, from the rest of the country before they make fun of people. You know, when, when we make fun of them, it's harassment. When they make fun of an approved celebrity, it's ha ha, these guys are the best. And that's what happened. You had the Imagine video come out. Surely you've seen it. Do we have to play it? The Imagine video? I think everyone's seen I'm it. I'm giving the Imagine people a pass here. No, I, of course, the Imagine video was terrible it started out with uh gal get it who i that to me is the the worst one of the bunch gal get she's done one thing wonder woman that's it a and they they present her to us as if she's an actress who's been with us throughout this whole life of ours as if she's brad pitt she's been here the whole time you haven't you were in wonder woman the movie was terrible you played a fictitious superhero it was just wrapped up in the girl power movement there and now you're this icon you're not my icon you're not a you're not in a leadership role of actresses you're a b uh list celebrity in my opinion you haven't done enough work to to, to gain our respect yet so they do imagine i guess send over imagine we'll play imagine it's all in the note don't worry oh good um the fourth one down the fourth one up one
down one. Oh, Perfect. oh, this is so good. Here's the original Imagine. Everyone saw Imagine. I got nothing to say about Imagine. Of course, Imagine was bad. If you want to hear, um, uh, if you want to hear, uh, what would they call that? Where they talk about commentary about Imagine, just turn on any show out there or anyone's Twitter. And I knew you could always feel one when they come out. You go, oh, this is going to be one that the whole world makes fun of. Uh, in the same style, I make fun of them, but this one will be okay. Here it is, Gal Gadot. Hey guys, you're gonna see it one more Day time. I have an I have a point here. In uh, self quarantine, and I gotta say that Cheers, um, these past few days uh, got me feeling a bit philosophical. Oof, here it comes, and you've seen Imagine this. Imagine there's no heaven. Easy if you try. Christ, Here we go. Now it's no hell below us. Above us only sky. A black man. Imagine all the people living for today. I love that they got the Silverman <laughs> in there. You know, the one person in this video who probably can't deal with any of the, the criticism right now is Silverman. Of course she does. What were you thinking, Silverman? Don't you have enough whereabouts where you go, I get hassled every day online. They're going to hate this. You know, she you don't, you don't know. have enough. Silverman don't you think know. think by now she would get what people hate, what people like? By the way, uh, I don't call her Sarah K. Silverman anymore. I call her Howard K. Stern. <laughs> I don't know why. So here, everyone's seen this. You we know, get I got, it. Uh, you don't have to play uh, the whole thing. So there's Sarah Silverman and all the people, and uh, this was uh, mocked by everyone. Again, all the comedians that claim uh, we harass them, all the comedians that have hit block and told us, oh, wow, you're just going to talk about people more successful than you. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Oh, yeah. I remember I was uh, mocking, uh, there was this woman actress the other day on Instagram posting, uh, you know, uh, on set photos of her as a cop in her Ooh. little NBC drama about her being a cop. I go, so silly, dressing up as a police officer. <laughs> so goofy. And she said that to me. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So, uh, yeah, everybody's mocking this. It's A-OK -okay to mock and to parody. You don't want to be caught... Uh, first of all, I, I would say you don't even want to be caught mocking this. It's too easy. It's so predictable. It's nice. It's nice. At least they think this way. But this is the way I think of you, Joe DeRosa. This is the way I think of you, Anthony Cumia. All you people who say, stop making fun of me. We'll show you um, some of the parodies that have been going around. And uh, what's worse then the Imagine video that everybody hated. Well, I would say the Imagine parodies might be equally as bad or worse. Compound Media got together. The East Coast comedians. This was spearheaded by uh, a red bar foolette. This is a female fool of ours named Chrissy Marr. She's, and you'll see her at the beginning of this video. She's Redheaded, she's got two layers of teeth. She's got a regular row of teeth, and then on top of it, another fucking row of teeth. Damn. And when she smiles, oy, when she smiles, the world frowns. Uh, she spearheaded this. She goes, you know what? We're going to do a parody of the Imagine video, but we're going to have all the East Coast comics sing, and you know what? We're going to make it about... We're going to do a joke about how the virus is from China. We're going to call it the, what do they call it? Kung Flu, yes. The Kung Flu, very original. Have you seen this going around? <laughs> the Kung Flu? How did they come up with it? Chop flu -y. I mean, this is not your own creation. This isn't your creative mind coming to work. This is everyone on Twitter said this. This is something that everybody has said. So when comedians who hold themselves to these very high standards, I mean, they call themselves artists, we should be uh, respecting them, never film their sets. 
don't uh, blow their punchlines. These are artistes. They are uh, much more in tune with what's going on than the civilians could ever be. They know funny. We're just here to watch them. Uh, let's see what the brilliant comedians of the East Coast put together. Many of you have seen this. This is Compound Media's take on Imagine. But they're going to do it. Flu. They're going to do it about the Kung Flu. And Chrissy Marr spearheaded this. Again, here she is, the beautiful red of really holding her <laughs> lip down to her. She's gone she like that because I've been making fun of her gums. Every time she opens her mouth, it's like Miley Cyrus or a, a physical horse. Uh, <laughs> and you see everything, and I've been making fun of it. So now she's going, everybody, she's, she makes sure she talks like this. Get your lips sewn. This is what people do. This is what professional people do. You get your lips sewn to your gums. So, and your talk, it sticks like this. We don't want to see the gums. I don't know if people I didn't know. I thought she notice. was using the horrible gums to distract people so she could pick your pocket. Like, yes, she steals. By the way, people who don't know this, she's a thief, a literal thief. She was bragging a few weeks ago about they went to a Christmas party. They had an office Christmas party for Compound Media, and they were butted up next to some other table, and there were all these gift bags there, presents. There was a bag on one of the tables. Right. And I, it was like, wait, wait, like a, 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 a shopping, shopping bag, bag, a, a, a shopping purse, bag. go on a shopping bag. And I'm looking at it. I'm watching a lot of people leave. I'm kind of lingering around. Everybody's getting you want to steal this bag. Well, I'm going, there's probably nice clothes in that bag. And I'm just like sort of hanging around. I'm standing around and uh, I was sitting next to, I was sitting next to Larry and he was like, just take it. I was like, I'm just going to take it. So I take, I took it and I walked out with it. <laughs> And she took them while the couples weren't looking Someone's and took them Christmas home. Presents. $400 worth of somebody else's Christmas presents she stole. She was bragging about it. I got $400 worth of free sweaters. We called her out. So if you're about to stick up for her, think of that this family's is a thief. Christmas. Full thief. She's evil. This is what they decided to do. I'll try to call out the comedian's names as I play it. It's going to be the same thing as Imagine, but... They're going to sing Everybody Was Kung Fu Fighting. Very clever. Very funny. Here we go. Everybody was Kung Fu Fighting. Those kids were fa Some black guy from Compound. No one knows him. Fast as lightning. In fact, it was a little bit frightening. All right. Louis J. Gomez. This is... I really can't have you being a gas digital subscriber any longer. I, this might be it. Lewis, why are you working with these people? Why do you do this? Yo, doggy, it's all fun. No, it's not cool anymore. Like, this might be the turning point here for this Lewis J. Gomez. Yeah. So uh, let's back that up. You got this black guy, no name black guy, Lewis J. Gomez. Here we go. In fact, it was a little bit frightening. <laughs> But they fought it with Joanne Nudzicki. There were funky Aaron China men from funky Chinatown. They were chopping them up. Oof. Jesus Christ. They don't have a limiter on this. That's eight times louder than the last one. I don't even know who this is. And they're chopping them down. It's an ancient Chinese Anthony Cumia. Art, and everybody knew their part. From a fainting Some a guy snip to a super Chinese kick. Everybody was coming. Some guy. Fighting. No one knows him. Those kicks were fast. No one knows her. In fact, it was a little bit frightening. <laughs> Gino Disconte. Look at the pixelation on that. I mean, really, this is. Uh, Minecraft has better graphics than this. I don't oh know what to God, call this. You can see is... square. It's really bizarre. <laughs> You're seeing it through a screen of a screen, but uh, this is pixelated to all hell, and it's got a blue filter over it. So he's using like the Snapchat blue you skin smoothing thing. You literally can't even tell what kind of animal he's holding. No. That's how he, bad yeah, the camera he, quality is. Yeah, this is. could be any small wooded animal from the zoo. <laughs> Very bizarre. Look at that. That's his webcam. So he's using like a a free tablet. He got it in a cereal box. Yeah, like he doesn't even have like a real computer. He's using like a tablet that came free with a rebate. <laughs> You know, you buy enough <laughs> printer ink, they give you a free tablet at Staples. 
Uh, but that looks awful. But somebody else redeemed the printer ink. He can't afford that either. And then they yeah, gave he doesn't have him a fucking the free tablet yeah. because they wanted to get so rid of it. So he's so poor. He's definitely getting c In fact, it was a little bit frightening. Why is it blue? But they did it with Some whore. Timing. I, I was talking about, I go, these East Coast comics, they're uh, as dirty and scummy as the West Coast comics are greedy and vain. Like, Perfect. you know how the West Coast <laughs> comics are all greedy and vain and they care about looks and stuff and vanity. These guys are, uh, the East Coast comics are just as much scumbags as the West Coast comics are vain. <laughs> yeah. Gross, dirty people of the night, bar people. They're open to getting chlamydia. They're, ST they're like the show Girls, where everyone's a big dump. Here we go. Billy Chin and Little Sammy Chong. He said, Here Bill comes Schultz. the big boss. Let's get it on. We took the bow by Oh, the this is uh, Stacy Prussman. <laughs> She's just a singer at a bar. Really, I mean, nobody knows who these people are. This isn't like a who's who. And, and you got to see what they're trying to do. They're trying to own it. Somebody's like, uh, I don't know who any of these people are. And Chrissy Meyer writes back. Precisely. That's the point. That's the point. Oh, the point is to put out a really cringe video. That makes with you all look pathetic and awful. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a troll. It's not funny. It's not cool. Uh, they're trying to own every criticism they get. People go, this is fucking just as cringe as imagine. And Chrissy Meyer will be like, that's the point. You're actually not smart enough to understand what we're doing. <laughs> Laying with the hands. A sudden motion made me skip. Who's now he? Went into a brand new trip. Everybody was Kung Flu fighting. I don't know who this is. Those kids were fast as a lion. Never heard of you. It was a little bit frightening. Now they're black eye, no one knows. But they <gasps> follow expert timing. Sam Tripoli. Now you're going, what is Sam Tripoli doing? Just anyone Chrissy knew is in this video. Why would Sam Tripoli be in this East Coast comic compound gas digital mashup? Mm. We love you so much, China, and we accept your apology. Namaste. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Toilet paper, a toilet paper uh, joke. Who's this guy? Lord help me. Oof. So you guys thought that was going to bring smiles to people? Joy? Uh, let's show some of these funny uh, interactions here. What do we got here? Let's see. Uh, the comedy genius behind the Kung Flu video will respond to anyone. This is says, Chrissy's boyfriend. Ron oh, Frank Pellegrino. Frank Pellegrino <laughs> is Chrissy's boyfriend. He was like the uh, executive producer of this Kung Flu <laughs> video. They say uh, some troll, some hater says, don't praise this video. It's as cringe as the original. Thank you. And Chrissy Mars' boyfriend, who put this video together. Listen to what he says. That's the point. Congrats and thanks for playing. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Whoa. That's not the point. Don't praise this. This is as cringe as the original. That's the point. What? Why would you want to put out something as cringe as the original? What? What point are you making, sir? The guy goes, No, it was supposed to be funny. It wasn't. He goes, I edited it. I know the intention. And the hater says, LOL, so the Kung Flu wasn't supposed to be funny? <laughs> and then he goes, I'm not going to explain how satire and parody work to you. Uh, if you don't find it fun, silly, or ironic, then I feel bad for you. Namaste. And I like how he went fun, silly, or ironic to avoid having exactly. to say funny. <laughs> yes, because it's not funny. Yes, you say fun if it's not funny. That's great. I'm not going to explain how satire and parody work to you. He so probably typed funny and then deleted the two Yeah, he had to back up. Realized. Well, not funny, but it is fun. <laughs> uh, then this guy writes, wait, so it's supposed to be funny? And no he response. says, no that response. The That's the end of that. Uh, let's see. We've got some more defending 
the video. Not everyone is smart enough. Let's see what this is. This is Chrissy this is Mar, just I believe. a light sampling. If you go to her Twitter and read all her yeah. replies, you can see much more. So somebody said, when comedians try to be ironic and just make another bad video. And Chrissy Mar is retweeting this. And Chrissy Mar says, not everyone is smart enough for satire, parody, etc. <laughs> This is how I talk is a joke when I say a cetera and put those slashes. Not everyone is smart enough for satire par No, no, no. We get it. We understand you're making the parody. It's bad. <laughs> it was terrible. We're just not smart enough. Uh, she let's must be see. even dumber than we think. I feel like yeah. I give people too much credit. When oh, we of first course. Meet you them. give everyone credit. And then they just surprise me with how simple their minds are. Look at this. Is this in response to something? or should Yeah, this I... is just in response to the situation. So everyone's making fun of this. And she goes, all art is a mirror. Whatever you see in it is actually a reflection of yourself. Okay. Somebody says, this is too heady for 90% of the fans you get from the podcast you go on. Oh, come on. I didn't and even And she goes, that. I'm trying to diversify. So she's trying to pretend like I made this really smart video. Now, is it smart? Is it a great parody? This is the best. This happened late last night. Someone else that we make fun of. Somebody else named Steven Crowder. So over in New York City, the compound media, gas digital, scumbag, dirty thief. Poor people comics all thought about Kung Flu, right? Let's do Kung Flu. Uh, but down in Dallas, Texas, you had a guy on Adderall who we hate named Steven Crowder coming up with the exact same premise for a joke showing how unbelievably hacked this is. Now, if I'm a comedian, I'm better than all these civilians. I'm smart. These people don't get parody. Eh. Should the whole country be making the same joke as me? I don't know. You would think a comedian would have a more unique take. Ladies and gentlemen, Steven Crowder making the same exact joke oh, 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 no. with a much more polished video. Oh, oh, no. It's Steven Crowder with everybody was Jumpsuit. Kung Flu oh, 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 fighting. Oh, 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 no. The parody music video. Oh, oh, no. Two fools. Different... Parts of the country. Everybody was wow. Like Let's have one. Welcome to Red Bar. Oh. They're so much funnier than us. Cheers. Wow. So isn't that nice? And this made the compound video so much better for me. I go, this is perfect. <laughs> How embarrassing. So Compound Media made a Steven Crowder tape. Cool. Very funny. Uh, yeah, if you don't get the point, this is as hack as it gets. Uh, but there were other people. Let's see. We've got uh, Shane Gillis. Even Shane Gillis. Chinatown's fucking nuts. It's crazy. Dude. It is full fucking China. Dude, it's yeah. fucking Chinese down there. Mr. China Man himself thought this was too cringe to get involved with. I don't know if Chrissy saw this. Chrissy actually tried to get Shane in that video. Unbeknownst to her, Shane says, We were going to make a parody of the Imagine video too, but midway through, we realized it was corny and funnier to just trick our friend into singing a full song and release his video only. Blah, blah, blah. So even Shane Gillis didn't want to participate. He found it to be too cringe and corny. Okay. So there it is. The comedians, they're willing to make fun of people as long as it's okay. And they're all doing the same thing. Very creative. All right, let's show you what Joey Coco Dia says. He has a slightly different take. His take is that no one should be filming. Oh, okay. That's it. So let's go to his podcast. And you know what? Joey looks great. We haven't checked in on my friend Joey since his Gargini threat. Let's go to four minutes in. His set looks amazing. 
He actually has a better set than most podcasters now. <laughs> Four minutes in. Oh, wow. It's just think? a clip. Yeah, it's just. Well, yeah, here you go. And uh, there's Joey. Uh, Joey looking great. I thought he had retired. So here's Joey. We're good friends now. Oh, I can't wait till his funeral day. Ooh, am I going to really be tacky with that one? With his funeral? All right, so here he is. Let's see what he has to say about our uh, uh, Tony Hinchcliffe. And, you know, again, the- he's talking, and this is very important. Joe, uh, Joey Diaz is talking. Ari Shafir is talking. Lewis is talking. All of Tony's friends are talking, except Tony. Tony has been silent this whole time. Joe Rogan, been silent. Why is it the responsibility of all your friends to do the heavy lifting for you? So what, Tony, you're going to wait a week to see what all they say and then what the the mob agrees with the most and then go that angle? You test in the waters? Disgusting. You should be out here. Tony, you should be out here defending free speech right now. Joe Rogan, you should be out here. But no, they leave it to these slobs movie people do is they erase the boring as fuck and all you see is this was a hell of a thrill ride this is wait we wanted to hear all this didn't we oh we're at 604 for some reason we gotta go to four minutes sorry i can't see a thing um here we go four minutes here's joey i mean i love tony i have nothing against tony this is going to blow over. This will be gone in six months. Six months? You know, you don't tell that to Tony. Yeah, this will be gone time. in six months. Six months? I've got work to do. Can the Corvette payments be uh, put on hold for six months? I don't think so. Six months? Nothing against Tony. This is going to blow over. This will be gone in six months. Thank God Ari released the video footage of what happened no. before. And no, what happened. that did not help. Thank God Ari released. Why? Why can so I a hear a couple the... of momos can uh, agree with it? Go ahead. Why can I hear the interior of his lungs? Uh, because he is a giant, fat, dying slob. This is the best he's looked in years, though. They <laughs> yeah. So somebody came over. They go, Joey, this looks like a mess. We got to get some lighting here, some camera work. They came over like what I'm going to do to Sven next week. Thank God Ari released the video footage of what happened before and what after. It doesn't sting that much. It doesn't hurt that much. It was You could just write it off to comedy cockiness. You know, I've had it. We've all gone through it. And that's it. But it's not enough to cancel somebody. I mean. That's uh, not up to you. You know, and this whole canceling thing, too, it's like it's just the people canceling them. That's it. It's not like a government agency. It's not the banks. And it's, it's not up to you to decide what's enough to get someone canceled. Exactly. If they're getting canceled, they're getting canceled. They're getting canceled. <laughs> and it's like you can't say he's not canceled when Antone's dropped him, his agents dropped him, and he's been taken off seven comedy shows this week. Joe Rogan dropped him from the show. So... He's being canceled by his own people. Sure, the Asians online could yell and scream, but why did Antones kick him off? Why did he get kicked off seven shows? Why did the Creek in the Cave kick him off? Why did Joe Rogan kick him off? Why did his managers leave? Those are the people you need to be mad at, not the human beings that are just saying, we hate him. All the human beings did is said, we hate him. They didn't even get to the boycott stage. People just asked Antones, one person, I mean, we were monitoring the whole thing. One person goes, hey, Antones, why are you uh, letting Tony go up? And they go, we are not. We are. So it's not. You you should only be mad at Tony's friends. You should only be mad at. You should be screaming at Antones if you hate cancel culture. Scream at Joe Rogan. But yes, he was canceled technically. So don't say he's not canceled. That's a cancel. All his stuff was canceled. Literally. His shows were canceled. His contract with the agency was canceled. His show with Joe Rogan was canceled. That's a canceling! He's not going to get canceled. That's it, but it's not enough to cancel somebody. It is. I mean... It happened. uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I have a problem with people putting phones in sacks. I would never 
in my life do that to you people. Oh, you, you know who does? He's saying phones in sacks. So at Joe Rogan's comedy show, when you go see Joe Rogan with his buddy Dave Chappelle, the B's, the T's, they make you, before you walk in the door, you have to put your cell phone in a locked bag that they lock up. Now, if you want to use your phone, that's fine. You have to leave the theater, go out into the street, and then they'll unlock your bag for you. You could use your phone, but then if you want to go back into that showroom, your phone's in a locked bag. Joe Rogan does this. God forbid somebody tapes Joe Rogan. You know, I find that to just be repulsive. You go to a concert, everybody's shaping it. It's part of what people want to do. You can't tell them no. Figure out a way around it. Come up with fresher material then if you don't want it burned. When we went to that Kanye release party thing and we had to put our phones in bags for that, Mm -hmm. it was like torture. Torture. I was thinking about the whole time. Yeah. And, um... You know, that's Kanye West, not Tony Hinchcliffe or Joe Rogan. That hadn't been released yet. Exactly. So I, guess I'm gonna, I mean, that's still, big money. Let us record this big moment for us. Um, so he's against putting phones in the bags. Well, that's funny. You should take it up with Rogan. But listen to this. It's going to get worse. And then I'll tell you how to get around putting your phone in a bag. I have a problem with people putting phones in sacks. I would never in my life do that to you people when you come to one of my shows i feel that you have children i feel that you have grandparents i feel feel you have families what if somebody needs you what if somebody i think you actually put the phone in a pouch and if you want to make a call or whatever i don't know the rules to everything with the phone in the pouch i know dave Chappelle does it a lot Joe Rogan. A lot of other comics are starting to do it. He won't say Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is the leader of the pouch thing. He started it. If I go on the road now, I'm going to start to do it. Oh, you just said, I would never make you put your phone in a pouch. But if I go on the road, I'm going to start doing it. This is their answer. Now they could say chinks without being canceled because the phone's in the pouch. Well, this is what we're doing. I am buying every listener of the show a fake phone. You'll give the fake phone to the pouch guy. They put it in the pouch. When you get to the showroom, you bust out your fucking real phone. Simple as that. You know, I said, it's like uh, jury duty. A smart person. They've always said this my whole life, and I always wondered what the answer was. I'd watch, like, radio shows and shows, and they would say stuff like this. They'd be like, jury duty? Smart people know how to get out of jury duty but they'd never tell you how because it was, like, incriminating. But, yeah, and I'm not going to tell you how either. It is incriminating. But if you're smart, you get out of jury duty, right? You don't end up there. And if you're smart, you get out of putting your phone in a bag. What about I don't have a phone with me? I left it at home. I I put it in my car because I knew about the sack. What are they going to say? Yes, you do? I mean, wear a spy watch. Wear spy glasses. Wear spy jewelry. We're taping you. That's for sure. Because I don't need somebody taking a fucking phone out when I'm doing a joke. Because listen, it's happening. We're it's taping like, it all. Did you ever see uh, a couple of years ago? They show you how they take reviews and change them. Listen to this terrible metaphor for what Tony did. So a movie comes out. Let's say me and Mike a movie review. Oh hey, and we write. the review of the movie and we write two sentences. The movie took us for a tremendous ride, but it was boring as fuck. (laughs) What the movie people do is they erase the boring as fuck. And all you see is this was a hell of a thrill ride. No, no, no. The movie people do this. Okay. So do the comedy people. How many times have we seen Josh Denny or Melton or even Tony? Oh, Tony is ama- the, the best comic I've ever seen. You know, uh, during this one hour thing with terrible comedians in the lineup, he was the best of the world. You guys do that. And furthermore, this metaphor doesn't work. <laughs> there was nothing cut out of the Tony tape that changes anything. 
You know, know. there was nothing left out of the full tape. We watched the full tape. It was the same. Tony wasn't set up. He said what he said. Now he's got to live up to those consequences. And all you see is this was a hell of a thrill ride. Do you follow what I'm saying to you now? So they take that back end off, and all you see is this film was a great ride. Okay. Now, how does this relate to Tony's incident? You're not going to see this film was boring as fuck. I wanted to shoot myself by the end. You're not going to read that. They eliminate that thing. That's why when Ari put that up, a couple of my friends watched it, and they all had the same result. They're like, it doesn't seem... Like, and don't get me wrong, you know, uh, the word that was used is offensive. Have I used it? I've used it, you know. Uh, maybe on stage, maybe in daily life or whatever as a joke. Oh. But there's no hatred Maybe here. in daily life <laughs> I've used it. Maybe? Maybe when crossing a guy on the street. I would love to see this in daily life. That's not comedy. That's not the stage. I've, have I ever used this word? Maybe. Maybe joking. Maybe in daily life. Maybe to a waiter or a waitress or someone of the phone or a tourist maybe that bumped into me. Does that mean it's wrong? No. Okay. Daily life or whatever as a joke. <laughs> but there's no hatred here. Well, you you, again, it's like, you do realize they don't care if you say it's a joke. How are you just learning this? You can't say chink is a joke. It's not one of their jokes. I, I disagree. I wish it could be a joke. Trust me. I wish all the Chinese people would die laughing. They hate it. I think for Tony, it was... I think if he would have gone up and said the filthy Puerto Rican, I don't think it would have been as bad because of everything that's going on. You hear that, Puerto Asian Rico? Hate. So I'm not mad at Tony. Why would you be? I just think it was a bad night. They're all saying that, too. I'm not mad at Tony. Why would you be mad at him? <laughs> Are you shiny? Why would you be mad at Tony? Nobody said you were. Nobody would think that. <laughs> it's very weird they're all saying that. So I'm not mad at Tony. I just think it was a bad night, and I wish people... You know, See, just... I disagree. I got, why is it a bad night? Has Tony said it's a bad night? Because Tony, if he didn't get in trouble for this, would say he killed that night. That it was legendary. The crowd was going nuts. Why was it a bad night? So these are your free speechers. When they get in trouble, oh, it was just a bad night. Uh, a bad night? But if you didn't get in trouble, you would have loved that night. Get over this. Um, you know, I'm very sorry. I'll apologize for Tony to oh, the Asian work. community. Oh, they'll love it. Yeah, the I don't Asian. Want... Again, I don't think you understand what's going on. Have you ever seen what the K-pop community does? Have you ever seen this stuff? The BTS fan? I mean, even if you say, I don't like BTS, you're fucked. This is the Chinese. They're sadistic. Sven is still suffering. Yes, I mean, they, I, they're really underestimating the <laughs> wrath of the Chinese you to think I'm bringing light to this in any way. What I'm trying to do is explain what happens when a comic goes on stage and what you could take from that and how, you know, it's a fucking comedy show. You know, we have the freedom of speech in this country. I, it, that's what the, makes this country special. I know when you go to other fucking countries and shit like that. There's things you can't talk about. And again, this isn't, nobody's against that freedom of, I mean, really, there's nothing, the government did not ban Tony. Your peers banned him. Antones, Creek in the Cave, Joe Rogan. Those are the people who banned Tony. That's it. He's not banned by Facebook. He's not banned by Twitter. Again, we always say this, they're always complaining about cancel culture. You know, and even Big Mike was complaining. And the first comment on Big Mike's tweet about cancel culture was, name me one person who was canceled for doing nothing. Who's been canceled in this country for jokes? Was Brian Callen canceled for jokes? Was Chris D'Elia canceled for jokes? Who? The only person was Shane Gillis, and he wasn't canceled. 
he was not allowed to be on NBC saying the word chink. Did you? Isn't that crazy? The government has nothing to do with it. We have free speech. The other people are using their free speech to say we don't like what Tony said. On stage, I think Hari told me like when he went to China and somewhere else, they limit your stuff. No, 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 no. This nah, is nah. the United nah, nah, nah. States of fucking America. You could say whatever they want. Let me tell you something else. Whatever they want. As a comic, if you come up to me and tell me not to say something, I'm going to go up there and say it. Fuck yeah. I'm going to go up there and say it. So That's why where don't the respect you? factor comes from. Again, these are the same people, though, that are all with their tail between their legs not saying those things daily. I mean, when's the last time you heard Joe Rogan or him or even Ari Shafir say something that would get them in trouble? You have this podcast. Say something. Say the words. You won't even say chink today. You'll say it on stage. Okay. Well, then we want the tape. So you won't say it if someone's taping you. So that shows fear. You're complying. Say it like I do. That's where I gain respect as a human being for myself and from my fellow comedians. But what I'm trying to say to you people is don't put too much of your mind into it because it's not even fucking worth it. It's just a joke. And I'm sure Tony's apologetic to the kid who he said it to, and he's apologetic he's to the Asian community. Oh, he it's is? It's a fucking joke, guys. Well, why is he apologetic if it's such a joke? You know, we're living in a time right now where it's rough. People are having a rough fucking time. But if you're going to give people that are trying to bring you entertainment a rough time for making a mistake, it's not going to work out somewhere. It's not going to work out somewhere. This could... This could have been with a band. Imagine, like, the youngest, stupidest Chinese girl watching this going, Entertainment and calling me chink? I did not know. <laughs> I mean, to them, that's, like, insane. <laughs> Wait, if we don't allow them to call us chinks, then there's no entertainment? They didn't. That's very foreign to them. Did you know Joey's selling an NFT? No, he is. Do we have any footage of that? I just have the... Joey Diaz got an NFT. Uh, Let's take a, a uh, little shmee Weak. break. Coco Diaz, a guy who keeps threatening me, he fled from L.A. because a maniac wanted to finger his daughter. I don't know why a guy this old even has a daughter. He's got like a two-year-old daughter. She seems to never age. She's always this young little girl. She's been this young little hologram girl for about 15 years. He's She's swapping her out. Well, I, something's going on. It's almost like that girl from the Umbrella Corporation from uh, Resident Evil who lurks the hallways. It's like Joey Diaz's real daughter got hit by a train in the 80s, and he's got like some holographic version of her or a ghost version of her that keeps coming back. But it's like Joey keeps aging. He's almost in his mid-70s, and he's still got this little daughter that he pretends that he's like sitting on a park bench watching her play in slow motion but then it like cuts and then you see the swing is empty but then it cuts again and then you see her running <laughs> with echo on her laugh if there's echo on your daughter's laugh she might be a remembrance or a ghost is there a green tint on every scene yeah of her? there's a green it's blurry whenever he sees his daughter <laughs> You know, it's a past memory. Okay. I want to show you, guess who g g got a new set finally? I've been seeing him. You know, we moved back to New Jersey. Okay, yeah, you guys know maybe who I'm talking about. It's him, the big monster. Joey Diaz is back. He's got a new set. And a new set of rules. Um, I can't believe they actually put this out. This is incredible. We have brand new tape here. It's Joey Diaz's new show. He starts it out, no joke, by going, I told you, cocksuckers, I got a bar. We're at the bar today. So I love this, man. Every fool thinks they're getting a bar in their house. Every fool. Oh, I'm going to have a bar. Oh, wait till I get this place. I'm going to have a bar. Oh, you got to come over to my house. I have a bar. 
and you get there, it's nothing like any bar you've ever gone to, okay? It's some shit fucking counter with a couple of bottles. That's not a bar. Joey Diaz goes, wait till you see this new place I got. I got a bar. I got the... Okay, you have a bookcase in front of a long counter. We're going to show you Joey Diaz's bar today in this new brand new show that he does and he's with uh who was he with he was with one of our friends here rich voss was it rich voss you bet he's in new jersey so let's see this uncle joey's new set this is ridiculous wait till you see this place and we start at four or does it start a little earlier okay yeah because he does his ad he does his little ad okay he's back remember he moved to new jersey he goes i'm gonna set up a beautiful podcast studio what is it is studio and the th- what he set up is absolutely worse than if I FaceTimed someone. <laughs> what yes. he set up comes through. Have you ever tried FaceTiming your grandma? She's got the iPhone 6. It was passed down from your mom to her. And it's not working at all. And even if it was, there's so much schmutz on the lens that it's just white glare and Three choppy motions of a human head in bright white. That's what it, it uh, what his show's like. And that's what you're going to see. Here he is. We're going to see his bar and his house in Jersey. And we're going to make fun of it. Here we go, folks. Greetings from Podcastville. Welcome to Uncle Joey's Joint. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's right. Wednesday, November 11th. All right, so you might be going, Mike, that audio. What's that, on-camera audio? No, no, no. Guys, on-camera audio, please. That's an insult to on-camera audio. This is on-camera audio. If a camera was on that camera, on another camera, in another room, on top of a bug that went into a bush. This is that audio. Somebody ran off with a microphone and fell down a vent, but they picked up something. That's what this sounds like. The microphone, the lavalier fell down the drain. Ah, rats. Hey, we're still getting something. Let's roll. So, yes, this is, and he put this together. This is his production. They're at the bar. Listen to this. Well, Joey's joint. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's Wednesday, November 11th. Thanks for coming well, to Red Bull. What happened to the fucking backdrop? What happened? We're at the bar, cocksucker. Remember the bar I talked to you about? Ah, uh, right. what? Whoa, it's funnier than I remember. We're at the bar. Remember the bar I told you about, cocksuckers? It's here. <laughs> Guys, it's a all nice I see is a pepper shaker and a mirror. <laughs> I could put up a big pepper shaker behind me. Like, get our pepper shaker. You put this behind you, that's a pepper shaker. <laughs> and then you put a mirror behind you, and you can be like, oh, I'm at a full bar. <laughs> I'm at a full bar. It's just, meanwhile, I'm holding a pepper shaker and a mirror. I don't know. The frame's cluttered. It's pepper sh- You see that pepper shaker? That could be a pillar for an old school bar. And then there's a mirror. That's got to be the, the bar. Remember that bar I told you about, cocksuckers? It's here. You doubted me. Oh, great. I, I mean, you got to hear this. You bad motherfuckers. It's Wednesday, November 11th. You're like, Joey, what happened to the fucking backdrop? What happened? We're at the bar, cocksucker. Remember the bar I talked to you about? And we're at the bar because we got a guest today. My main man, New Jersey's own, Mr. Rich uh, Voss. I love, oh. What's so not only are we in New Jersey with the likes of Joey Diaz and Rich Voss, but we're in this guy's idea of a home bar in Jersey. I mean, Jesus fuck. <laughs> like, imagine what this neighborhood looks like. There's no plant life anywhere. It's a bunch of siding. It looks like some crap hole from Philadelphia, a bunch of... All the houses, it's like a city, urban-looking environment, but all the buildings have white vinyl siding that's all dirty and broken, you know? Yes. And the place is a fucking ghost town sound-wise. You just hear the whistling of the wind (laughs) in this cruddy fucking street. Even if it's summer, this street is frigid. Not a comfortable temperature, and the wind is a bit much. What a fucking dump. Uh, so imagine being there and we're going to be there. We're transported now. Rich Voss, Joey Diaz, we're at the bar. Cheers. Uh, it's 
good to be here. What can I say? Mm. Wow. Two Jersey yeah. brothers. You were my mentor for a while. It's great to have you here. Your fucking house is... Okay, crazy. this is so strange. It cuts to a second camera angle to expose, oh no, we're not at a bar at all. We're in a child's guest bedroom. Yikes. This is n unlike any bar I've ever been to. You've got drywall painted crud mustard yellow. You've got a drywall ceiling that it might be six and a half feet tall. This is a low ceiling bottom floor sub basement type place you've got curtains that i guarantee if you went to tj maxx or marshall's okay or russell's you would find these in a pack with a red stick you had 60 stickers with the price on top of each other so high that they're like a stack of pancakes coming off of the bag because it's been marked down and put on clearance so many fucking times. Now they finally, three bucks. Here, you take it. Take it, please. So we got these picture frames again that look like, uh, you know, for one dollar, you get this somewhere at a junk pile. This is the bar. And then they have this conversation. This is Rich Voss in it. And he goes, welcome to my bar, cocksuck. And he's, this is such a m amazing bar. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And all we've seen are some books, a pepper mill, a mirror, and what I just described. And then you're going to hear this is the best bar in all of New Jersey. Watch this. New Jersey zone, Mr. Rich Voss. How's that for you, Cox Suckers? What's happening, it's, brother? This is, uh, this is crazy. It's good to be here. What can I say? Fuck. Two Jersey yeah. brothers. You were my mentor for a while. It's great to have you here. Your fucking house is like, I like my house. Though. So this sounds like when you spy on the plumber and you have a tape of him cheating yes, you out of money. Like or something. How did he even upload this? This sounds like, yeah, some hidden cam footage of when a construction worker was trying to, like, financially fuck you or something. Uh, this is the interview. Like, this is really what's happening here. I can't turn it up any louder. It'll start. Uh, it's not good for the for the world. Here. It's great to have you here. Your fucking house is your fucking like, house. I like my house. Over Listen to this. Your house is amazing. Down here where this bar is and shit. Your house is amazing. I like my house. But down here, you have this, your own area. So this is some wife bullshit from the old sitcom eras. My house is mostly my wife. I would kill. So you'd kill just to have this basement? That would be your dream? All this work, all the interviews, all the stand-up nights, all the the Tonight Show appearances and the podcasting, it all comes to I wish I had a room as nice as this shithole that I wouldn't even go in if I were looking for free money. I mean, come the fuck on. What's the point? I meant the for a while. Listen. It's great to have you here. Your fucking house is like, I like my house, everybody, but your house your is house. amazing. Down here where this bar is and shit, like, you could have your own apartment. Like, if, you if, could have your own apartment down here. Why is that something that you're Why would interested you want that? in? I can't wait to get married and then have my own apartment away from the person I married. <laughs> yes, that'll be the key life. Okay. So basically, you get married to someone, and then you realize you're both horrible. <laughs> and now you need your own apartment within the home. Interesting. That's cool. I would do anything to live <laughs> under the earth in my own space, no matter how big or small, as long as I was alone. Wow. Okay. I mean, I have it downstairs. <laughs> With a, with a guest room and all that but there's no escape like you got doors and shit to get I out I have no escape now I have a downstairs with like a guest room but nothing like this <laughs> nothing with an escape you have doors and windows all sorts of pathways I like how these like Jersey or Italian or whatever they're yeah. supposed to be guys are like they hate their wives so much yes. that they're also not tough enough to tell their wife to shut the fuck yeah, up and exactly. let them have a bar. 
I know. Like, <laughs> imagine <laughs> not being able to have a bar. Your wife should be thrilled. <laughs> but here's... If your wife doesn't allow you to have a bar, it means she knows you're so pathetic that this bar will be shit. It'll be worse than having a bar. Yeah. Like your wife probably wants, any wife wants a bar and a restaurant and a hotel and a spa. If in their you house. know the bar is going to be good, they're yes. going to be all for it. If the bar was like some of these bars that we go to, it would be great. But they know, no, 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 this bar is going to be disgusting. It's going to be this fucking wood The reason everywhere. these wives hate you guys yeah, so much is you, because they know how much They know you you're going to mess it if up and suck. If you were going to build an amazing bar, they would be all for What it. wife wouldn't want a full service restaurant and bar and grill in their house? So the fact that they won't allow it means because you'd screw it up. <laughs> if I had the opportunity have my own space like this <laughs> four walls of drywall a bookcase and a stool is all i'm asking for all right it doesn't even have to be a bar it has to just feel like a bar meaning something long it could be a two by four laying on the ground horizontally and if I have a stool in front of it, it feels bar-like. I just need a way. <laughs> this is insane. I mean, I have it downstairs <laughs> with, a, uh, with a guest room wait, and all that. But there's no escape. Like, you got doors and shit to get out. So, you know what I'm saying? So if I had this, I could have my own apartment within my house. Oh, oh my God. God. If I had this, I could have my own apartment within my house. And he's talking about this as if he's sitting down <laughs> with his financial advisor. And this is like a new step in his life that he's, you know, and thought he has about. And to convince why yeah. it's necessary. Now, I know this is a big change in my life, but I think a basement room, I, you know, I've considered the pros <laughs> and cons. And I do think a basement room would be beneficial to my happiness. All right? Not this won't be that expensive. <laughs> okay, it's like, dude, you should be able to build. If I want to build a basement, I can build three of them. I can build nine. If she doesn't want one of them, I can build ten. I can do what I want. <laughs> he does what he wants. He does what he wants. He does what he wants. Imagine if I had an orchestra here to back me on that one. Oh, that's one of my dreams. One of my dreams is to musically involve this show any chance I can. You could do what you want. So you don't run the show. Bonnie McFarlane runs the show at Rich Voss's house. And if you still listen to him, you're fucking through. You're a square. <laughs> Let's see what else happens. I mean, like my wife and I already have separate bedrooms, which is great. Uh, <laughs> oh, cool. Really oh, yeah. We have sex on my hand. You Separate you know, bedrooms, he admitted to. And here's Joey Diaz. You know, you might want to wipe the fucking uh, chicken grease off the lens before you start rolling. <laughs> if your favorite comedian's video is shot in a haze... No, no, no. It's not Seattle. It's not Silent Hill. It's not foggy out that day. It's they don't understand a clean lens from one covered in cough. Okay, they couldn't uh, decipher it. So here he is, blurry as shit. You can see there's a smudge shine. It looks like a heavenly light, but there's <laughs> something off. You ever seen that? Tana Mojo has uh, every one of her vlogs is like this. So here's Joey Diaz. I think this is a microphone over here pointing towards books. So let's see uh, what he says. I do. I give her a free CD as a parting gift. But I'm saying, if I had to set up, shit. If this is this is it. This is great. If I had this set up, this is it. This is it. Then he'd finally be happy. And Joey's like, damn, I didn't even know it was that good. But damn, yeah, this is pretty much it. If this is it, consider me dead. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if this is something you couldn't have. I could have a thousand of these as a joke. I could rent building an apartment and townhouse galore and set up one of these in every which room. <laughs> in every which room, I'd have so many to choose. I And you live... This is your whole career adds up to this fucking shithole. 
I can't wait to see this bar. Let's. He's going to talk more about the bar, and then we'll wrap it up. And uh, I'm sorry for wasting your time. You know, I'll call you tomorrow. I can. I do. I give her a free CD as a parting gift. But I'm saying, if I had to set up, shit. This is this is it. This is great. You this know, is I it. Wanted to come out of here first, but the lights, the electrician it's came. It was too much. Mike figured out we could do it with the phones. Because of the guests. That I wanted to do it with the lights and I wanted to make it nice, but then the electrician came out and it was too much money, so we decided to do it with the phones. This is Joey Diaz. What? Top com well, he's explaining, he goes, I love the studio. I this is out of because listen, we had a guy come out for the lights, we had an electrician, the prices were too high, we decided we'll do it with our phones. <laughs> and he thinks this is incredible. And he's about to say, he goes, people want uh, all this money to run a nice production. You can just do it on your phone. It comes out perfect. Well, listen to this. <laughs> but I'm Sounds this is crazy. Shit. This is, this is it. This is great. You know, I wanted to come out here first, but the lights, the electrician came. It was too much. Mike figured out we could do it with the phones. Because of the guests, I said, fuck it. Let's just bust out the bar today. And this is it. We improvised the bar, and there you have it. This is, it it's fucking perfect. This it's is perfect. This whole setup. Like, who'd you want I just got no booze. That's the only thing. I got... I, I got no booze. That, so it's not... It is a pepper Some shaker in a mirror. Bar, huh? Some bar. So it is a perfect bar. Now there is no booze. <laughs> oh. So it's just the bar of you. Hey, I want to go to the Joey bar. You mean his office? No, it's him sitting behind a bar, so it's technically a bar. Now, this is an office, sir. There are no drinks. It is an office. It is no is longer so a bar. It is an it. office with a counter. As long as there's a counter with counter yes. night stools, it fucking rocks. Yeah, to it rule, guys. yeah, these guys, it just has to, to make me remember a bar, and I will be happy. So you, they don't have this sweet ass man cave they have a room with objects set up to remind you of a bar like room <laughs> and that gives you just enough boost <laughs> to have that fun you don't need booze <laughs> you don't need booze no booze there's actually <laughs> nothing to tell me that if i showed you this fucking thumbnail you would go i don't know he's in a poor person's living room I don't know. He's at a poor person's guest bedroom. <laughs> nope. This is a sick bar. You idiot. Can't you see? I don't know, Mike. I guess bars are changing all the time. Maybe I'm behind. Maybe this is one of these hipster bars. You know, times are changing. This is perfect. This, whole this is perfect. They like, said. I just got no booze. That's the only thing. Oh, I no. got Heineken's in the refrigerator. I might have a fucking Stella now because, you know. It's one of those fucking days, but we're here, we're queer. Yeah, well, the loop is on there. I, listen, I'm not going to throw away my fucking sobriety. No. For fucking, if I'm going to get high, I'm going to smoke crack like a man. No. But uh, this is like, know, like this setup. I mean, really, I've seen found footage movies from 1992. <laughs> Shot homemade funny movies that were shot by a child that look better than this. I mean, this is so poorly done. And everybody likes it. They're like, this is bigger than a anything you could see on HBO. <laughs> this is bigger than HBO Latina. This is it. You know, we do our shitty podcast. We just have fucking a table, two mics, and, you know, we just fight. But this is how it's supposed to be done. No, so this? This is a... You got cameras, you got lights. We got iPhones. You got fucking... We got little microphones, you know. I mean, we got little microphones. Imagine listening to Listen you guys to in this audio being like, guys, this right here. This is. How is it's done. Their shit, they're like, Comedy Central wanted $300,000 to make a TV show. For what? We got <laughs> lights, we got iPhones, cameras, miniature microphones. You got it all. This is perfect. I mean, guys. I mean, if the audio sounds like this, you just can't post it. What Sam Hyde and Tim Heidecker couldn't come up with an obscure thing like this <laughs> and sell it. Seriously. Seriously.
and this is real, really happening. They're not saying that this sucks. They're they saying this is the best thing ever. Listen to this. Fucking a table, two mics, and you know we just fight. But this is how it's supposed to be done. See, you got a guy. You got cameras, you got lights. We got iPhones. You got fucking We got little iPhones. microphones, you know. I mean, it's crazy. the last couple of years in L.A., oh, you want to shoot a special, it costs you $300,000. Where do you fucking, fucking see that? Unless... In L.A., they want $300,000 to make your comedy special. I mean, where do you even see that? Come on. I he's didn't even basic- hear that before. Yes, listen to this. Come on. Guys, he's about to say... I'm not kidding. You think I was making that up? Listen to this <laughs> shit. Guys, this is really happening. And, uh, you know, these Kivas, I can't tell. Is it the Kiva? Is it this? Let's see. You got a guy. You got cameras. You got lights. We got iPhones. You got fucking. We got little microphones. You know, I mean, the last couple of years in LA, oh, you want to shoot a special? It'll cost you $300,000. Where do you. Oh, I want to shoot a special. It'll cost you $300,000. Where do you get the nerve? And then he's going to say that this is just as good. I mean, maybe just as good for me as far as me playing this clip is funnier than if I played your special. But that's as far as that goes. The last couple of years in L.A., oh, you want to shoot a special, it costs you $300,000. 300, Where do you fucking see Where that? Where do you see that? Unless you're a fucking Gabon. Oh, they don't buy it. Unless you spread it. And you know what? I just got so sick of all that shit. You ever listen to listen Richard Pryor albums? Yeah. You hear fucking miscues and yeah. people laughing. That's what I wanted to bring back to podcasting. Yes. It doesn't have to be fucking perfect. It doesn't all the time. have to be good. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, guys, you're this being too picky. This is enough. This is enough. Me in front of this, and half the bar. It's like one of the shelves is like a just a Manila folder duct taped to the sides. It's crooked. This bar fucking blows. I could kick it down with one huff. All right? I can't wait to blow his house down. I don't yeah. want to edit a podcast. Listen. If it comes out, it comes out. Fuck it. Take the heat. But if it that- comes out, it comes out. Fuck it. Take the heat. I agree with you. As a 47-year professional entertainer, I'm glad we're doing something so low. <laughs> if it doesn't even record, who cares? We're comedians. At least we attempted it. They're lucky that we even thought about maybe recording today. Who cares what it looks, sounds, feels, or is? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. It has to be something. Just, you know, these people, they really do. Like all of these guys, they like get popular by doing something worthy of people's attention. And then they just think, they're done and they could just kind of coast on popularity from their fans. Really? Thinking they don't have to do anything. Joey Diaz is at that stage. Brother, you should just be happy to see me alive and breathe. And they are. Because they're so poor, the people who watch Joey Diaz's show, they think this is the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> They've never seen wood sculpted before, even if it's cheap. They've never seen a book laying on its side. They've never seen a picture yes. frame outside of a store. That carved wood thing in the corner yeah. looks like a church in Milan. Yeah, like <laughs> when they see stuff like this, this shitty like part of the bookcase here, <laughs> they think that this is, yeah, that this is like if they went to Rome <laughs> and they were looking at the uh, Nine Gables room. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I refuse to study history. Uh, Let's see what he does next here at this terrible, flimsy-ass hellhole. That's what I wanted to do. Moving it here, I have a guest. Uh I can do sporting events with the TV. You know, I can do a bunch of options. We just weren't ready. Today we said, fuck it, the back room is too small for both of us. I opened up all the fucking windows. Now we can hear the... So where they were recording, he goes, fuck it. The back room is too small for both of us. So I said, fuck it. We'll record in front of the bar. So where he was recording before this was too small for two people. What kind of life is that? (laughs) That's like living a life inside of an elevator. Even an elevator is big enough for two people to talk. (laughs) So... 
this is what I'm saying. This is a giant downgrade. Why would you move to New Jersey? You're living like this in the crawl space. You know, I, I just don't understand. You might as well sit on the edge of your bed and make this show. It's a bigger space. The Mexican landscape, but because they always show up. They never show up when nothing's going on. The whole week it's quiet. All of a sudden, tape something. You got 20 fucking Mexicans outside. I got nothing against Mexicans, please. That's the last thing I need, you motherfuckers. Tweet. Joey was talking about Mexican landscape. I don't know what they are. Let's make believe I don't know what the fuck they are. But let's start this shit. You can't yeah. even hear him. You can't really. You have to really concentrate to hear that. Even though you can technically hear it, it is so... The opposite of how a vocal audio track should ever sound. It's almost impossible to understand what's happening here. They do this for an hour and 27 minutes. Let's jump ahead and just see what the hell they're saying. What did you want to do? My wife feels a separate. Can't hear. Can't hear. Oh, yeah, he's 92. So somebody has now turned on refrigeration units all <laughs> next to the microphones. Now this is what you hear. And faint talking as if somebody's from around the block. Listen to this. It's getting hot. He puts his gum <laughs> over the one microphone on the camera. He goes, <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Uh -huh. Sounds like a motherfucker put his gum over the tiny mic on the tiny phone. These motherfuckers don't be doing this. I've never seen anything like this in my existence. That's the creepiest holiday in the world. What? The Jews leave the door open for some Jew ghost to come in and eat. <laughs> 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 okay. that's, 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 that's not even Jewish. I have tapes of me from like 1989 that are more, the audio is like perfect. Yes. Your videos that you yeah. made in your bedroom when you were a little kid were flawless. Yes. Perfect I mean, sound. this is insane. Oh, come on, it's better than $300,000. Remember that? He said, this is perfect. This is amazing. <laughs> they can live in the Bronx. Did you ever say we were yeah. family business? They were Jewish. Yeah. Left the door open. He's like, Grandma, we live in the Bronx. Close the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> they realized they recorded this entire podcast with no mics, so they went to a science lab and saw if they re had recorded the vibrations from this area of the Earth <laughs> to monitor for earthquake. And then they're like, we can piece together some rough audio based on what you said and throw that in there and he's like as long as it's a general rumble that would be fine this sounds i've heard ghost noises caught on tape that are more legible yes. from ghost hunters yes. where they go did you hear that voice i go yeah this i i mean really this is a fishy tape all right, so there it is, Uncle Joey's Joint. This has 57,000 views. 57,000 really? people. Yes. And only 163 dislikes. 57,000 people. Look at this. 159,000 people. They love it. This and said it was amazing. They loved it. So look at this comment with well, 100 likes. Rich's voice is a little hard to hear. Uncle Joey's is fine, though. Just fine. Come on. Look at this. Finally, a negative comment. Sounds like when documentaries play FBI wiretaps. <laughs> Only thing missing is subtitles. At least 176 people woke up to that one. The audio sounds like it's from a 1970s porno. Really digging the new intro, Uncle Joey. We need a bar in Jersey called Uncle Joey's. Yeah, I would love to. I could emulate that bar for a few dollars. And if you made a video saying how shitty this audio was, all of these same people would downvote you and yes. pretend you were insane. Exactly, for you're crazy. Such a thing and jealous. But they loved it. This episode ruled. So funny, so fun. Felt like I was in a basement. <laughs> so great. Joey Diaz doing well. I can't wait. So we tune into his poorly taped funeral. I hope it's shot on those same cameras. Imagine the funeral.
with those VHS glitches as it goes from lowering the casket to his family crying. <laughs> ah, I can't wait. And can I attend his funeral without getting hate? <laughs> Something we were going to have to find out. When the first fool dies, I made a promise, no matter which fool dies first, and I'll only do this once, but I'll go to the first fool's funeral. He didn't go to Vern's funeral. He didn't count. He wasn't necessarily a fool. Uh, I don't know it. why you're calling him that. But like if Kumia dies, I show up to the funeral. I think you And have everyone to. goes, what is he doing here? What is he doing here? And I go, I'm paying my respects. <laughs> Let it go. Right? Perfect. And uh, I've practiced that. So I am going to attend no matter if it's Mountain, Danny. The best part about Red Bar is there's an 80% chance almost all of our fools will die while we're still here doing this whole Red Bar. And we haven't had a fool die yet. What happens when a fool dies? Does our content become tasteless about them? Do people tune in to us to see us celebrate do we celebrate the fool's death do we erase the content out of respect to them do we laugh do we cry do we realize that man life is short and maybe we shouldn't have made fun of them or do i show up to the funeral to do one last watch for the family for the family I must watch for the family. Okay, what do we got next, Jules? Bring it home. Um, we've I mean, got not bring it home. We're going to be here for hours. <laughs> These people are really dumb. <laughs> and it's 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 never it's you know just the the alpha fighter. That's mm -hmm. just one physical aspect oh. of the warrior. Mm -hmm. The warrior is the, the 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 biggest thing. I thought kids don't listen to this. Then why are you explaining things only a toddler would need to know? This is crazy, man. Let's skip ahead to the next one here. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, 120 zero, oh, zero. This, this speaks for itself. Here's where it gets really good. <laughs> so a lot of people have accused Mike, and I've accused him this, and I know it to be true. Mike is a salesman. He went from heroin addict to Logan Paul's friend within four years. He sold Logan on the beanbags. He sold him on the friendship. Whether Mike knows it or not, he's using the sales techniques of the manipulator to climb. And they work on stupid people, just like sales work on stupid people. Uh, that's the reason Brian Redman is in a Tesla right now. Okay. Uh, usually a good salesman can make a man buy something that he is not ready to take on. This is why Logan is best friends with Mike, a heroin addict, junkie robber, right? Uh, so Mike has been accused of clout chasing, even by Logan's brother, Jake, and Logan's family. This guy is just trying, and Mike swears, no, it's not true. Well, Mike is going to tell you that he has proof that it's not true, and this is coming up right now. I've never seen anything like this, so stop whatever you're doing and come with me. Come with me to 120. I'll take you into incredible world of fascination with Big Mike. I'll show you facts and some lies. Thank you. 120. Oh, oh, you're never going to hear a man speak about himself like this. Even Joey Diaz is rolling his baga baladingas at this one. Watch this. Did it again, Jeff. The other people that were on the team I won't mention at this time that were part of the team and everybody didn't yell much at you, but I probably did. But that's a, you, and, and, you did, you did. But but anyways, that was a Here comes. that was like as I started to transition into the team. But the one thing that was always there was the belief that I was doing all of this because I genuinely cared about you as a person, and that was the reason. And and there was never. There was always a uh, you always you you still to this day have this filter. Yeah, you know, what why is this person doing this? You knew early that I was that I was a mm -hmm. good person. Mm -hmm. You knew you just knew, and that's why I we still we it, it's this is not in the book. So I guess there are a couple of things. Talk about talk about the shrimp. The no, not the shrimp, uh, but sim similarly <laughs> the garage is. night where it ha the first time where it went yeah, down, yeah. The, one of the worst times yep. with the entire with everybody, and we don't have to name names or anything, but you 
stood up to your own family members in my defense. Wow. It's about to throw hands. About to throw hands in a, in a fight that almost went down. And and um, I've oh, I can say without question, without any thought whatsoever. Okay, now what do you think he's going to say? I can say without question, without any doubt whatsoever. What would you think he's going to say? Try to guess. Because you're not going to believe it. It's crazier than you would have guessed. Watch what he's going to say. I, without a doubt, without any question, no. Watch this. Without question, without any thought whatsoever, that I am a good person. Whoa! I know that. <laughs> I was raised a good person. Oh, my, my God. My mother hasn't put that in me. My grandmother, my father, everything about me. Not everything. Oh. I have some down, some pitfalls. Yes, but at do. heart, I am a good person. Oh. And Wait. that is why... I and that is why I said to, to your point. I know it's funny, but I knew that if I walked away from everything to, during a point that was not your b best or brightest, it was going to work out. Hmm. And I'm and I'm happy I did. And it was and, and it was too? and it was fucking horrible for a while. It was fucking tragic. Even with the um, do you hear even with that little noise in the background? That's like. Yeah. That's Logan running his toothpick Tooth across really? his teeth because he's yeah, so Yeah, because he's got a toothpick now. Yeah, he doesn't really like this. When can we go back to like promoting my big fight coming up? This is too much co-host stuff. Uh, so, yes, he is a good person. And you know how he knows this? Because I know deep in my heart that I'm good. Duh. Obviously, that proves it. Now he's going to talk about something else. Does this come up here where he tells about how he made Logan a steak taco and that proves he's a good person? Oh, maybe. We have that? I'll find it if not. Right, let's play a little bit more. This gets even wilder. The, the, the shrimp thing, like when Mike and I broke up for a week. <laughs> <laughs> my, my conclusion was, and sometimes it takes me a bit to come to these conclusions, um, is that I've, I've, I've never questioned Mike's intent. And, and we talk about this a little, Andre, just like, uh, and Gary Vaynerchuk actually told Bad me this guy, after Tokyo. Gary V. Intent does not always equal outcome. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes it doesn't absolutely. matter what your intent is. Toxilicious. It's execution. Right. Yeah. Wrong. In this specific uh, scenario with you, it does. Because, it, it, because I know, like, I know your intent is and always has been good. Yeah. And so it was, it yes, was good. For, a it was a good, um. I don't know. I guess I'm just saying, like, yes, I, I, you, you are a very good person. Yeah. You're wow. Very good person. And I wasn't always, but I think it's something that I, 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 I was always deep down. Yeah. But then I, I was able to push it away for so long, and now, and now I, I try to let it rule everything that I do. And so, bro, bro, I realized this about you Watch actually this. for the first time when we, I forget where we were. We were driving around the Yeti somewhere. And there was like a homeless man at a gas station, and you're like, yo, can, we, can you give this guy like twenty bucks? I don't have any cash on me. I was like, I was like, I don't have any cash on me either. But like, what about him? Like. Like is it the, yeah, whatever, yeah, and you're I, like, I, you, you go, I don't story. know. I just like, I don't know, like, I just like doing this. And bro, ever since then, I've seen you chasing down homeless men, throwing <laughs> your money at them, <laughs> like, like they're running from you now. Yeah, I know. Like, do yeah. you show up and take my oh, money? Good. Oh, oh, no. oh, good. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad that worked. You know, a manipulator con man, he works in that kind of stuff into his con. We're gonna hear another story here. Yeah, coming it's coming up. up later. Um, you know, uh, a manipulator con man knows that he has to do some freebies to prove to the guy he's conning that he's not conning him. I mean, any master manipulator would work that in. So we're going to hear a story. This is coming up right here. Yeah, it's in a little bit. Yeah. No, no, no. You have oh, to go to another time. What, what but time? next, Mike is going to tell his most Hollywood moment oh. at one thirty-five zero zero. Okay, but I want to do the one about the steak taco first. Okay, then go to 137.55. 137.55. This is how Mike proves that he's not just using Logan for fame. 137 what? 137.55. Okay, yeah. here we are. Listen to this story here. <laughs> Help on Amazon right fucking now. Amazon paperback, May 5th, a.k.a. today. Paperback and ebook. Yeah, what were you saying, Hustler? Are you hustling me? <laughs> is our friendship real? Or is this some sort of, like, is your tweet about chestnut checkers like, are you playing chess with me? There's a lot of people out there, a lot of influential people in your life, loved ones even, or old loves. Who would believe that? And who yes, would like to believe Because it's that? true. And not actually, you know what? Fuck that. There's none. There's really none now. Oh. But at one point, there were more. Yeah, for sure. Is that because you got rid of all of them? Yeah, I had them all <laughs> No, 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 no. Watch this. When I, when I joined this team. Team. When I first started offering those character notes. Yeah. There was never a, I was, 
there was never a, uh, yo, there's a future here for you, man. Here's a, here's some money. I paid my flights. I, I flew on my own dime. It's called a long con. It's called investing into your future. Listen, uh, before he tells the story, I'll probably say this again, but just being friends with Logan Paul is a gift to anybody. Okay, now in his head, he could go, no, I'm not like actively writing out a plan where I'm using you, but would you be friends with Logan Paul if he was just some guy you walked into your beanbag store? I mean, otherwise you'd probably befriend every person that came in and bought a beanbag. But no, you picked Logan Paul. The guy with the huge house with the backyard that looks like a resort. The guy that gets free stuff everywhere he goes. The guy where every Instagram model hangs out with him. The guy who's famous, uh, even if he's not paying you, even if he's not directly giving you anything, you've won. You've won the lottery just by being his friend. He knows that. So, yeah, you're going to be on your best behavior, whether you've planned it or you haven't. As a guy like Mike, you're seeing Logan and you go, hey, if we could share one laugh together, I could certainly share. It's like a, a woman. Yeah, maybe you're not a gold digger, but. You didn't marry that 80-year-old man for his looks. You didn't marry him because he's... You married him because he's rich. You're going to be taken care of. It. It's a, a huge motivator. But Big Mike is going to go out of his way and tell a story about the one time he did something for Logan without pay to prove that he's the real deal. Here we are. I came here. There was never a, yo, I'm going to tag you in this. You're going to have a channel. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. When it came time that I was offering so much value, especially post Tokyo, where someone said to me, this was a big moment for me. This was a big fucking moment for me. Yeah, right. When the, the whole world was in disorder and everything was, was falling to shit and the house of cards was falling around me, you said to me, I said, we were going over who the next leader of this organization was going to be on the business side. And I said, I don't fucking like him. I don't fucking like him. And I got pissed off. And you said, well, then why don't you fucking said, do it? Why don't you do it? <laughs> why don't you be the CEO? If you, if you know so well, you have corporate experience, you'd crush it. I said, I could have had it all right there. Could have been the head of this team, took on a percentage, could have fucking ran the team, been a massive part of the organization yeah, yeah. right there. And that was before we were even close at all. And I said, Logan, I'm not the person for that job, but Whoa. I will help you find that person. Whoa, you that got you did. And and when and when six months after that, he said, "Yo, it's time to get you on payroll." What do you want? I said, "You tell me what I want. You get throw. Let's let's Whoa. play with some figures. You tell me what you're comfortable with. Damn. And I and I'll do it. You must be the real deal. Those could be incredible chess moves. Or I you know, I guess at the end of the day, how do you ever how do you ever really know? I guess the the biggest answer to that is see. And a good con man works all of this into their con. Good con man doesn't get defensive about this. He works out this stuff and he goes, it could be a chess move. Yes, because it is. Even if you don't know what it is. Here, he's got another example. What do I do for you when there is no victory for, in it? Do you know what I'm saying? It's like last, so, so like here's last I, night is, my, is just one quick example of like, you came home stoned, you found an owl, and you said, <laughs> not to me, but you just said, Damn, I'm fucking hungry right now. Yeah, I just kind of said it. I'm, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I get something to eat. Now, I'm already a fucking leader on this team. I'm a part of the podcast. I got my night shift. I already fucking... You already gave it all to me. <laughs> no. There's no victory left. Yes, there is. And I got that frying pan out, and I dumped that steak in Holy there. fuck, you made me tacos. <laughs> you made, made me steak uh, tacos. It's what do you do for somebody when there's no victory? Uh, and that's... Oh, perfect. As if you didn't work that into the whole plan. <laughs> You yeah, just got course. your victory right now telling the story. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, you got to work in some freebies to show them it's not a complete con. Yeah, what kind of idiot would only do the con part? So um, you have that. And, of course, Logan, again, buys right into that. And this is what a salesman does. A salesman compliments you. He laughs at all your jokes. He didn't become friends with Logan just because you were cool. You probably laughed at every word that flew out of his mouth. You told him how great he was. Tokyo came around. Everyone else is wrong. Everyone hated Logan at the time, but you stuck by him. You knew what you were getting out of this. And believe me, the only reason Logan likes you is because you've propped him up so high. 
You know, he could fall to his death if he slips. So, uh, yeah, this doesn't prove anything. And, by the way, if I was being accused of this, I would just go, I don't know what to tell you. You know, let them believe whatever they want. That's what a real person does. They don't go out of their way to go, oh, yeah? Well, one time I made him steak tacos. Took no payment. Yeah, did it out of the goodness of my heart. <laughs> steak tacos. It was 26 minutes of cooking. Now, would someone trying to con their way into millions of dollars in a star-studded life do that? Yes. Have you not seen Entourage? <laughs> You're the Johnny Drama of this fucking house. Except Johnny Drama was nice. Johnny Drama was nicer. So, yeah, it's like you telling me all this makes it even more of a con. Like, you're, you don't even know you're doing this. This is the path of the drug addict. Joey Diaz did the same thing to Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan is Logan Paul in the situation with Joey Diaz where he just falls for it because Joey goes, you're the best, Joe Rogan. Oh, wow. Some guy who's cooler than me thinks I'm the best? Well, I love him. Here's some riches. Oh, I will never let you down, Joe Rogan. Thank you for the riches. I'm not using them for riches. Well, you are. You wouldn't be friends with him if he didn't have the riches. So, uh, I, I mean, that's what I think, at least. All right, uh, do we have some more codes here for the people? Um, if you want Big Mike to tell his Hollywood story, yeah, you can okay. go to 135 or you can go to the end. It's up to What's you. at the end? Just the ending. But what, well, what happens? Is it something Just good? like a little message from Big Mike to end it up. A little message, okay. But let's... if you wanted the other one, you, I would do that first before the end. Um, or you could just do that. Nah, I like the ending. What time is the 144 ending? 144 Oh, add one more four. We got a big problem. All right, 144, you say. All right, here we are. The big ending. Let's see Mike's final message today on the release of his book. His big book. That he's already started. You know, he already today released number one bestseller on Amazon. So which category is in this? Depressed drug addict book? Lie stories? Which number one is he in? Remember Kumia did this where he goes, I have the number one selling book in general broadcasting, a category that nobody has even known about. <laughs> so yeah, okay, number one book. Let's hear his final message. To you that I don't know if I've ever seen before. Like I... Everything you said was said with such conviction and truth. It was it was magical, man, and it oh, was God, really I'm glad beautiful. That worked. And I can see because I finally got to look you in the <laughs> yeah. eyes when you tell these stories. That's, oh that's yeah, good. I'm glad this all worked out exactly how I planned it. Yeah, like that's exactly what I wanted you to think at the end. Like, yeah, I'm perfect. See, man, Logan is easy. This rules. I am gonna have to write another book though because I'm worried about all this new stuff. Fuck. Big one. It's the subject matter, but it's also like. <laughs> I wasn't fighting at all. Like, it yeah. was like we were having a conversation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which was great. It was really great, yeah. man. So, uh, thank you. Yeah, guys, he said it, but uh, his book, The Fifth Vital, is now available on Amazon. I'm going to put the link in the description. And just excited for this week. We got a massive week ahead of us. Oh. Him Big fucking week. Him impulsive, baby. Fucking number one podcast in the world. Continue there. Keep rolling. Let's go. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Mac, Mac, also, hey, thank you, bro. Yeah, thanks, hey, Mac. Mike, crush it, bro. <laughs> thank Congratulations. You. Thank you, bro. Fuck, Mac. Hey, if you're watching this and you're sad, keep going. If you're having struggle, if you're stressed out, if you're if you're feeling like you're not going to make it, you don't know what to do with your life, you've no. been addicted, you've been stressed out, or whatever. Kill yourself. Keep pushing forward. No. Shit will start happening for it, and it won't stop. Unless you don't. beautiful. Bye. Uh, and I don't want to hide them. behind, you know, Joey Diaz says to the two, I'm helping people. I'm offering them a gift by telling them the stories of my crimes. What is this an offering? No, you're being paid. You donating those proceeds, Joey and Mike, to organizations of people that are sick. You're not helping people. You know, these guys get it in their head. They'll get five emails from five retards. I get these emails all the time. You helped me through some of the toughest times. Okay, maybe some of them are real, but I don't go around going, I help people, man. I get them through tough times, dog. It's like, doesn't matter what your uh, content is. I'll tell you this. Anybody with an audience is receiving those emails. You've gotten me through tough times. Mostly it's people that just want to talk to you, okay? So Mike probably got 20 emails over the course of the year. Dude, you saved me from my hair. And then because he's such a narcissist, look how much I'm helping people. I'm doing this book for them. Oh, yeah? It's funny how you're keeping the money.
You know? Are you doing it for them? What are you doing for them? Telling you that your foot got cut off with a car chase once? How's that help? Doesn't help nobody. And by the way, junkies don't listen to Logan Paul. They're too cool. All right? They're out doing cool stuff. Like drugs! <laughs> People listen to drugs, listen to impulsive and fake rap beefs between children? No. I'm the only drug user that listens to this show. <laughs> All right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Wasn't that fantastic? It's, it's his a good big day book today. day. Listen, Jules is going to be speed reading the book. It does turn out a lot of people thought this was going to be a pamphlet. 350 pages. Yikes. Now, I said to Jules, that's going to take a year. And she goes, no, I can do it in two days. I'm sure it's written very simply. It would take, so you'll be like, Pfft. no. A 350 page book would be something that I work on through like. K through sixth. <laughs> I can't even imagine. And it's all big Mike's blowarded nonsense where he just I mean, rambles you don't even and rambles. Think about what he's saying. You could read it in a second. I'm so sure the, the audiobook isn't out because why release an audiobook when you could sell the paperback version and then resell everybody the audiobook in a month? So it's another scam. I mean, if it wasn't, then just release the audiobook along with it. Seems like the normal thing to do, but no. So now she's got to read it to me. Which sounds even worse. I I want to perform it. We you could. Do a whole I, I'm stage really not interested. Dress up in you know, Maverick I don't clothing. like these stories about people's personal struggles. I find them stupid. Like I really hate these depressing stories. Like I'm not into that at all. I want screaming. I totally get it. I totally and get it. um, it's it's not you. I just want to explain to people. I totally get it. When I go at something like this, I want to give it my full attention. I, I got a sore oh, throat here. Oh, what about the here. Tearing Tactical video? Yes, let's do Tearing Tactical. That's right, two underneath where you just were. And um, we'll do it next time. Let's do, uh, do, 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 sorry, see, I'm falling apart here. Wait, you want to do that next right time? The, tearing Tactical. Yeah, I want right to do there. it right now. Down, down, down. Down, down, down. There. Oh, okay. JRE was at a shooting range called Terran Tactical. Uh, again, I told you it's going to be a Rogan-heavy episode, but this is great. We're going to make fun of Terran. Do you know what Terran Tactical is? I learned about this on his, on Joe Rogan's episode with uh, with uh, what's his name, uh, Jules, uh, the guy, the actor, uh, Rob Lowe. Mother, Rob Lowe. See, I I only got a little bit left in me. Rob Lowe was on there, and they were talking about Terran Tactical, and apparently this is a gun range in uh, outside of Los Angeles that Joe goes to once a week to. Uh, trained to be a FBI stuntman, to train to be a SWAT team agent. And I was rather sickened by the sight I saw. You know, we watched, um, I think, Tom Segura and Joe Rogan. Can you pull that up? Can you go to Tom Segura's Instagram, Jules? See if you see when they were at Terran Tactical. Joe Rogan goes to this place every week, and the poor motherfucker, along with many Hollywood people, we're going to show you this uh Instagram page, get Terran Tactical's Instagram page, send that over to Terran Tactical uses stupid celebrities. This is what they do. They trick them into thinking that they're really good at this and they have something in them more than the average person as far as being like a action hero. <laughs> And they cheerlead on these dopey celebrities. And then when the celebrities leave, you could tell they, they've all got different accents, right? And, uh, you know, the celebrities leave and they all put their feet up and count the cash. And they go, that fucking idiot couldn't hit a target if it two feet in front of his face. Here, I'll show you what I mean. This is really fucking sick. And I'm going to start bothering a gun range. Watch this. Now, listen, <laughs> I'm pro-gun. I own many guns. I can't wait to use them. But there's something about this, this training to be a uh, superhero that is so unbelievably gay to me. And this is what Joe Rogan does. Again, during COVID, he's with about 15 people. And his family sits home again. His family sits home while he plays Rambo at this fake range that is using and abusing him for money. Watch this fucking video. What? Shooter ready. Stand by. Look, look at Joe go. Awesome. Holy shit. Yeah. 
And then everyone who works at Terran Tactical, they got all these hot bitches to keep luring the celebrity men back in. Everyone who works there goes, wow, Joey, you're the man. If you can't do it, wow, you're the best we've ever seen. And then when Joe leaves, they go, that motherfucker. And they're counting the fucking money. And believe me, they charge him probably. you hear that guy in the background? They probably charge him $5,500 a week to do this bullshit. And he thinks he's the best. Now, I went into this thread here. He posted this I just on Instagram. Sent you the screenshot. Send me that. I went in there and I said, here, I'll, I'll show you what I said. Because I'm uh, rattling the cages oh, sorry, it's probably still sunny. of a lot of guys. <laughs> yep, still sunny. All right, I'll show you the video once again. So all of these babes, everyone here works for Terran Tactical. And look how they... There you go. Look how they... um, What would you call this? Filate? Look how they... What do you call it? Uh, when you fluff someone up like this Listen so that you can... Listen in the background for the guy going, nice, awesome. What does it Sick. remind me? I mean, this is something they would do to Vince from Entourage. You know, but they would do it on purpose to show you it's how like he's being used. It's like when you go try on a dress at Aritzia, and then you come out to the mirror area because they don't put mirrors in yeah. the room, and then all of the people who work there go, "Oh my god, you look, you look incredible!" In well, it's that. even worse. It's even this is reminding me of a specific moment where somebody is being just totally played. Watch this again. Look at this. Why does this bother me so much? Holy shit. Holy. And Holy even the shit. owner? The owner no. I mean, the owner does this all damn day. He could do this with his eyes closed. And the owner's like, holy shit, you're really a natural. And they're like, Joe, 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 you're the best we've ever seen. <laughs> And he's falling for it. Look at this stupid smile. I, mean, I think it's so angering because he's seeming to like eat up all of their yeah. praises. Watch this. Yeah. Ooh. As they and they know they're even like winking at each other. Like the only way fucking, you should be fucking like idiot that is if right after you're like, ha, this is silly. Yeah. That was freaking awesome, Joe. Thank you. Listen. <laughs> That's the owner. That was freaking awesome, Joe. How do you, you'd be like, ah, uh, you're lying for my money. That was super good. That was super good. And here's Rob Lowe. Look at this shady ass character back here. <laughs> Cheating on your wife there, Rob, with your fucking highlights. Didn't know about those. So I am very suspicious of tactical. Let me show you what I've done. Uh, I went into this uh, thread here and I said, Gun is loaded with blanks. The range has sound effects that trick Joe into thinking he's hitting all the targets. They'll do anything to keep taking his money. Hence the cheerleaders and applause. Can't believe Joe keeps falling for it. 159 likes. Now, everyone in these, we got 46 replies. 40 of the replies are all like, yeah, I got a specialist over here too that could confirm those are sound effects and pneumatic, you know, smoke machine, all this shit. And there's six guys who are arguing with me and saying how stupid I am. Do we have those screenshots? Oh, yeah, that's what we need. Uh, that's the point of this whole bit. Uh, we want to show you the six people. And we want to call these people out by name. Who, they hear this, gun is loaded with blanks, the range has sound effects to trick Joe into thinking he's hitting the target. Obviously, a joke. Six people in the replies took it literally, thinking they owned me uh, by saying, man, Red Bar Radio is getting so stupid lately, he's so out of it, you know, this is such a delusion. Anyway, you don't have to find them. Uh, they're there, people could get them. We got to show people some other stuff. Um, very, very funny. Uh, but thank you to the other 40 people who weren't in and went along with it. Very funny. But there's always some. And you click on their pictures. I want everyone to start doing this. Click on the picture. You'll see the lost. One guy's going, oh, well, you are not soul. with a sound expert. You probably haven't had spent much time around firearms. They overwhelm the microphone on a simple iPhone camera. Isn't that unbelievable? <laughs> there should be another one there. You know, there's so many. Rob Lowe, would you like a drink, Rob Lowe, while you cheat on your wife? 
Would you like to have a drink with me while you cheat on your wife? Cheers. Mm. All right. LMFAO blanks aren't powerful enough to rack the there slide back end. No, read that. Round. Read that. Read that one. That's a good one. LMFAO blanks aren't powerful enough to rack the slide back and load another round yeah. or even provide the kick that you can easily see in the video with the muzzle flipping up after each shot. Yep. Blanks don't do that, bud. Try not to talk about things you have no clue about. And these are the people in our YouTube comments. These are the people on the Legion of Skanks page. This is what we're infected with, people. So we're going to start running some tests. Uh, this morning, I brought up in the Bring Back group, I showed this beautiful little article. I uh, I showed you this article where it said, here's the headline. People with autism take everything literally. They can't understand jokes. Now, that article is from 2013. It's hard to find an article from now because guess what? Everyone does now. People with autism are great. They're amazing. They're actually really special and have a lot of head in court. This is what everyone's into now. So you're not finding a lot of autism slams. There's no money in it. But I dug up before we cared about mental illness. It was open season on the autists. And uh, there were a lot of articles written about how stupid and crazy they are and how they skew every result we have in America and how we let them live amongst us as if they're equal. Now, then I also found some results from 2002 that say one in 68 men have autism. And again, that's assuming that they were diagnosed. Imagine how many are undiagnosed running around. And then you get the fetal alcohol syndrome on top of all this shit. You got a really big problem. That is an army of boys who are twisting our reality into uh, unexistence. And uh, so uh, uh, what I what I learned this morning briefly while on the toilet <laughs> was that um, colloquialisms, colloquialisms, is that how you say it? What's an example? Can you look up the definition of colloquialism? They don't get those. That's one thing they don't get. So we've been having a problem in the bring back group with <laughs> And when you think about it, if one in every 68 people as autism and the bring back group has 3000 people well do the math on that what is the math on that i don't know but yeah there are a lot of fucking autists so we're going to develop a test when you enter the bring back group you're asked three questions and right now the three questions before getting approved to join the group are uh you know how long have you been listening to red bar where did you hear about, or where did you hear about red bar are you a scars club member and are you over 18 you know um, so we're going to change those questions to three questions that um, will tell us if you have autism or not. And we're going to get these from a therapist. We're going to have this all worked up. And then we're going to actually out people for being And you're not going to be let in the group. I'm going to war with I've had enough. You've ruined my whole life. Ever since uh, Michael Holmes, our Down syndrome, and I, it, it, Down syndrome to me and autism, Jules says they're different. To me, Down syndrome is better. <laughs> At least those guys can't type. Uh, Michael Holmes, he looked like an 80-year-old man when we were in second grade. He was covered in boogers, covered in spit. He hit people. He hit girls. He was rock solid, bald as a cucumber, pale white, stunk. He had fart juice all over his fingers, ball juice. He had a skinny, pale, bald penis and balls. And I was nauseated with him from first glance. And everyone told me, oh, be nice, be nice there. No. My nausea was my DNA telling me to eradicate him. Just like Hitler <laughs> can. Uh, oh, I'm just kidding. But seriously... <laughs> We must take this more seriously. Before I see you argue about abortion or argue about the lockdown or argue about the Black Lives Matter, you need to take care of the root issue. And the root issue, whether they have autism or Down syndrome or fetal alcohol syndrome, the root issue of every problem in this country is regards. People that are not seeing our reality the same as us. There is a baseline and they're below it. And if they're not addressed, you will keep getting yourselves into calamity after calamity and complaining and whining. Take care of the root.
I have no patience for them. They're not allowed to listen to Red Bar. Even if I look at you and I think you look tardy, bye. Isn't that mean? Yeah. But you know what? You're going to become a cog in my life. You're going to become a problem. You're going to become a clog in my life. And I based this after experience. I've been doing this for, I don't even want to say how long, since 2003. I know what a fucking problem looks like now. I know who's going to be a pain in my ass. I know who's going to come back to bite me. And it's always the autists every time. And I've been studying them. Why does this guy have a problem with me? I didn't do nothing. Oh, he takes everything I say literally. And he's appalled. So he's looking at me as if I'm Brian Callen and he needs to stop me because he heard me say some shit and he don't know the difference between jokes or not because I'm not going, but I'm ching, but I'm ching. Hey, it's a joke. I need him out of this world. <laughs> I'm willing to pay off well, police to, to kill them. he needs you out of this world? Um, I think you have to have a I think we take precedent. We take precedent. No. Well, he thinks he takes precedent. He don't you know what do he thinks. Fight. He's re garbage with no mom or dad. <laughs> Look at Hostbuster's environment. Look where he lives. Every picture frame is purposely... Cr like when he goes to hang up a picture, he goes like this. Ah, uh, Instead of like this. This is how I hang up a picture. Uh, this is how Hostbuster hangs up a picture. That's how he hangs it up. Stop it, stop it. You ruin the bit. You Jew. The autists need to go. Or they need to be put in an asylum. They really do. They're, they're not uh, responsible enough to live amongst us anymore. They've destroyed, they're destroying, because their word on the internet is being taken seriously by people. Their vote is being taken. When they chime in, and they're the only ones chiming in, you know, here's what you got to understand. One in 68 people have autism. 68 of 78 people commenting are the autists. Our whole fucking internet that we're arguing, we're sitting here arguing, it's all crazy we're arguing with. They're just, they've destroyed this beautiful gift that we had. This information community, communication tool that we got was taken over by TARDS because TARDS, guess what? They're the ones with nobody. They're at home. Nobody wants to be by them. They're too stupid and crazy. So they've taken over the internet. They've because we love anonymous people, they get to walk amongst us for the first time. Whereas in real life, you see a you stay the fuck away from them. You don't get in an argument about abortion with them. You look at them, you go, oh, God, get me out of this fucking store. I'm going to move to a better zip code. These people are poor. Uh, but on the Internet, they're mixed in. In most of every argument we are in with someone online or when we're frustrated, it's because of a tard. It's a huge problem. I feel it It affects every uh, industry. It affects everything that we do is based on this. And it's the most overlooked blind spot that America's ever had. They're sitting here arguing about the lockdown and all this. You No, 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 no. You need to get Earth's people in control, in check first. Uh, it, it, there can be no more single mothers having kids. That is a job. Uh, I, I mean, nine out of every single mother kid turns out to be a, a problem for all of us. It's, it's, it's you know, they're ripping out the electrical system. They're, they're messing everything up. And we have this beautiful opportunity where one in a, we're the only one in the whole fucking universe that we know of to exist and we're watching it be thrown away because this woman had to drink while she fucked and made this fucking host buster type person and Poor he's out there and and most of us are host buster he hasn't out even there done anything. ruining the world he has and for that i say they need to be killed Jeez. and with that i announce i am the new hitler <laughs> yes you either join me or you're against me. <laughs> Come on down. This is how Joker got started. I want to get started in the dictator leader business. What do you say? Follow me. Fuck. I did not. Somebody sign up for fund this. me. Fund me. I want grenades under my clothes. All right. <laughs> we got to cut the shit. But this is true. Don't talk to fucking tards anymore.
Did you want to hear a message? I just got an instant. Yeah, let's hear it. This guy says, tell Mike I'm willing to screen new members for autistic behavior traits. I do neurocognitive testing for a living. Wow, I would love to hook up with me. Let's link up. But first, I got to test him. But I don't want to dox him. Trust no one. I got to test him first. So we're in a real big problem. And I promise you, you need to be more strict. Cut off the tarts. Don't give them power. They're not allowed to interact with you. Block them. Delete them. Put them back into their hole that they were in before the internet came along. I'm sorry. And you would think that these people would be nice. They finally have been given a life, the nerds and the tarts, and they've been nasty and nothing but problems. Every person on this planet who's got a pain in their ass is because of one of them. So you know what? You had your chance, fucking nerds. You blew it. You acted like little dicks. <laughs> uh, I think that's true. I mean, I really do. I don't know. I, I'll re-examine that. But, um, you know, I've been saying this my whole life here on this show. My whole life on the show was that crazy people and uh, people that weren't supposed to be born are the problem. No one wants to admit it. Everybody feels so bad for the people. Don't feel bad for them. They're as good as bug. They're as good as roach. Their aunt. Do you feel bad for the moth when you beat the fucking living shit out of it just for coming into your closet? Do you feel bad for the ant? Oh, the ant just is hungry and you fucking murder it. You're even murdering bees and they're here to help. So, uh, you know, uh, here we go. We got some bugs that aren't harming anybody and you're killing them. And you're letting these autists come right into your homes via your internet connection. They're deadly. They created our demise. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you guys made my life so special. All right. That is a bummer. But the good <laughs> news is I'm here to help. Join me now. You can sign up. Thank God. I'm going to come up with a cure. All right. I'm going to come up with a cure. I'm going to work on this. All right. Uh, this is very eugenics. LOL. Yeah. You know what? Uh, this is where eugenics was right. You know, <laughs> eugenics was wrong. They said, let's lump the Jews with the re Let's lump the blacks with the re Uh-uh, that was the problem. See, they thought it was anyone different than them. It's not. It's anyone retardeder than them. <laughs> That's the problem. That's the problem. I've known it my whole life. Fuck you, anyone with a mental disability. <laughs> no one on the earth will say that. They're like, oh, mental people are great. Fuck off. All right, um, that's it for us today. Oh my God, no, right. you no? can't end Wait, on that. Oh. oh, I thought I could. I thought that oh, was powerful. Then, perfect. You don't like that. I think people like that. <laughs> Do we have something short that could um, cleanse that palate now that you've interrupted? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. That's okay. Um, You could watch this short clip from Reddit where they, no. Uh... They like me. Mike is the greatest speaker since the guy from Germany. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. We can just end it. Uh, I don't like that, though. I was perfect. I was going to ha, ha, ha. I was going to love it up. I know. I ruined it. You did. All right. Uh, that's it for us. I had a blast. Uh, don't, don't, don't walk away negative. Don't walk away uh, feeling bad about this. We could change it. But you know what? Here, here's my advice. You can't fuck around right now anymore. You know, um, I'm not so sure. I got the season two of YouTube coming. I might wait now till Corona's over. I don't think people could handle it. I don't think rattling the public is the answer right now. So let's cool it with the fighting online. Uh, I like to think that here is a special place where if you're tuning into Red Bar, you know what you're going to get. I don't want to push this on to people and rattle them any further than they're rattled right now. We need to bandage this shit up before we say goodbye to it forever. And I've seen, I've taken a look. This will all end if you don't. Shape it up. Do you want to save the universe or flush it down the drain? It's up to you. Thank you so much for listening to Red Bar. It was a blast. That's positive, right? Absolutely. Some people will think that's but I had a blast. <laughs> Listen, hey, it's thing. not that bad, okay? No, of uh, course not. We'll see you guys in another few days. Thank you. Join the Scars Club. Let's fund this movement. Grenades! <laughs> redbarradio.net slash scars club. Did I do my message to Joey Diaz and Sam Tripoli yet?
You can do it now. This message, I'm going to do that, and, um, and, and this could kind of go for any comedian who thinks they're going to threaten Mike Redbar with violence. Uh, here's my message to you. The videos will never stop. Joey Diaz and Sam Tripoli just bought themselves double the videos. I, I don't know what to tell you two crybabies. Shut the fuck up. We're going to make fun of you. If you go on TV, which is what you're doing, and act like a fucking nonsense guy, we are going to make fun of you. We're going to cover your antics. I'm going to do zoom-ins to you. We're going to make fun of your kids, your family, everybody. And there's nothing you could do to ever stop that. You understand? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if I did that and I had one eye that was <laughs> just out? just out. Ah, the, the, the teleprompter got... Wait, what? It's not the... The crane! The crane got my eye, ah, David Dobrik, damn you. The excavator. The excavator got my eye, ah, damn you. I feel like Jeff Wittick here today, huh? So I wanted to make that perfectly clear. Uh, there is no full, I mean, you literally, even if you stuck a gun down Jules's throat and shot it to the bullets, crept out of her little, there's still going to be these videos till the day I die. So you will have to kill me, which is not allowed. You're not allowed to kill me. And you're not allowed to hurt me. So I didn't know that we weren't allowed to make fun of people all of a sudden, but it seems like that's their new rule. Well, they're trying to tell us, Joey Diaz and Sam Tripoli are trying to tell me, Mike from Red Bar, that I can't make fun of them. So they just bought themselves a world of hurt. And for the next <laughs> year and until I die, I'm going to be torturing you legally, metaphysically, and all on the up and up. There is literally nothing you could do about it. You could scream and cry in your tiny bedrooms. Joey, you could talk all day in your nursing home little office with your memories all over the... Oh! <laughs> but the videos... That's what they call what I do, the videos. The videos will never end. Capiche? Uh, that's just how it's going to be. And I hope everybody is okay with that. The videos are actually going to get a lot worse and more. You're not going to know what to do with a guy like me.